So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto had Rinchuringen and Tensigen in waves. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1, Naruto was floating next to Sasuke who was standing on one of his truth-seeking ball platforms. Sasuke glanced over at Naruto. That technique? Sasuke asked in a questionable tone. Naruto nodded. Yeah. This will never work, Sasuke admitted. I just need you to trust me on this one. Naruto asked once more. Laksetsu sneered from inside Kagaya's sleeve. I don't know what you're trying to do. But my Achan can absorb any ninjutsu. Whatever you're trying to do is meaningless. Sasuke glared at Naruto. Are you sure this is the only chance we have isn't there anything else? Sasuke growled at Naruto. We don't know unless we try. Naruto spoke in a very serious tone. I've been practicing this in secret more than the Rasengan. It's worth a try. Sasuke nodded, accepting Naruto's reply for the time being. If that can create an opening in the enemy's defense. I guess we can try. My left eye is ready. Sasuke spoke as his Rinnegan pulsed with power. Let's go. Sasuke yelled while Naruto performed the hand seal for the cage bush and no jutsu. Yeah. Naruto released the battle cry. The guy narrowed her eyes. She felt no need to use her until they decided to actually do something. The matter asu. Sasuke whispered as he channeled chakra to his left eye which began to secrete tears of blood. The eternal black flame said to be unextinguishable engulfed Kagaya's body, but she completely ignored it, simply absorbing them before they could do anything to her. Naruto rushed in towards Kagaya. Cage bush and no jutsu. Naruto spawned off six clones as Kagaya activated her by Akigen. What Naruto did next was forever burned into Kagaya's memory. Sexy reverse harem no everyone besides Kagaya sported a deadpan look. Kagaya on the other hand blushed crimson red. Naruto dispelled his jutsu soon along with his clones as he sucker punched Kagaya in the face, sending her flying back. This is the history of Shinobi, you bastard. Naruto roared out. Meanwhile, Sasuke threw a kunai in the direction Kagaya's body was heading, but he wasn't aiming to hit her, he threw it past her and used to teleport himself, putting Kagaya in between the two. Now, Naruto. Sasuke shouted. Sasuke and Naruto were within inches of sealing away Kagaya until she activated a Rinchuringan signature ability Amanamanaka. Sasuke, Kagaya and Naruto were now stuck in a block of ice. Cold. What? Naruto thought to himself. Ice. Sasuke thought to himself. Kagaya opened another portal as she escaped from the ice block. She vanished. Is she able to travel through dimensions? Naruto thought to himself frantically. Naruto glanced to his right as he saw Kagaya exiting her portal. Kagaya moves again in hopes of being able to drain them of their chakra. Sasuke's left eye began to bleed once more. Amaterasu. Kagetsuchi. Sasuke yelled in thought as he channeled chakra to both of his eyes. The black flame swirled all around destroying the block of ice, freeing him and Naruto. Thank you, Sasuke. Naruto thanked his supposedly best friend. Also, sorry. This sexy jutsu soon didn't work. Naruto apologized. HN. I never thought we were going to be able to beat her with that. Sasuke grunted. This time we're going with my tactical cooperation. Sasuke grunted again. Laksetsu slithered out of Kagaya's sleeve again. Kachan. They are hard to deal with. We should just separate them and attack them. One at a time. The mass of black goo suggested. Kagaya raised her hand as a portal opened. A was the only noise Naruto could make as he watched. Sasuke gets pulled through the portal. Sasuke landed in a massive desert in another dimension. Where am I Sasuke asked himself. Sasuke. Naruto yelled as he tried to pull the portal open. Unfortunately, it completely closed and Sasuke was trapped. Shit. Naruto cursed. Black Zetsu began to chuckle sinisterly. Now. You can't seal my Kachan anymore. Kagaya spoke in her melody-like tone. I'll start by absorbing all of your chakra Kagaya spoke as she opened another portal attempting to grab Naruto. Luckily, Naruto could evade the instantaneous attack thanks to the help of his Rakuto Senjutsu enhanced sensory abilities. You have nice reflexes. Black Zetsu grinned in a sinister way. But it won't be enough. Kagaya was pleasantly surprised at how fast Naruto was. This boy is fast. She spoke before she entered a portal which closed completely around her. Does this mean I can't tell where she's going to show up next? Naruto spoke aloud before the whole ice dimension began to shake. Below Naruto, six large spikes made of ice struck Naruto at great speed. What? Ugh. The ice quickly pinned Naruto to the ground, binding his movements. Now that Naruto was immobilized, Kagaya emerged from the portal. You finally came out. Naruto groaned out. Naruto looked up at Kagaya as she began to fly down towards him with the intent to absorb every bit of his chakra. 
Yes, come here. You want my chakra, don't you? It's pointless to use big flashy techniques, she'll just absorb it. What works best on her? Tajutsu and diversions. Naruto thought to himself. Sexy techniques aren't going to work anymore. I guess I'll go back to my origins. I'll corner her with that. When she tries to escape with that door again, I'll enter too. And I'll look for Sasuke. I can still feel his chakra clearly. Naruto continued his thoughts as Kagaya closed in. This is my dimension. You can't do anything. Kagaya growled. Are you ready for Naruto? I'll take your chakra to its boiling point. Kakuo spoke in her usual calm tone. Yeah. Naruto replied. Once Kagaya was within 20 meters, Naruto called out a technique she did not expect, let alone heard of Futen. Kariki Muzum boil release. Unrivaled strength. An immense amount of steam exploded from Naruto's body, causing the ice that held him to melt. Naruto then shattered the ice with one swipe of his hand, before jumping into the air and clashing with Kagaya. Wuraya. Naruto yelled. The chakra demigod clashed with the chakra goddess, causing one of the mountains of ice to shatter apart. I prepared and refined your chakra for you, Naruto. The yin portion of Kurama announced to his host. Thanks Kurama. Taju Ukage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto roared out as he summoned nearly 1,000 clones, all in Kaiubi Chakra Rakuto Sena mode. All the clones flew at Kagaya from every direction. Kagaya, not impressed in the least, merely raised a hand, sending out multiple chakra fists demolishing many clones at once. Now this is my dimension. One of Naruto's clones yelled out. Naruto Chiiki Ren and Naruto Region Combo. Despite their massive numerical advantage, Kagaya blocked blow after blow from each of Naruto's clones. However, even for someone as powerful as her, she found it slightly overwhelming as the attack continued to become more and more intense. Tilting her head up Kagaya opened another portal via Yamatsu Hirosaka Underworld Slope Hill to escape from the overwhelming onslaught of Naruto's army of clones. She opened it. Naruto thought as all his clones closed in, as Ibido focused on the portal. Naruto at Kagaya intending on following her unaware that Ibido had already beaten him to it, using his Kamui to enter Kagaya's dimensional portal. Not too long afterwards Naruto saw her re-enter into the ice dimension in the dimensional, she seemed to have a look of disbelief. Naruto didn't really seem bothered by this as he and his clones charged in after her. Kagaya also charged at him with Tamagurashi no Hakatsu all killing ash bones, extending for both of her palms, as she proceeded to cut down all the clones in front of her. Shortly after that, a large spiral opened on the ground near Kakashi, as Sasuke, Abido, and Sakura all jumped out. This took Naruto and Black Zetsu by surprise. No way. Sasuke Black Zetsu mentally cursed. In Naruto's distracted state Kagaya extended her hair out to wrap around him and proceeded to impale him through the stomach with a bone spear. Now you don't have to worry anymore, Kagaya spoke in a cruel sinister tone. Naruto. Kakashi, Abido, Sakura, and Sasuke shouted in unison. Be bastard. Black Zetsu cursed out loud. He made a clone carry his truth seeker balls on purpose, can he even do that? Black Zetsu started to hate Naruto more and more by the second. Thank you. Sakura-chan, Abido. Naruto spoke in a cheerful tone. Hey, he's okay, Sakura cheered. Don't scare us like that. Abido replied. Suddenly, Naruto's body exploded in a cloud of smoke. Sasuke, feeling relieved, immediately jumped into action and activated his Susanoo to ascend to the two's altitude. The truth seeker balls returned to Naruto as he shouted at Sasuke. Sasuke. Did you thank Sakura-chan and Abido? Focus on the enemy. Sasuke replied harshly. Uff. Kakashi released a sigh of relief. Naruto has always been weirdly cunning. This is why they call him the most unpredictable shinobi the silver-haired scarecrow thought to himself. But, that unique nature of his may just save us all. Hachan now that they're united again, we have no choice. There's no more time to save Chakra. Black Zetsu spoke to Kagaya through a telepathic link. I know. She replied as her Ren Shuringen pulsed with power. Increased gravity dimension. They all appeared in a dimension with multiple small pyramids on the ground, this dimension had a strong gravitational pull as all those in the air were pulled down to the ground. Even Naruto and Kagaya, who had the power of flight, could not resist the unbelievable pulling power of this world. Kagaya extended her hands as two bone spears began to peek out from her palms. Naruto and Sasuke could dodge the first barrage, but Kagaya had acclimated to the increased gravity as she prepared another two bone spears. But this time, Abido and Kakashi were already on the move to protect Naruto and Sasuke. The bone spears were inches away from piercing both Kakashi and Abido. Both would have perished until Abido warped away the bone spear that was about to impale Kakashi. Abido had only been able to protect Kakashi since his right eye's Kamui required physical contact. Abido had saved Sasuke and Naruto from being hit by Kagaya's Tamagurashi no Hakatsu, which was already beginning to break down his body from the impact area. Why? We should both. Kakashi asked. My visual prowess is back. 
Sasuke thought before teleporting right next to Kagaya, with his Shidori sparking to life, but in that instant, Kagaya changed the dimensions again before flying up into the air. Your power is still needed here. It would be best to just leave me, Abito admitted to everyone around him. I've always been useless. I've always been nothing more than a scroop for everyone. But even so, I owe Naruto a gift, and I intend to give it to him before I go. Sasuke-kun, Abito then addressed the raven-haired shinobi. I need you to focus on the enemy to buy me and Naruto some time. My own time is limited and it's going to take all I have to finish this. Abito interrupted while feeling the ever-growing hole in his gut. Black Zetsu begins talking smack about Abito trying to get Naruto riled up and it was working. But Sasuke interrupted Naruto, calm down. He's just trying to get under your skin. He activates his perfect Susanoo and takes off into the air, heading straight to the rabbit goddess to buy Abito the time he needs. Abito turned around to face Naruto, lifting a single arm. Abito? Naruto asks, looking at the weakened Icha. Abito smiled at Naruto and placed his index and middle fingers in between his eyes. He made a one-handed tiger hand sign. Naruto becomes Hokage at all costs. I believe in you, you look so much like your father. He said, and with that he turned to dust. Adya. Naruto whispered as he opened his eyes revealing to now have Abito Sharingan. He glared up at the fight going on in the sky between his friend and Kagaya. Using a combination of his own enhanced speed, six pass power, and Kamui, in a flash of gold, Naruto blitzed Kagaya, slashing her arm off with black zetsu attached to it. The arm fell to the ground which Naruto proceeded to pin it down, thanks to one of the Gudadamas floating behind him. Kagaya, enraged and shocked by the blonde's actions, fired her chakra arms at Sasuke crushing his Susanoo, but not before he cut her with his massive blade. In an even greater fit of rage Kagaya launched multiple Tamagurashi no Hikatsu at Sasuke who began falling from a great height. But it was too late, because despite two out of the three bone spears missed Sasuke, the third one hit its mark. The decayed bamboo-like projectile pierced Sasuke through the stomach as he vomited out blood, Naruto's eyes widened in horror as he flew toward Sasuke. SSSAA, Sasuke -e. Naruto catches Sasuke as he falls forwards. Laying the dying Ichiha on the ground as Kakashi and Sakura ran over to them in hopes of saving Sasuke. Sasuke can hold on, I'll heal you. Sakura cried out with tears in her eyes. Sasuke grabbed her hand. No. Sakura it's too late for me. I don't deserve to live anymore. Naruto became outraged and yelled. Don't say that Sasuke. I thought you wanted to become Hokage. Sasuke looks up at Naruto into his new Sharingan eyes with a sad expression. Sasuke's eyes became heavy as they closed, and he smiled. With the last of his strength, Sasuke pressed his pointer and middle finger against Naruto's forehead. Soon afterwards, Sasuke's weak body fully disintegrated, Sakura cried out in sadness, Kakashi put his head down in shame, having not been able to protect his former student. Naruto, we need to talk. Kurama called out to Naruto before he could start grieving over the death of his best friend. Naruto felt himself being pulled into his mindscape. Mindscape, did we need to talk, things aren't looking too well out there. And at the rate you're going, we're all going to die. But me and my siblings have come to a decision to ensure that everything goes smoothly, we shall melt together and create a new Jubi. This one will have sentience, unlike our original form. On top of that, once we have extracted our other parts, they will be resealed into you and will combine with the new ten tails, Kurama explained in a melancholic tone. No. You can't do that Kurama. We're partners. I don't want you to do that, I don't care about myself, please don't sacrifice yourself for me. Naruto yelled out, his voice cracking, tears made their way out of the blonde's eyes, but he didn't rub them away. Even if he did, more would follow. Kurama gave him hell in his early years, but since the beginning of this war, Kurama has become closer to Naruto. The demon fox and the sage had become the ultimate duo throughout this war, relying on each other and helping the other complete their shared goals. One wanted to destroy Madara Chia, and the other wanted to bring peace to the elemental nations. Naruto stared up at the fox in silence, hiccuping from trying to force down his rising emotions. Naruto, dry your tears, now is not the time. You can cry after this war is over, and Kagaya has been sealed away. Kurama said as Naruto seemed to regain control of himself to an acceptable level. He slowly walked up to Kurama and raised his fist, tears silently running down his face. All the other biju placed their hands, paws, tentacles, and feet on top of Kurama's fist. Aki you better win, we're not sacrificing our consciousness for nothing you know. Shukaku grumbled. Regardless of what we become after this Naruto-kun, just remember it will always be with you. Matatabi meowed softly. Bring our creator's wishes to fruition and bring peace to this godforsaken world. Isobu spoke in a dull, bored tone. Aki you've already saved us once, so we're returning the favor now, beat this ancient rabbit bitch for us. Ho ho. Son Goku howled. I know you can do it, Naruto-kun. 
We needed each other's help to get this far, and now it's time for you to finish this. Kakuo gave a few words of encouragement. Yes. Seiken believes you can do this. Seiken squeaked out in her squeaky tone. I wish you the best of luck, as I am lucky number seven. Jamei said that everyone sweat dropped during his speech. Naruto be sure to tell B that I'll miss him, don't let us down. Defeat her, Naruto. Jayuki said in a sad tone. Naruto, it's time we bid you farewell, I know you can do this, I've seen all that you've accomplished through the memories of my other half. There's no doubt in my mind that you will not fail, you will succeed in overcoming this obstacle like everything else you've done. Sayonara my friend, perhaps we will meet again in a different lifetime. Until then, keep on fighting to protect those you love. Hirama said, allowing one single tear to drop from his eye. All nine Bijuu began to glow different colors, Shukaku turned tan, Matatabi blue, Asobu teal, Son Goku bright red, Kaku light blue, Seiken pink, Jimei green, Jayuki purple, and Kurama turned yellow. The nine multicolored energies collided with one another, creating a large orb of white and black chakra that seemed to be solidifying. Naruto could no longer hold his emotions as he dropped to his knees crying his eyes out, no matter how much hell Kurama caused him. He had just lost one of his best friends forever, the raw emotions exploded from Naruto's wails of despair. H.N. Dobe stop your crying. You still have to defeat Kagaya Atsutsuki. A familiar voice echoed throughout Naruto's mindscape. Naruto's eyes shot wide open when he saw familiar black hair. Sasuke you're alive. No, you baka I am indeed dead, I simply implanted my Rakuto chakra into you so that you have a fighting chance against Kagaya. Sasuke said to his idiot friend. I need to tell you something, the reason why I wanted to become the Hokage, execute the current cage, kill the Bidjuus, and push for a revolution to destroy the old world and rebuild anew. But now that I'm no longer in the world of the living, my plans will never come to life. So, I guess I have to put my faith and trust in you. Naruto's eyes widened at Sasuke's reason for wanting to become Hokage. Why would you do that Sasuke? Naruto asked in both a surprised and hostile tone. H.N. You really are an idiot aren't you? We're opposites, you're Ashura, you love helping people, and you acquired help from multiple people to do anything. Well I'm Indra, I do everything on my own, and I prefer being alone in the dark. Sasuke explained. But neither is perfect on their own. Do you get it now? Separately we are incomplete, but together we can be something much greater. I can see it now that you're far stronger than me. You always held back. You were afraid of killing me. That's why you held back so much of your power. But please stop doing that, it can get you killed, but knowing you're not going to listen. Sasuke said before grabbing Naruto's left hand with his own left hand and placing his other hand on Naruto's head. What are you doing Sasuke? Naruto asked, starting to get a little bit afraid. I'm going to complete you, Naruto. I'm going to make sure you don't fail. I'm going to give you the Rakuto Chakra Hagoromo gave to me. This should allow you to awaken the Rinnegan. And trust me, this is for your own good dope, because you're too stupid and naive to do anything on your own. Before Naruto could utter another word the only thing he knew was pain, he could feel all Sasuke's potent Rakuto chakra course through his chakra coils. It only lasted an instant, and once it was gone, Sasuke let Naruto go as he dropped down to his knees. By the way, this will leave some of my own personality in you. Farewell, my brother, I believe in you. Sasuke said before he vanished from sight. Naruto finally forced himself up to a standing position looking around, Sasuke was nowhere to be seen. Naruto then heard a loud crack sound. He turned around and noticed that the large sphere of solidified chakra was beginning to break apart. Naruto did not know what to expect to come out of the solidified orb of chakra. Naruto watched as the pieces of the orb of chakra began to reconverge and take a new shape. Naruto expected a demonic creature, but he was surprised once again. The orb became a pale-skinned woman with delicate facial features, she had long black hair, reaching to her waist, and her eyes were too wrenching and she had long, dark fingernails, she wore a multicolored white, blue, and yellow kimono, however, the most notable feature she possessed was that she had two black-haired wolf ears and a wolf tail on her behind. Naruto stared at the beautiful woman standing before him. She looked around as if she was confused, frightened. Naruto decided that she needed some assistance and walked towards her. Um. Ker. I mean Jubi. The newly born Juubi looked towards Naruto before tilting her head. Nar. She spoke in a distorted broken tone. Naruto nodded. Yes, I'm Naruto. Naruto said awkwardly. The woman tilted her head to the side. So, um. Juubi do you have a name? Naruto asked the woman in front of her. She straightened her head again before answering. No. She answered. Naruto frowned at this before gently tapping his finger against his chin. Hmm. I've never given anyone a name before. This might be tough Naruto thought for a few seconds before a grin spread across his face. I got a name, how about Kahana? Naruto declared as the humanoid Jubi remained quiet before giving a small smile showing off her white teeth. I like it, Naruto. 
The sound of her voice was starting to get better, it was softer, more human, more feminine. It seemed the more they talked the better they got. Perhaps it had to do with the fact that she was just created and was trying to get used to their new form. Kahana Chan, do you remember Karama, her son? Naruto was hopeful that Yubi did. Kahana nodded. Yes, I have their memories, and I'll always be here for you Naruto. The Jubi declared in a happy tone as her ten tails wagged back and forth. Naruto smiled even after losing Kurama he gained someone else who could possibly fill the void that Kurama left. Naruto. Kahana spoke in a serious tone of voice. Yes, Kahana what is it? Naruto asked. You remember what happened when you channeled Kurama's chakra with your Rakuto Senen mode, Kahana asked as Naruto nodded. When you channel my chakra with your Rakuto Senen mode, it will grant you a form like Madara's form, but much stronger in every way Kahana explained as Naruto nodded. I'm going to help you defeat Kagaya, and with the power and Rinnegan, you inherited from both Sasuke and Ibido. We will not fail, we shall succeed. Naruto looked confused. Rinnegan. Naruto said before closing his eyes. He could sense the unique energy that the Rinnegan created. He indeed had two six Tomo Rinnegan. Now I believe it's time for you to leave, as you're about to enter into the new world. Kahana said that almost instantly Naruto was forced out of his mindscape. The guy's dimension, Naruto's whole body was engulfed by layer after layer of white smoke, making it nearly impossible to see Naruto, except for the silhouette of his body. Soon afterwards, everyone could hear footsteps as Naruto slowly made his way out of the thick clouds of smoke. When he emerged not only was Kakashi and Sakura surprised, but so was Kagaya, as Naruto greatly resembled Madara after he became the Jubi. Naruto now had spiky white hair and pale skin, his once golden chakra cloak was replaced by full-bodied black garment with black pants, fingerless gloves and boots, over which he wore a flowing white robe with six black Magatama markings across his chest and the familiar pattern of a black Rinnegan and nine black Magatama markings in rows of three on his back. Two grey horn-like protrusions grew out of his left and right temples, giving him an overall appearance very like that of the Sage of the Six Paths. Naruto now had ten truth seeker balls floating behind him in a halo formation, in his right hand he held a dual-headed shakajim. One end has a ringed hoop, while the other end possesses a crescent-shaped curve, representing the sun and moon respectively. Naruto opened his eyes which were both sporting Tama Rinnegan. You're going to pay for what you've done you rabbit bitch. Naruto growled before kicking off the ground flying directly at Kagaya with the intent to kill. How dare you call me that you wretched base creature. Kagaya yelled back in anger as Naruto slammed into her body. The two chakra gods clashed above the ground, every time the two clashed, they created shockwaves from the amount of force that both Naruto and Kagaya were releasing. The amount of power that these two possessed was immeasurable. Asagami Kichikiedi gods vacuum attack. Kagaya yelled out as she released a volley of chakra fists at Naruto, who countered with his own chakra fists. Chakra fists clashed with one another which released even larger shockwaves that caused the ground to break apart beneath them. Kagaya growled as she was pushed back yet again by this pathetic base creature. It angered her that he could match her easily in speed, strength, and chakra. Perhaps she would have had a better chance if she left Indra's reincarnation alive and without black zetsu things seemed grim. The guy extended her right hand and a bone shard began to stick out of her palm. She was intent on murdering Naruto without his chakra absorbed at this point. Unfortunately for her Naruto's left eye pulsed with power. Kamui. Naruto yelled as space seemed to distort around Kagaya's hand before being sucked into a vortex, ripping her hand right off. Aya. Kagaya yelled as she glared daggers at Naruto. Naruto's left eye pulsed with power once more before appearing directly behind Kagaya with a Rasengan in his hand. Kagaya turned just in time to get blasted towards the ground by Naruto's Rasengan. Naruto watched as the rabbit goddess came to a full stop before glaring at him, she focused on the stump that used to be her arm. Naruto's face contorted with a look of disgust as sounds of sickening flesh movement echoed clearly. So, she has instant regeneration. Naruto thought to himself. You have the same power, Naruto, since you have no Rakuto Senjutsu and me inside of you. Kahana explained telepathically as Naruto nodded. An insect like you has no right to wield such power. Your chakra. It belongs to me all of it shall become one. I shall make all chakra mine once again. Kagaya growled before her eyes widened. Before she knew it, Naruto was gone. Kagaya looked up but was too late Naruto's right in front of her with his fists cocked back. Would you shut up you fucking rabbit bitch. Naruto yelled. Naruto slammed his fist directly into Kagaya's face, sending her hurtling towards the ground before Naruto dive-bombed her. Kagaya opened her eyes glaring at Naruto before extending both of her newly regenerated hands and releasing bone spears from both palms. Naruto quickly dodged the projectiles, although once the threat was gone, he saw a flurry of chakra fists heading straight for him, Naruto dodged again turning his head to the left he saw Kagaya. In one quick motion, Kagaya ripped out Naruto's left eye, instantly crushing the eye. Gah. Naruto cried before clenching his empty eye socket. 
Naruto, you all right? Kahana asked in a concerned tone as Naruto groaned in absolute agony. No, she ripped out my eyes. Naruto responded as he glared at the rabbit goddess. Kahana was concerned for its host. What are you going to do? Naruto glared up at the grinning goddess. An eye for an eye, Niji and so many others have told me just how useful the Byakugan is. Naruto replied darkly. If that's what you want to do, I won't stop you. Also, I was able to transfer your long-ranged Kamui to your remaining right eye. Kahana spoke as Naruto nodded and appreciated. Naruto quickly focused his right eye on Kagaya before activating his Amenitejikara Heavenly Hand power. As he instantly appeared before her much to the goddess's surprise as she tried to gouge out his right eye, her hand phased away through his head much to her surprise. Using her surprise against her, Naruto quickly aimed his fingers for Kagaya's face and quickly ripped out one of her Byakugan. Ha! Ah. Kagaya cried in pain as Naruto quickly descended to the ground before implanting her Byakugan into his empty aching eye socket. Naruto felt Kahana Chakra going towards him to establish a connection so he could properly use it. Naruto grinned as his new silver-ish wide eyes were fully operational, sending Chakra to it as the veins around his left eye bulged. This is incredible I can see everything around me Naruto thought with glee. Naruto quickly reascended to the air before raising his hand into the air. Naruto's ten truth seeker balls floating above his head as he was preparing for a major attack. Let's go Kahana. Naruto yelled out. Yeah, Naruto. Kahana yelled back. As his ten truth seeking balls formed into ten biju Udamaras and shuriken. He threw the ten biju Udamaras and shuriken at Kagaya, which caused a giant explosion. Aya. She howled in pain, Naruto smirked before summoning his perfect Susanoo. With both of the katanas unsheathed, he proceeded to cut the massive explosion in half, gently landing on the ground before dispelling his Susanoo. Naruto looked up to see Kagaya missing the lower half of her body and her right arm, both of her horns missing. What have you done to me you base creature? Kagaya yelled in anger as her body began to morph. Naruto's new Juubi form caused a chain reaction with a Bijuu trapped within Kagaya, causing her form to mutate into an unstable rabbit-like version of the original Juubi. From down on the ground Black Zetsu, who was pinned by two of Naruto's truth-seeking balls, became more and more worried for his mother creator. This isn't humanoid, this thing is not Kachan, and it's not the Juubi either. It must have been caused by Naruto's previous attack that called the Bijuu to the surface which resulted in Kachan being turned into that thing. It's not stable. Black Zetsu thought to himself as he saw the abomination with at least ten tails with hands at the end of them. Unfortunately, much to his surprise the abomination sent one of its tails directly after him. What new? Kachan. Doomed. Were the last words Black Zetsu cried out before being absorbed. Naruto smirked as he noticed the nine Bijuu within Kagaya were fighting against her. Kahana you ready? Naruto yelled. Yes, I'm ready for Naruto. Kahana replied. From the back of Naruto's abdomen, ten white chakra base tails bursted into life, nine of them grew hands at the end of him, before latching onto the nine Bijuu heads that were currently moving in the giant orb, behind the unstable rabbit-like version of the Juubi. Naruto made a cross like a hand sign. Tajuu Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto created another 1000 clones which all grabbed his single remaining tail and began to pull backwards. Come on, you guys yanked them out. Naruto yelled out as the clones all released their own battle cries before pulling back hard. The giant mutated Chakra Juubi released a howl as the nine Bijuu were ripped from its body. They're out. Naruto cheered before dispelling all his clones. After which, he proceeded to pull the nine Bijuu into his body. We did it, Naruto. The other halves of the Bijuu have been sealed, they're combining with my being as we speak. Kahana confirmed their successful assault, but it wasn't over yet. Looking up, Naruto could see the unstable rabbit-like version of the Juubi body collapsing on itself, revealing a weak and frail Kagaya Atsutsuki. As she glared down at Naruto gritting her teeth in anger, which Naruto didn't give her a chance to recover as he rushed to Kagaya and put both of his hands on her. Rick and Chibaku Tensei 6 Paths Catastrophic Planetary Construction. Naruto howled. Kagaya, not one to give up without a fight, with the last of her power howled. Yamatsu Hirosaka. A dimensional portal opened behind Naruto. Even with his powers, he couldn't resist the sudden and unexpected pull of the portal that was behind him. The last thing Naruto saw was Kakashi and Sakura's shocked faces seeing him fall into the portal. Naruto also saw the cruel smirk on Kagaya's face before she slowly morphed back into the lifeless Jido Meizo. Chapter 2 Naruto opened his eyes as he realized he was currently laying on a futon, quickly sitting up and looking around. Naruto noticed the room he was in. The design and furniture of the room looked as if it belonged to someone of royalty, like a king or queen. It could have possibly even been a prince or princess. Naruto began to wonder where specifically he was. Although he didn't have to wonder for very long, a sliding door opened revealing Kahana in all her absolute beauty. Kahana-chan where are we, what is this place? Naruto asked as Kahana giggled slightly. 
we're still in your mindscape Naruto-kun. If I may, I have someone who would like to meet you, Kahana explained as Naruto nodded before getting off the futon. Naruto silently followed Kahana through the hallway before they came to a large set of sliding doors. Kahana gently and delicately knocked on the door. Come in. A majestic female voice called out, much to Naruto's surprise the only person Naruto knew of who had a voice that rivaled this one in terms of beauty was Kahana. Upon opening the door Naruto was rendered speechless by what he saw. He saw a beautiful, elegant and attractive young woman with a voluptuous figure, long crimson red hair pulled back in a ponytail with split bangs, and ruby red eyes with cat-like pupils. She had alabaster white skin and enormous breasts which rivaled Kahana's in terms of size. She wore a red kimono with a gold interior, as well as a pink obi. More noticeably, she had a pair of red-orange fox ears and nine red-orange fox tails. She was currently sitting on one of three seas of pillows in front of a brown wooden round table with a tea kettle, multiple teacups, and what looked to be an assortment of different types of food. She must have been waiting patiently for Naruto to arrive. The beautiful red-haired woman gave an amused smirk when she saw Naruto. Well, I must say you're a definite improvement over my previous container. Now please sit so we may discuss a few things. The crimson-haired vixen gestured for Naruto and Kahana to sit. The two beings from another world sat on the two available Siza pillows accordingly. The female Kaiubi handed both Naruto and Kahana a cup of tea and began to speak. I believe we should start with introductions, I'll start us off. Hello, I'm Atsutsuki Karami, eldest daughter of Atsutsuki Hagoromo. I was born from the division of the Jubi's power. I like walking through the forest in the morning, cloud watching, and watching the sunset. The newly named Karami spoke. Kahana decided to introduce herself next. Hello, my name is Atsutsuki Kahana, I was born from the collaboration of the nine Biju of our world fusing together. I'm not really sure what I like now, I guess spending time with Naruto-kun would be my only love. Kahana said a little bit unsure about the like part. Naruto took a quick breath before speaking. Yo, I'm Yuzumaki Naruto, I'm the son of Namikaz Minato and Yuzumaki Kishina. I like ramen, my friends, spending time with my friends, eating ramen, gardening, training, and tomatoes. Naruto wondered where the tomato part came from. All things considered, it most likely came from Sasuke's memories. Hirami smirked yet again. Well, then I'll be the first to welcome you to this world, and I must say our worlds appear to be very similar from what Kahana-chan told me. But the key differences are the Atsutsuki clan were not powerful godlike beings, my Chichiyu was a special case. His mother Kagaya Atsutsuki was not a very powerful woman, from what he told us about her, she was kind of frail and avoided conflicts at all costs. Karami explained. The fact that you have obtained the Rinnegan and taken Kagaya's by Akigan is astounding. But just because you have gained these powers doesn't mean I'm going to work with you willingly, you have to prove to me that you're worthy of using my chakra. Karami said again before taking a sip of tea. Naruto raised an eyebrow before turning to Kahana. Kahana-chan I've been meaning to ask you about that, what happened to me? I can't feel the six pass power or my Rinnegan and by Akigan. Also, right after implanting the by Akigan, I felt a surge of energy that I never felt before. What was that? Naruto asked curiously as Kahana sighed. I'm not really sure, but I know you gained knowledge directly from Hagoroma when you accept his chakra. And you most likely gained, even more, knowledge when you gained Sasuke's half of Hagoromo's power. Naruto pouted and Kahana shook her head, but giggled at Naruto's behavior. The only thing I know is that that surge of power was the awakening of something called the Tensigan. I have no knowledge on what it is, other than it is equal in strength to Tomorinigan. However, the reason you don't feel those powers is that you have taken the body of this world's Naruto-kun. All your powers and experience have transferred without issue, but your Keke Genkai, Rikidu powers, and much of your chakra have been sealed. You still have the Sharingan at its base form and by Akigan, but you must reintroduce your new body to intense training. Once you've done so, all of your abilities and chakra will slowly recognize you and reawaken. Kahana advised Naruto as he nodded. I estimate that it will take about two years, give or take a few weeks, of constant training to fully restore your eyes, body, and chakra reserves. Until then, I will be able to lend you small amounts of my own chakra. I see, thank you very much, Kahana-chan Naruto then turned toward Karami before giving her a warm smile. I wouldn't expect you to make it easy on me and Kahana-chan, but I hope we can be friends. Naruto said hoping that the crimson-haired vixen wouldn't deny his offer for friendship. Karami stared at Naruto with a look of almost disbelief, in all her years of living, not once has one single human ever asked to be her friend. It was strange from what she learned from Kahana, he was on good terms with her male counterpart Karama. But would she be able to return his feelings? She wouldn't know until she tried. You are a strange one, Naruto-kun, your counterpart here was as dense as a brick. But. If we're ever going to work together I guess we might as well start off with being. Friends. Karami said in an unsure voice.
although much to her surprise she saw Naruto lean over the table and stretch out his arm as he made a fist. Karami froze and she sensed no negative intentions coming from him. He genuinely wanted to befriend her. She blinked before smiling and extended her own arms as they both fist bumped. The moment they bumped fists, they unintentionally shared their memories with each other. Naruto for his part blinked in surprise at Karami's memories, Hagoromo created the Bijuu much sooner in this world than he did in his own world. Karami and her siblings spent their childhood with Hagoromo as he taught them about the world and how to use their chakra. In this world, Hagoromo could give the Bijuu actual physical living bodies and non-chakra based bodies. When Hagoromo died, this caused the nine Bijuu to split apart, leaving Karami by herself, and as time went on she decided to interact with humans. Unfortunately, this wouldn't last too long as Madara showed up and the rest was the same as his homeworld. Karami found herself in awe at how much Naruto had done for her counterpart and his siblings. And that they were willing to fuse together to give him enough power to defeat Kagaya, she found herself starting to like the blonde-haired human more and more as she viewed his memories. Bay and Sayuri, you guys already know Naruto's past, so I'm not going to bother explaining it. All the while Naruto and Karami were fist bumping each other, Kahana sat there smiling, perhaps with Karami here, Naruto wouldn't feel so disconnected. The two separated as they both sat down not uttering a word, while Kahana blinked in confusion. Why are you both so quiet? Karami spoke first. It appears we shared our memories with one another, and I was genuinely surprised when I saw them. Naruto nodded at this. The differences between you and Karama are greater than I thought, he commented. Karami sighed before grabbing a piece of meat with her chopsticks. Well, this makes it easier this way I don't really have to explain anything. She said before stuffing the piece of meat into her mouth. Naruto felt the need to ask her a question. If you don't mind me asking, Karami-chan, where are we exactly right now? Naruto asked curiously as Karami gently tapped her chin with her finger. Hmm. I believe you're in the forest of death in the second stage of the Chunin exams. That disgusting hebe san in Arachimaru, who hit you with the Gajinfkin 5 element seal. But upon your arrival, Kahana-chan was able to destroy the Gajinfkin with a single pulse of her chakra. Karami explained. Naruto closed his eyes as he was deep in thought, and Naruto smirked. So that damned snake already hit Sasuke with a curse seal, huh? I could remove it now if I had my Rinnegan, but now since I don't have the Rinnegan or Tensigan right now, I think I should take care of those three Odo Ninja. It will give me the opportunity to test out the Sharingan and Byakugan too. Naruto thought to himself before opening his eyes. Kahana chan I am able to use the Byakugan and Sharingan, yes? Naruto asked while Kahana cocked a delicate eyebrow. Of course, you can. Let me guess you want to test out your new eyes. Kahana said as Naruto nodded, she shook her head but smiled. Sure, go ahead. Just please be careful. Kahana said while Naruto grinned. Don't worry Kahana chan I'll be fine, Naruto replied with a foxy grin before he stood up and waved goodbye before vanishing from his mindscape. He's far different from the Naruto of this world, he is so bright and full of energy. I can feel him rekindling my cold blackened heart. Karami spoke aloud, staring at the place where Naruto once sat. Kahana smiled as well. I believe he'll change the world for the better, and with us all here for him, he has no chance of failing. A humanoid Jubi said to the crimson-haired vixen, who simply smiled before taking another sip of tea. Forest of death, Shikamaru knew he had to come up with something to get them out of this, and fast. Would you really kill your teammate? He asked, trying to stall for time. Anything, even a second or two would be good. The longer they lived, the better their chances of survival were. P.S.H., you seem to think we actually have feelings for this girl, Zaku said, looking at the Kanoha Genin with a cruel sadistic grin. The only reason why she's on our team is because her skills complement ours. But if she couldn't even stop herself from getting caught by some worthless jutsu like that, then we have no further use for her. She is expendable. Ah, I can't take this anymore. Everyone looked up to see Niji and Tenten on a branch a few meters above them. Niji scowled as he crossed his arms, some small-time ninja from a second-rate village like a Togaker, fighting a bunch of defenseless beaten kids. You call that a victory? He scoffed, how pathetic. They're persistent as cockroaches. Those other losers gave up far easier than these ones, Dosu mumbled. Lee. Tenten muttered as she saw her teammate. Niji glanced at her before looking back at the battle, he focused his sights on the three Odo Genin. Niji soon channeled some of his chakra into his eyes, causing veins to bulge around the sides of his head. The glare he sent the Odonin, enhanced by the bulging veins of his Byakugan, caused Dosu and Zaku to freeze in their tracks temporarily. It seems you used my teammate as a punching bag. That will be the biggest mistake of your life. Yeah, so what if we had wide eyes? What would you even do about it? Come down and kick our asses. Zaku sent the Hyuga returning glare. Niji was about to reply when something caught his eye before he smirked and deactivated his Byakugan. It seems we don't have to do anything. 
However, before anyone could reply to a massive amount of chakra, it was at least as much chakra as Shukaku possessed. This level of chakra sent shivers down everyone's spines, especially Dosu and Zaku who both began to sweat. They are under the tree standing next to the still unconscious Asuke. They were all shocked to see a person standing there. Naruto stood there in all his glory as he removed his bright orange jacket, tossing it to the side. Naruto glared at the Odonin before him, his cerulean blue eyes were cold as ice. Naruto stared down at his hand quickly clenching as he tightly made a fist. My chakra control is definitely gone, but taking out the story shouldn't be much of a problem. It would probably be best if I didn't use any of the jutsus I learned from Iro Senen. As it would raise too many questions. Naruto thought as he released his killer intent causing everyone to tense up, minus Aku who either didn't possess sensory abilities or simply didn't care. The blonde black smirked before clasping his hands together, activating two different powers in his eyes. In his left eye, the cerulean blue color transformed into a pure white pupil-less orb with veins bulging from his left temple. His right eye changed color as well, but instead of white, it became red with three black tomo encircling his black pupil. He had both the Byakugan and the fully matured Sharingan. Naruto. Sakura mumbled in shock, awed her formerly unconscious teammate who stood there ready to fight. The boy with two of the three great Tejutsu stared down his enemies, who hadn't moved for some reason. So, this is the feeling of having the Byakugan and the Sharingan Naruto thought to himself in awe. With this power. I can absolutely win this battle and protect everyone. Naruto said with a smirk before looking up he saw everyone around him. Every person in the line of sight of his white and red eyes landed on tensed, minus Aku who either didn't possess sensory abilities or simply didn't care. Naruto narrowed his eyes at Zaku, who didn't even react to Naruto's glare. What is this? This changes everything, we were supposed to destroy Sasuke not to deal with some kind of mutant. Dog's mind was in shambles as he stared at this boy's eyes. His chakra is overwhelming, it's unbelievable that someone this young looking has this much chakra. He might even surpass Orochimaru Sama's power in a year at most. There's no way in hell we can beat him. So, one of that girl's fallen comrades finally woke up, Zaku said as he realized who this boy was. With all the confidence in the world, he stepped towards Naruto, with a smirk on his face. Now what are you planning to do? You can't stop us before we finish Sasuke off. Osu was trying to come up with a plan to get them all out of here before this man killed them. He knew his teammate didn't stand a chance against Naruto as he was now and tried to stop his fellow Odo Ninja from attacking the Nine Tails. Zaku don't. However, Zaku simply ignored his teammate's warning and held out his palms and shouted, Zinkei Kuha Extreme Decapitating Airwaves. The powerful blast of slicing airwaves admitted from Zaku's hands was incredible. Everyone was forced to crouch down and cover their eyes as the immense pressure displaced the air around them, causing some of the bystanders to be knocked off their feet. When the powerful jutsu finally ended, all the attendees saw the large-scale destruction that Zaku had created. Even the tree that both Sasuke and Naruto had been lying under had been destroyed. Zaku was breathing heavily as he stood there, his feet spread shoulder width apart, slightly crouched, with his hands held out in front of him. However, despite his obvious state of exhaustion, he had a proud smirk on his face. Eh, look at that. He said in between huffing and puffing, he still retained his arrogant tone despite his exhausted state. Blew that little shit to pieces. Not quite sure where you are aiming next time. Zaku's eyes widened as he heard a voice from behind him. He quickly turned around and saw Naruto standing directly behind him with both Sasuke and Sakura behind him. Naruto raised a single hand as he punched Zaku's forehead hard. Zaku released a shout of pain and surprise as he was literally sent flying. He soared through the air right until his body hit the ground and started tumbling. His still conscious teammate yelled his name, but unhelpful to the boy as he rolled across the ground like a ragdoll. Zaku came to a full stop and managed to push himself up onto his hands and knees. Such speed. Dosu cried out in surprise. He managed to get his teammate out of harm's way in the blink of an eye. Everyone else seemed to be just as surprised as the petrified Odonin. While Zaku's whole body shook in shock and a little fear, the members of teams 10 and 9 were staring at Naruto in disbelief. Even Niji could barely comprehend what he saw in Naruto's eyes. Naruto took a step forward before he heard a small voice in his head, it was Kahana's voice. Naruto-kun, use the 8 trigrams. Vacuum palm haki kkshm. Naruto's eyes widened slightly before he received mental instructions on how to use this technique. Aki KKSHM. Naruto yelled before extending his hand palm out, Naruto then launched a shell of compressed air and chakra at the unsuspecting Zaku. Watching the sudden attack, Niji was in pure and utter disbelief. Who is he? Why does he have the Byakugan and know the Jiken gentle fist? He wanted desperately to know. Zaku you must dodge it. Dosu yelled out at his teammate, who nodded and narrowly dodged a cone of chakra. 
Upon this cone hitting the ground, it exploded, literally shaking the area and sending rocks and debris flying everywhere. Everyone looked in shock, awe, and fear at the devastation of such a small attack. Naruto simply raised his arm again creating the same technique once more, firing the technique at Zaku again who stuck out his arms and released a powerful blast of his own airwaves. I'm not going to let you get the best of me again. Zaku yelled out frantically trying to stop the small drill of destructive chakra. Naruto simply smirked. How cute but your little breeze won't save you, Naruto spoke in an arrogant tone, clearly showing some of Sasuke's personality traits that he gained through Sasuke involuntarily. Zaku's eyes widened when he saw the cone pierce through and destroyed his attack and hit him directly in the stomach. Much to everyone's surprise the attack didn't pierce through or gouge Zaku's body, but Zaku soon felt incredibly weak. Gah. My chakra. What is going on? Naruto advanced towards the fallen Odonin before picking them up by the back of his shirt. Naruto then turned towards Dosu. Don't worry your teammate is not dead, he's simply weak from his chakra being temporarily closed. Now give me your scroll before I beat you half to death. Naruto spoke in a non-humorous tone. Osu gulped as he grabbed his scroll, he knew better than to mess with someone who had this much power. Here, will you let us go? Dosu asked as he tossed Naruto his scroll. Naruto, in turn, tossed Zaku to Dosu. Naruto caught the scroll and looked at it. Nodding with a satisfied look, he pocketed the scroll and gave Dosu a dismissive wave. Yeah go get lost or something. Dosu held in a sigh of relief as he picked up Zaku and Kin, throwing one over his shoulder and the other in an underarm carry. Naruto waited until Dosu was out of sight before deactivating his dejutsu. With the danger gone, Naruto turned around to face his fellow Konoha genin. Yo, Naruto said awkwardly as he waved. Everyone looked at him, still stunned. Naruto. Shikamaru spoke in a very unsure tone. Nara answered as he couldn't believe that this person was Naruto. But it made no sense Naruto always wore his obnoxious bright kill me orange jumpsuit and never took it off for no reason. Another factor is that Naruto had an obnoxiously loud mouth which they all remembered from the academy, and yet he was calm and cool and collected. Shikamaru couldn't help but wonder what happened to the blonde, something must have happened to him during their fight with the Odo Ninja. Naruto stood there with a slightly annoyed look on his face. Well, who else were you expecting? Santa Claus or something? Naruto asked sarcastically, causing the two beautiful within him to giggle. Naruto's little retort seemed to snap everyone out of their stupor, but this still left them in a haze as they wondered how this person, who was radiating this much power, could possibly be Naruto. There was no way this extremely powerful and handsome-looking young man could be the dead last of their class. Shikamaru was about to ask Naruto a question when a vile and evil chakra descended onto the clearing. Everyone turned to see Sasuke, still on the ground, but with a violent purple chakra leaking out of his body like wisps of smoke. Naruto simply turned around and stared at Sasuke as the chakra covered his entire body, encasing him in an ugly purple barrier. The barrier soon exploded, purple chakra lashing out in all directions. Sasuke was now hunched over, his legs spread out, he slowly stood up straight from a fetal position. The right side of his body was covered in glowing orange marks that spread across his face, arms and legs like a parasite, the strange flame-like marks that looked every bit as evil as the chakra he was unleashing. Sasuke-kun. Sakura mumbled in shock, awe and more than a little lust, as she saw all of the power he was emitting. This, Sasuke Ichiha has said in awe. His eyes lowered to his arm that was covered in all the Fu Plus and Jutsu markings. This power. This is just what I need to kill him, to kill Itachi. As if just noticing for the first time that he was not alone, Sasuke's head raised and his eyes stared at all of the people around him. His gaze then focused on Naruto who looked different from what he once did. Sasuke looked at Naruto with jealousy in his eyes, Naruto had easily doubled the amount of power he now possessed. That power should be his and his alone. What's with the sudden change in Naruto? Sasuke growled in a demanding tone, his Sharingan eyes glared into Naruto's cerulean blue eyes. Naruto's eye twitched at Sasuke's behavior, Naruto in his original timeline, never woke up in time to see how Sasuke defeated Zaku. It seems Naruto gained Sasuke's memories when he transferred his Rakuto chakra over to him. Naruto was truly disgusted by Sasuke's actions. I'm under no obligation to answer your question, but maybe I felt a change was in order. Since I believe it's time I start taking my career as a shinobi much more seriously. Naruto spoke in an annoyed tone of voice before activating his three Tomo Sharingan and Byakugan, just in case Sasuke tried anything crazy. Sasuke growled at Naruto not liking the tone used. How? How? Why do you have Sharingan? Sasuke screamed. No, it doesn't matter if you've gotten stronger or gotten new eyes. I'm still going to defeat you and show you your place, which is far below me, loser. Sasuke yelled out. Naruto narrowed his open eyes. To think I actually considered him a friend, maybe I should just kill him and be done with it. Naruto thought to himself but decided against it, as Sasuke's personality traits had a big influence on him. 
Whether these influences were positive or negative Naruto was unsure of now. Naruto then snapped back into reality as he saw Sasuke aging closer to him with his fist raised back. Hmm. Well let's test out how strong he is. Naruto thought to himself. Be careful Naruto-kun you don't want to overdo it right now you may just accidentally kill him. Suki called out to her host. I would listen to her Naruto, you really shouldn't be overdoing it right now. Hirami also called out to her host. Naruto internally smiled. Don't worry I'm not gonna do anything crazy right now, I'm just going to scare him a bit. Naruto replied. Kahana and Karami both shook their heads at Naruto's behavior, but they couldn't help but smile as they knew he wouldn't use this power for evil. As Sasuke's face was closer to Naruto's face, a surge of chakra exploded from Naruto's body. Naruto performed the hackish Nkatenate trigram's palm rotation and completely deflected Sasuke's punch, causing the partially insane Ichiha to jump back in confusion. Naruto ceased the rotation and deactivated his eyes. He reopened them revealing his cerulean blue eyes. Sasuke jumped into action, preparing to kick Naruto who blocked Sasuke's kick with his forearm. Sasuke aimed his other arm at Naruto's face who caught it with his left hand. Naruto quickly brought his knee up into Sasuke's stomach, causing the last Ichiha to double over in pain. Naruto delivered a powerful uppercut to Sasuke's chin, followed up by grabbing Sasuke by the collar of his shirt and delivering an even stronger powerful headbutt, knocking the Ichiha out cold. Everyone who is present and conscious simply stared at Naruto with a look of disbelief as he literally overpowered and knocked out his teammate. Sakura on the other hand is filled with rage at what Naruto did to her precious Sasuke-kun. She stood up and began to march over to Naruto, her march quickly turned into a run as she shouted. Naruto no baka how could you do such a thing to Sasuke-kun. She screeched out with her fist cocked back, ready to unleash righteous fury upon her blonde teammate. Naruto flinched at the tone of the pink-haired banshee's ear-piercing screech. Looking over at the underdeveloped ugly pink-haired girl rushing at him with a fist cocked back. Naruto narrowed his eyes, having no intention of letting her hit him anymore. What the hell did I ever see in this pain? Now I know why Sasuke never liked her, she's so fucking annoying. Naruto mentally growled as Kahana and Karami nodded in agreement. Naruto sidestepped and tripped Sakura, causing her to fall face first to the ground. Sakura quickly picked herself up, but not quick enough to stop Naruto from delivering a chop to the back of her neck and knocking her out. Naruto sighed before cracking his neck and creating two clones, one to carry Sasuke and the other to carry the pink-haired banshee. Naruto quickly looked over at teams 9 and 10. Oi, guys I think it would be a good idea for you to move on to the tower, Naruto said as he leaped into the trees and disappeared. Was that really Naruto? Ino asked, unsure of how to feel about the events that transpired. She was unaware of the blush forming on her face, as her mind reminded her of how attractive he had become. When did he become so gorgeous? Sasuke doesn't even begin to compare to him. It looks like it, Shikamaru muttered to himself. From the expression on his face, it was clear that he was displeased by these new developments. He had absolutely no problem with expressing his thoughts through more complaining. This is just perfect, now that blonde can be even more troublesome even more than you, Ino. Come on, we'd better head to the tower so we can get out of this damn troublesome forest. Chapter 3 Naruto couldn't help but grin as he and his clones continued hopping through the trees. Naruto finally understood how useful the Byakugan truly was until right now, not only did it eat up less chakra than the Sharingan, but allowed him not only to zoom close to 1000 meter ahead of him, it also gave him x-ray and 360 degrees peripheral vision as well. Even if his chakra reserves weren't as big as they used to be. Naruto still had more chakra than most of the in Konoha, as well as supersonic speed without enhancements from either Kahana or Karami. And another reason he was so happy was he managed to snatch a heaven scroll from the unsuspecting aim ninja he dealt with in his original timeline. Now that he was much more mature and intelligent, Naruto couldn't believe how pathetic some of the people were that entered this exam. He couldn't believe that he literally pickpocketed the scroll off one of the aim ninja without even being noticed while they were laying traps. The first time he was in the forest of death, the blonde Uzumaki had no idea how long he had been unconscious in the forest. This time, Naruto had a couple of hiccups on the way to the tower, and to avoid any conflict, he purposely allowed his clones to smack his teammate's head against tree branches to ensure the peace and quiet that he had been enjoying. Naruto had no desire to listen to the shrieking and wailing of his two teammates. It didn't take Naruto long before he found himself standing in front of one of the doors leading into the tower. After gently pushing it open, Naruto and his clones walked in and looked around. The room was a decent size, with several red columns on either side acting as supports. The walls were barren gray, with cracks and stains that showed just how old this tower really was. Soon enough, Naruto's eyes landed on a large poster hanging on the wall opposite to the door. Since Naruto already knew what to do, he created a clone and handed it to the Earth Scroll. Nodding to the clone they both opened the scrolls at the same time. 
they both threw the scrolls to the ground, forming an X as the heaven scroll landed on top of the earth scroll. It was a burst of smoke, and when it cleared, Haruka sensei Naruto's teacher and surrogate father, was standing in front of Naruto. Haruka was a man of average height and build. He had brown hair that was being kept in a ponytail, dark eyes and a scar that ran across the bridge of his nose, which he has had since his youth. He was wearing the standard Konoha Shinobi outfit complete with forehead protector, sandals and flak jacket. Hey Aruka sensei it's been a while since we've seen each other hasn't it? Naruto said with a foxy grin as he saw one of his only precious people. Haruka was the first person to believe in him besides the fourth Hokage and his mother, and one of the only people that Naruto considered family. Hello Naru. Naruto Aruka seemed surprised by Naruto's new look, the grown man who had experienced the Kaiubi's attack on Konoha years ago was speechless and couldn't even utter a single word after yelling out Naruto's name. Yeah that's my name please don't wear it out sensei. Naruto chuckled. The scarred man managed to compose himself as he asked a quick question. Naruto what happened to you? You look so... different. Naruto finished Aruka's sentence. Let's just say I awakened my bloodline sometimes during the exam and we can leave it at that. Naruto said much to Aruka's mixture of confusion and curiosity. I didn't know you had a bloodline. Well I didn't know I had one either. Naruto said in a clueless tone. But don't worry sensei I'll tell you about it later, I just gotta figure out some things. For now, I'm kind of tired and hungry. Naruto spoke with a nervous chuckle as he scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Aruka nodded and decided to drop the subject when he noticed that both Sasuke and Sakura were unconscious on the floor not too far from Naruto. What exactly happened to Naruto? Naruto looked at his so-called teammates and then looked back at Aruka with a look of disappointment. Sakura got knocked out during a fight with Samoto Nin and Sasuke got in a fight with a freaky lady who could summon snakes and she gave him a hickey. Naruto explained. For all intents and purposes, he was telling the truth. Sasuke had been unconscious after he received the mark and Naruto had to knock out both of them after the fight with Odo Ninja. On the other hand, Haruka felt a chill go down his spine. To his knowledge, there were only two people who could summon snakes, and one of them was a S-rank criminal traitor. Assuming that man was truly in Konoha then it could only mean trouble, and lots of it. Anyways I think you get them to the hospital. They may be in serious trouble. Naruto said. Thankfully for him Aruka simply nodded as he regained his composure. Sure, I'll get them to the medical bay immediately then. In the meantime, you should head down to the cafeteria. It's down the hall, three doors on your left, and after that you should head over to room 232 and get some rest, you have two days until the second part of the exam's end. Naruto had a grateful and happy expression on his face. Thanks a bunch sensei, I'll see you later then. Naruto said as he ran down the hall to get something to eat. Haruka simply chuckled as he shook his head, different looks or not, Naruto was still the same. Time skip the next morning, Naruto was enjoying a blissful sleep dreaming about a happier time of him being Hokage with Sasuke standing by his side as his right hand man. The dream was too good to be true, which was correct as Naruto was woken up by water hitting him directly in the face. Naruto awoke to see Kurami standing over him holding an empty bucket that once held water. She had a smirk on her face. I believe it's time for you to get up. It's around noon. She spoke in a voice that held quite a bit of humor as he glared at the crimson haired vixen. But then something came to mind, how was Karami in the real world when she was supposed to be sealed within him? How did you get out of the seal? I thought it was impossible for any biju besides the Juubi. Naruto spoke in a confused tone. Karami raised a single delicate eyebrow. Well Naruto to answer your question, it's exactly like the Kuchiyas no Jutsu summoning technique that you shinobi use. It allows me to summon myself outside of my host's body, but most of my chakra is left in your body. Karami explained as Naruto nodded. So. Why are you out here? Naruto curiously asked as he noticed Kahana was also in the room. Naruto-kun we're here to discuss a few things you should do after you make it to the finals. And I suggest you tell as few people as possible that you're not from this timeline. Kahana spoke in a serious tone of voice. Naruto nodded. I wasn't planning on telling too many people about that anyways. I was only thinking about Jiji, the third hero Senen, and maybe Kakashi, but that was about it. Naruto replied while his two very lovely tenants nodded. Anyways, now you already know about Hagoromo Atsutsuki from your world, so I believe it's only fair to tell you how he was in this world. Even though you saw my memories, you still don't know the history. So, I believe it's important that I tell you this now, while we have the time. Karami said before there was a knock at the door. Naruto climbed out of bed wearing nothing but a t-shirt and his boxer shorts, debating on whether he should ignore the person. Naruto opened the door, and it was none other than Gara, the Ichibi and son of the... Hello. How can I help you Gara? Naruto spoke in a surprised tone. They want me to speak with you, Yuzumaki. Gara said with a blank expression on his face. Naruto gained the confused expression on his face. 
Why would Shukaku want Gara to speak with me? Naruto pondered for a second before gesturing for Naruto to follow the man. Garami could clearly sense her youngest brother inside this boy. She hadn't seen him since their father died. Naruto pulled up a chair as Gara sat down, who stared at Naruto intently. Karami decided to break the ice. Shukaku, what brings you here? Almost instantly after her comment a small cloud of smoke appeared in the room, revealing a young handsome man with wild blonde and blue hair reaching his shoulders. He had black cursed seal markings all over its face, body, and tail. He only wore a pair of baggy pants and sandals. The sclera of his eyes was black, with yellower eyes and pupils that each had the shape of a black four-pointed star with four black dots around it. Kukikuku. Still acting like a princess are we. Kakekaki. The reason why I'm here is because I swore I felt Aji-san and I came to investigate. Shukaku replied in a sadistic teasing tone. Hirami narrowed her eyes but sighed. That would be my Naruto. And Kahana-chan over there. She gestured towards Naruto and the new Jubi. Shukaku took one look at Naruto before raising an eyebrow. I could have sworn you wore orange and were much weaker. Shukaku took one look at Kahana before his whole body froze in place, swaying behind her work ten tails. TT that's I I impossible. The Jubi is supposed to be sealed away. And it's supposed to be male. Shukaku wailed out as he took a few steps back. Ara seemed confused by the whole situation. What do you mean by Jubi? Aren't there only nine Biju? Gara spoke in a very confused tone. Naruto then volunteered himself to explain. You see I'm not the Naruto of this world, more or less Kahana and I were thrown into this world and I took over my counterpart's body. Naruto said as Shukaku and Gara both looked at him as if he grew another head. Anyways the Jubi is the aggregate of all nine Bijus fused together inside of the Jito Meizo. In my world the Jubi is the embodiment of Kagaya Atsutsuki combined with the Shinju, created to reclaim the chakra inherited by her sons, Hagoromo and Humura. It was regarded as the progenitor of chakra and is tied to the legend of the Rakuto Senen and the birth of Shinobi. He goes by multiple names Jubi, Aim no Hitatsu no Kami, Datara, or Tadirobachi. Naruto explained. Shukaku then glanced at Kahana before looking back at Naruto. Then what about her? He spoke in a confused tone. Kahana spoke up. Oh, I was not created from the Jito Meizo if that's what you're asking. The nine Bijuu chose to fuse together to create me so that I may be able to help Naruto-kun when he was fighting against Kagaya. Kahana finished as Shukaku nodded. Ara then asked the question. What about the Jubi of this world? Karami and Shukaku both looked at each other before nodding. I think it'd be best if my niece Sama told you, as I'm not really good with storytelling. Shukaku admitted in a bored tone. Karami cleared her throat as she began to speak. Ahem, about 2000 years ago a being of immeasurable power existed. It went by the same names as Naruto stated earlier, Aim no Hitatsu no Kami, Datara, Didarabachi or just plain Jubi. It's unknown where he came from, some say he was created by both Kami and Yami to maintain balance. Or if he came from a different dimension, or if he's the manifestation of nature itself no one knows. Shortly after he arrived he began guiding and shaping the world, almost as if he was terraforming it and preparing for something. Eventually he found a mortal bride whose name was Kagaya Atsutsuki, the current princess and rightful heir of the Atsutsuki clan. From what Chichiyu told us it was love at first sight, and eventually Kagaya became pregnant and bore two sons, Hagoromo and Hamura Atsutsuki. Not only were they humans, but they were the first two humans to ever wield chakra and the only two members from the Atsutsuki clan who were actually powerful and didn't have weak and frail bodies. Eventually Hagoromo and Hamura began wandering around the world passing chakra to everyone they met, as well as sharing knowledge for their wish of creating world peace. They called this religion Ninshk. For some reason, this angered the Jubi so he began a mass genocide of the humans, he did this to reclaim his power which his sons, in his own mind foolishly shared with these lesser beings. Agaromo and Hamura were absolutely disgusted by their father's reaction, but what pushed them really over the edge is when their father killed Kagaya, his own wife. This started an all-out war between father and sons, the battle lasted days until Hamura was fatally injured. One can only imagine the type of emotions Chichiyu must have gone through, especially when Hamura transferred the remainder of his power to his elder brother. After that, Hamura died as his chakra converged with Hagoromo's, awakening the Rinnegan. This Dejutsu gave him the edge he needed to defeat his weakened father. Victorious, Chichiyu sealed his father inside of himself, this made him the first. Being the slayer of his father, everyone revered him as a god for his victory over the Jubi. Years later Hagoromo separated his father's chakra within his body using his signature ability, the creation of all things ability to divide it into nine separated bodies, creating us, the nine Biju. At our births he gave us each a name. 
We grew up alongside his two sons Ashura and Indra, many years later Hagoromo hadn't aged all, but the moment he removed his father's husk from his body and sealed it, creating the celestial body we all know as the moon as the container, his body rapidly aged, and he sadly passed away shortly afterwards. Karami finished wiping away a few tears of sadness. Shukaku may have not had tears in his eyes, but he was obviously depressed after hearing that story. Shukaku then looked towards his sister and her host, Jinchuriki, and Kahana. I think I should inform you now, Gara's father is planning an invasion with Orochimaru to destroy Konoha. Shukaku spoke in a serious tone. Naruto looked towards Shukaku. Yeah, I already know that, but thanks for the heads up, but whose side are you on? Naruto asked while Shukaku frowned. I don't really get to decide, go figure. It's my Jinchuriki's choice, so should you ask him instead of me? I could say I would be on your side, but Gara may be forced to fight you. Do you understand what I mean? Shukaku said in a non-humorous tone. Naruto then looked towards Gara, who was now wearing his usual emotionless expression. Gara, whose side are you on? Naruto asked. Gara didn't respond immediately. I've always been told to fight, to prove my existence by killing. What could you possibly offer me? I'm quite content with my life right now. Gara spoke in an emotionless tone, which in the distance Naruto heard a slap and a wail of pain. It was most likely Karami slapping Shukaku for whatever reason. Naruto gave a small smile. How about friendship? Just like you I've been that lonely dark place it hurts doesn't it? Being ignored no one wants you around, even your own family fears you. Gara, I'm like you, I understand your pain better than anyone. Naruto explained hoping that the young Ritidid would listen to him. He did not want to have to force on his fellow. Then why didn't you turn out like me? One where you prove your existence through killing others, that's where, true strength. Gara was cut off by Naruto as he raised a hand. That's your father talking, not you. Gara, true strength comes from the desire to protect those who are precious to you. When you have something worth fighting for, you become truly strong. I fight for everyone I care about, Kahana-chan, Karami-chan, Jiji, Iro-senen, Kakashi-sensei, and many others. That is where my strength comes from, and I'm pretty sure you have people who care about you for your brother and sister. Naruto said in a prideful tone. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but we could start out like this. Hi, my name is Uzumaki Naruto, and I'd like to be your friend. Naruto said with a warm smile on his face, Gara's eyes widened at Naruto's little announcement. Looking down at Naruto's hand, Gara felt his hand twitch. Shukaku stood up to the side nursing the giant bump on the side of his head. For my sake take the damn offer. I don't want to get beaten up by my Nisama anymore. Shukaku complained. Gara nodded to Shukaku before taking Naruto's hand firmly and shaking it. I'm Sabaku no Gara, and will you teach me what it means to be a friend? Gara said in a confused tone as Naruto's face faltered. Well it's a start at least, I can just get him and his siblings on my side. Then we can turn the tide of this invasion greatly. Naruto thought to himself. Kahana and Karami smile at Naruto's little bonding moment with Shukaku's Jinchuriki host Gara. Time skipped the beginning of the preliminary rounds. Naruto felt greatly annoyed as he ignored the stares he received from most of the people watching. Without exception, the crowd of people were either wondering who he was or why did he change so much. It was obvious that most of the people had heard what happened in the forest of death from the gossip queen Eno. Naruto wished he could turn invisible as this was rather annoying, but he really couldn't blame them for staring at him, but he wished they would stop. Naruto took a moment to survey all the different teams and it was the same as his original timeline. Without counting his team there are five other teams in total that had made it past the second stage, most of which were the rookie genin teams like his own. This left only two other teams, the Odo team and Gara's team. Naruto then turned his focus back to the area around him. They were in a large theater battle arena that resembled some type of tournament training area. He, along with the other genin, were currently standing on a stone-tiled surface. Up in front of them was none other than Siratobi Hiruzen, who was currently standing on the cage platform. Behind Hiruzen were the proctors Anko and Ibiki, who were looking out amongst the crowd. The Jounin sensei were also among them, along with a few chunin who were acting as judges. Anko groaned as she looked at all the genin who passed the second stage. Out of 78 people that we started with, 21 of them actually made it in time. When I said, I was gonna cut them in half I was thinking more along the lines of single digits. Anko sighed before her eyes landed on the blonde black-haired genin. The only thing that's really bugging me is who that is. I heard a rumor from that blonde-haired idiot had a transformation in the forest. But he never looked like this. Anko continued to ponder. It's truly remarkable that so many made it and for so many of them to be rookies is nothing short of astonishing. Hiruzen eyed the Jounin squad leaders. It's no wonder they were all nominated. Hiruzen's gaze landed on where Naruto was supposed to be, in his place was a bit more mature-looking Naruto with black and blonde hair. Naruto detected Hiruzen staring at him. This was the perfect moment that Naruto had been waiting for. 
Naruto quickly met Sandame's eyes before quickly manifesting his Sharingan for a split second. Hiruzen completely froze at the eye in Naruto's left eye socket, and before the old Hokage could even take his eyes off Naruto, he felt the pull of Jinjutsu. Naruto's mindscape, what is this place? Hiruzen asked as he found himself in a rather luxurious room. Luckily, the old Hokage didn't have to wait long, as the sliding door to his side opened, revealing Naruto smiling at the old man. Welcome to my mindscape. It's a place where I can speak to you without anyone interrupting us. So please follow me. There's some people I want you to meet. Naruto gestured as Hiruzen followed him out of the room. Naruto led Hiruzen down the hallways before they came to a large set of sliding doors. Giving a gentle knock, Naruto heard Karami and Kahana say. Come in. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow hearing two female voices from the opposite room. Naruto opened the door which Hiruzen nearly fainted at what he saw. Karami and Kahana were both sitting at the round table, peacefully drinking tea with their biju features showing, ears, tails, claws, and fangs. Naruto walked over and sat down on his designated Siza pillows, to which Kahana passed Naruto a cup of tea. Hiruzen stood there like a deer caught in headlights unable to move, unable to speak. Jiji, we have lots to discuss. Hiruzen sighed before muttering out. I'm getting too old for this shit. As Naruto and his two biju chuckled at the old man's response. Karami stood up and bowed to the old Hokage. Greetings Zeratobi Hiruzen, I'm Atsutsuki Karami, the Kaiubi and eldest daughter of Atsutsuki Hagoromo, the Rakuto Senen. Karami spoke in an elegant manner before sitting back down. Kahana then stood up and bowed as well. It is a pleasure to meet you Saratobi Hiruzen, I'm Atsutsuki Kahana, and I was born from the collaboration of the nine Biju fusing together. Kahana also spoke in an elegant manner before sitting back down. Hiruzen seemed completely calm as he took a sip of tea, before gently placing the cup back down the table. Hiruzen looked towards Naruto and began to flip out. Naruto-kun. What the hell is going on? Naruto chuckled at the elderly man. Calm down Jiji, I said I'll explain everything to you. Plus, I believe this would have been the best way to tell you. Naruto said while Hiruzen's eye twitched violently. Well, start explaining. Hiruzen was not in the mood for games, he was now sitting in front of the Kaiubi and most possibly the Juubi. But what baffled Hiruzen the most was why weren't they behind the cage, this meant they could corrupt Naruto much easier, or so he thought. Naruto sighed and began to explain the events leading up to Kagaya's resurrection, and how he and Sasuke had been battling her for who knows how long. This was followed by the death of Sasuke, the creation of Kahana, and his resurgence into this world. Naruto also explained about the invasion Orochimaru was planning, as well as telling Hiruzen that he befriended Gara, Shukaku's. Naruto-kun I will not tell a soul about this, I will treat this as a SSS rank secret punishable by death. But I can only assume that you will be telling Jiraiya about this as well. Naruto nodded, Hiruzen sighed. And I can only assume that you already know about your parents. Naruto nodded at this. I do not blame you for what you did, Jiji. You did what you thought was best. When Jiraiya comes, I will explain everything to him as well. Hiruzen nodded, accepting Naruto's answer before asking the question that was on his mind. Naruto-kun, how do I get out of here Naruto-kun? Naruto gave an amused chuckle as he grinned before he poked Hiruzen in the forehead. Hiruzen vanished from sight as Naruto gave his goodbyes to Kahana and Karami. Real world, Hiruzen felt his consciousness returning, luckily only a few seconds passed in the real world. This is a rather interesting turn of events, for better or worse I do not know. Hiruzen thought to himself. To everyone who made it this far congratulations on passing the second stage of the Chunin exams, Enko said. Listen carefully as Hokage-sama will explain how the third stage of these exams works. Before I explain the third stage of the exams to you, there's something I would like you all to know. Hiruzen said. The true reason for these exams. That little speech seemed to catch many of the Chunin hopefuls off guard. The only one who didn't seem to be caught off guard was Naruto. As he had already heard this speech from his original timeline twice in fact, so he zoned out the sandame for the time being. Karami-chan this is something I want to ask you. Naruto asked politely. And what might that be Naruto? Karami replied almost instantly. Naruto was curious what kind of abilities she possessed, as Karama only possessed negative emotion sensing and high speed regeneration. What kind of abilities or powers do you have other than negative emotion sensing and high speed regeneration? What kind of powers do your siblings have too? Naruto asked curiously. Yes, I'm also curious about that as well, Karami-chan. Kahana added her two cents into the conversation. Karami was slightly surprised by Naruto's question. You really are a strange human, are you? To answer your questions, yes. Each of us has our own unique abilities, so, I'm guessing that the Bijuus of this world also have special abilities, what are they exactly? Naruto asked as Kahana nodded, also curious. After all Naruto and Kahana knew very little of the Bijuu in this world. Karami tapped her chin a few times. 
My youngest brother Shukaku is a master of wind, earth which allows them to manipulate sand. He's also a master of curse seals and is able to generate extremely powerful magnetic forces. Next up is my adorable little sister Matatabi. She could generate extremely powerful and hot blue flames, she's also the Shinigami's apprentice, so she has the ability of necromancy. Karami said. Hold on a second. Did you just say necromancy, that's like the Edo Tensei right? Naruto asked, slightly confused. Karami sighed. Yes more or less the only difference is she doesn't need to sacrifice, as long as the Shinigami hasn't consumed their soul she can revive them. Naruto nodded. So, does Kami actually exist? Then again who might be a judge? Naruto said as Karami snorted in amusement. The Sobu is a master of water manipulation that makes your nidame Hokage look like a novice and is also able to generate and manipulate coral. Son Goku can manipulate cyan fire and earth, which gives them the ability to create lava. Kakuo can generate steam by mixing fire and water together. Seiken can generate and produce acid and poison, as well as form bubbles out of her slime. The Mei could generate scale powder, fly, and can summon and control insects to attack with. Jayuki is the only Bijuu able to manipulate lightning, he's also the most physically strong and an expert in swordplay, and he can also produce ink. Karami said before taking a quick breath. It gets things dirty quickly. And what about you Karami-chan? Kahana asked curiously. As Naruto has already stated before, I have the ability to sense negative emotions, as well as utilize high-speed regeneration. That's not all I can do though. I am able to manipulate both fire and wind allowing me to use Scorch Release. I'm also proficient at utilizing Senjutsu and producing some pretty powerful Jinjutsu, but the one thing that I pride myself on more than anything else is my Kai release. Karami spoke with pride in her voice as he puffed out her chest. Kai release. Both Naruto and Kahana said it at the same time. Yes, it's something that only I know how to do at the moment. Would you like to learn how to do Kahana-chan? Karami asked cutely. I guess I would like to learn, but what about Naruto-kun? Kahana asked no one to leave him out of the loop. I'll teach him, but he has to earn it. Luckily for him, I don't think that that's going to be much of a problem. Besides, he doesn't seem to be the type who likes to have things handed to him. Am I right Naruto Kun Karami was a little seductive when she said Naruto's name. Kahana simply giggled while Naruto blushed. Karami then looked at Kahana and asked her a question. Kahana-chan I'm curious what kind of abilities you have. Kahana seemed quiet for a second before she spoke. Well I can fly, I can manipulate all five changes in chakra nature, I can cause natural disasters, I can use senjutsu, and I can create as many truth seeker balls as I want, and I can use the Rin Sharingan. Kahana listed off her abilities one by one. Oops, I think Gigi's done with his speech, I gotta go Naruto hastily said before disappearing. Naruto snapped back into reality as Hiruzen finished his speech, Naruto didn't even get a chance to hear the rest of the conversation between Kahana and Karami. Before we begin the test, there is something I must tell you. Hiruzen looked at the genin standing below him. Before Hiruzen could speak, a sickly man made himself known. Cough actually Hokage-sama, as the proctor, please allow me to explain the match. Said the sickly jounin who appeared crouching before the sandame. Very well then please proceed. Hiruzen said with a nod, taking a step back. The man turned around and Naruto could not believe that this man was still on duty, the man looked like he was about to fall over at any moment. He was dressed in the uniform of the standard Jounin with his forehead protector on his head. He also had a sword strapped to his back. Naruto began to wonder why the members of the hospital hadn't tried to apprehend this man. It was obvious he was in no condition to proctor the Chunin exams. Cough hello everyone, I'm Jeku Haid. Cough cough before we can begin the third test, I need to inform you that there will be a preliminary round. Why do we have a preliminary? Said the confused pink-haired banshee. Why can't all the people who made it this far continue? Naruto's hand twitched, he had to resist the urge to hit her upside the head. Just how stupid is she? Naruto thought to himself. Yufufufu. I must agree with you Naruto, your counterpart was stupid enough to like her, also stupid enough to overlook her own stupidity. Garami spoke in a humorous tone. Naruto's eyes twitched. Oh, I'm so glad you have so much faith in me Karami-chan. Naruto replied in a sarcastic tone, while Kahana giggled. Hey, he coughed into his hand as he looked over at Sakura for a moment before explaining himself. Hum cough because the first two exams may have been too easy this year, we just have too many people. According to the rules of the Chunin exam, we must hold a preliminary to reduce the number of people participating for the third test. As Hokage-sama stated, there will be many prominent guests attending, and if the fights take too long we may run out of time. Anyways, for those of you who are not feeling well or those who like quitting, please step forward now, since we will be starting the preliminaries immediately. Debuto stepped forward as he raised his hand. Proctor-san, I quit. Hey, nodded. Very well then, you may go. 
Naruto and Hiruzen already knew that Kabuto was Orochimaru's little spy, Hiruzen gestured for a few Anbu to follow him after the preliminaries ended. With Kabuto gone, Hei turned to the rest of the genin to see if any others wanted to quit. When it was clear that they were not, he began to explain the rules of the preliminary to them. Basically, the matches would be one on one. The fight would continue until someone was unconscious, gave up, or was killed. The names of who would be fighting were decided randomly and shown by an electronic screen on the wall above and behind the Hokage. Once the rules were explained, the screen shuffled through names before landing on two names. Chapter 4 The board began cycling through names before finally coming to a stop. Will Ichiha Sasuke vs. Akato Yorue please step forward, the rest of you please go up to the balconies. Hei commanded. As instructed, everyone left the arena except Sasuke and Yorue who were staring at each other. This fight went the same as it did in canon. Winner, Ichiha Sasuke. Medic. Hei said as Sasuke currently laid on the ground panting heavily, it took the remainder of his chakra to suppress the curse seal. Kakashi quickly used Shunshin over Sasuke's barely conscious self before scooping him up and taking into the hospital. The board once again began to change names before stopping its Aku and Shino. Will Abumi's Aku and Aburam Shino please come down to the battle arena? Hei called out as Aku and Shino both made their way down to the arena. This fight went the same as it did in canon. The winner by knockout is Aburam Shino. Medic. Called out as Hei as Shino calmly made his way up the stairs back up to the balcony where his team was. The board once again ran through names before stopping again at the next combatants. Will Tsurugi Misumi and Sabaku no Kankuro please come down to the battle arena? Hei called out as Misumi and Kankuro both made their way down to the arena. This fight went the same as it did in canon. The winner by knockout is Sabaku no Kankuro. Medic. Called out by Hei as Kankuro gave an arrogant smirk as he made his way up the stairwell and back to his team on the balcony. Next to stand in the center of the arena, surrounded by eyes of and genin alike, were the two Kanoichi of Team 7 and 10. Will Haruno Sakura and Yamanaka Ino please come down to the battle arena? Hei called out as Sakura and Ino both made their way down to the arena. This fight went the same as it did in canon. There is no way this round is a double knockout. No winner, Medic. Hei spoke in a disappointed tone at the pathetic display of skills that the two Kanoichi fangirls displayed. He wasn't the only one disappointed, so was the entire stadium. Man Kakashi, did you teach her anything? It was absolutely pathetic, even Ino attempted to learn from me. Asuma muttered to himself, which was loud enough for Kakashi to hear, who only responded by putting his head down in shame. Next up, Tenten and Tamari. Will Higurashi Tenten vs. Abaku no Tamari, please come down to the battle arena. Hei called out as Tenten and Tamari both made their way down to the arena. This fight went the same as it did in canon. The winner by knockout is Abaku no Tamari. Medic. Called out as Hei as Tamari simply smirked before making their way back to her team who were waiting for her on the balcony. Even though Tenten was completely destroyed in battle, it still washed a bad taste out of everyone's mouth caused by the previous battle. Will Nara Shikamaru and Tsuchi Kin please come down to the battle arena? Hei called out as Shikamaru and Kin both made their way down to the arena. This fight went the same as it did in canon. The winner by knockout is Nara Shikamaru. Medic. Called out as Hei as Shikamaru sighed before muttering troublesome as he made his way back to his team at a lazy pace. Next was the battle who everyone expected to be a landslide victory. Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Niji please come down to the battle arena. Hei called out. Naruto's eyes widened slightly, he was expecting to fight against Kiba not Niji. Well this was unexpected, but I guess I can knock some sense into them now. Because I probably would kill him if he hurt her again. Naruto thought to himself as he made his way down to the battle arena. Naruto and Niji began with a stare down, neither one of them dared to move. Niji drew an arrogant smirk across his face. Why don't you just give up, a failure like you cannot fight against fate? Because fate has already decided that I will be the winner of this match. Niji announced to the world before his eyes began to twitch in annoyance. Naruto wasn't paying attention to him, Naruto then blinked at Niji with a bored expression. HN. Did you say something? Naruto asked in a clueless tone. Up in the balcony, Gurunai eyebrow twitched in annoyance as she looked back at Kakashi before looking towards Asuma and Guy. We must save him. Kakashi has already begun to corrupt him. Gurunai yelled out in fear. Kakashi sweat dropped. I have done no such thing, I don't even know where he got that from. Kakashi spoke in an innocent tone. Kurunai's eye twitched furiously. We won't let you corrupt anyone, the last thing we need is another Kakashi running around, being three hours late to everywhere he goes, and reading those pornographic novels you read in public. Gurunai yelled once more as she attempted to jump at Kakashi, but was held in place by Asuma. Damn it. Asuma release me. The red-eyed Jinjutsu mistress yelled out. Not until you come down. Asuma tried to calm down his love interest, all the while Might Guy was more focused on the match. Hmm. 
Naruto-kun seems different, let's see how he fares against Niji. Guy thought to himself, completely ignoring everything other than the fight. At least Kakashi's oldest rival wasn't making fun of him. Down in the battle arena, you know, you talk a lot about destiny and fate, and all I hear is you asking to be shut up by someone. Try removing the kunai from your behind and lighten up. Naruto announced as some of the shinobi up on the balcony started to laugh. Niji gritted his teeth in anger. Say what you want, but you're still a failure, and fate has decided me as the winner of this match. Niji roared in anger before charging at Naruto, with his Byakugan blazing to life. Naruto sighed as he sidestepped Niji's first strike before tripping him. Niji hit the ground face first and growled as he pushed himself back up. Niji you're speaking about fate as if it's something that actually exists. Naruto said in a calm tone. Of course, it exists, it's what binds us and forces us to follow the path it has set up before us. Niji growled before getting back up into another battle stance. Naruto shook his head. You are a complete idiot, why is everyone who is born into a clan full of dejutsu users always turns out to be such maniacs obsessed with random things like fate? If things don't turn out better, you could end up just like the Achea. Naruto declared as everyone's including Niji's eyes widened at Naruto's choice of words. Hinata on the other hand up in the balcony gained a sad look in her eyes. What did you just say? Niji growled. Naruto gave a smirk. The Hayuga and Ichiha are much closer than you would think, dangerously close if you catch my drift. Naruto spoke in a cryptic tone. Niji narrowed his eyes at the blonde-haired young man standing before him. What are you talking about? You're making no sense. How could a loser and failure like you know something like this? Niji yelled in anger and confusion. Naruto shook his head as he gave a hollow chuckle. You see both the Hayuga and Ichiha are like brother and sister. They both came from the same clan, the Atsutsuki clan is responsible for both clans coming into existence. Naruto said before dropping into a battle stance himself. Enough talking about Niji. Allow me to show you that fate is something that people like you come up with when you're either too weak-willed or too stupid to overcome the hardships that life dealt you. Naruto spoke, but that both Kanoha shinobi charged at each other, kneading in the middle and immediately Naruto began throwing punches and kicks, while Niji began countering with his palm strikes. Naruto effortlessly blocked and dodged all Niji's attempts at attacks, while Niji got hit by nearly half of all the hands Naruto sent out. Niji delivered a powerful palm straight to the side of Naruto's face, which Naruto countered by ramming his fist into Niji's stomach. Niji grunted as he hunched over holding his aching stomach, Naruto then delivered a kick to the side of Niji's face. The strikes resulted in the dark brown-haired boy to roll across the ground. Niji eventually came to a stop. As he laid on his back a shadow loomed over his face as his eyes widened when he saw Naruto coming down with a stomp aimed directly at his head. This stomp shattered the ground fortunately for the Hayuga prodigy, able to dodge in time and flip onto his feet. Niji jumped backwards creating some distance between him and Naruto. This makes absolutely no sense. How can a failure like him overwhelm me into jutsu, something not even Lee could do? Niji thought to himself with his eyes widened. Up in the balcony, my guy had a look of amazement on his face. Kakashi, my eternal rival, I had no idea you had such a star pupil. The flames of youth burned strongly in him. Guy spoke with his voice filled with approval. Kakashi on the other hand couldn't tear his eyes away from Naruto. This is all wrong, I know something happened to them in the forest of death, but this was absolutely ridiculous. His level of tojutsu is far above my own, even though I couldn't take on a Hayuga single-handedly. Kakashi thought to himself. I, I never taught him anything like this, what you're seeing is something I've never seen before. Kakashi said in a grim tone. Asuma raised an eyebrow in confusion. So, what you're telling us is you never trained him. Asuma said with a look of disapproval on his face. Kakashi shook his head. I never said that what I'm saying is I never taught him this level of tojutsu. Matter of fact I didn't start teaching him tojutsu until a couple weeks ago. The only person who could have taught him this level of tojutsu would be Guy. Kakashi explained while all of the Jounin and Jenin looked towards Guy. I never taught him anything, but if he would have come to me I would have gladly helped him refine his tojutsu. Guy admitted. Then how did the Do get so good in tojutsu then? Kiba asked in a confused tone as he watched Naruto literally dominating over Niji. I think I have an idea. Shikamaru spoke aloud. What do you mean by Shikamaru? Asuma asked. Sometime before we dealt with the Odo Shinobi in the Forest of Death, something must have happened in Naruto. Because when he woke up he annihilated the Odo Shinobi we fought against. He had two different tojutsu, and Sasuke claimed that he had the Sharingan. Shikamaru revealed. Asuma, Gai, Kakashi, and Kurinai's eyes widened at this. Yeah it looked creepy and awesome, it made him look stronger. Choji exclaimed in an excited tone, as Asuma couldn't help but chuckle. Lee looked down at Naruto back to Niji. I look forward to fighting you in the finals, Naruto. Lee thought to himself as a smile appeared on his lips. Down on the battle arena, Niji thrusted his palm forward. 
Haki KKSHMA Trigram's vacuum palm. Sending out a blast of air aimed for Naruto's head, who simply tilted his head to the side dodging it completely. Naruto then turned his attention back to Niji. Are you done yet? Because this battle is starting to get very boring, I have more of a challenge cleaning my apartment than fighting with you. Naruto admitted trying to get under the Hyuga prodigy skin which worked surprisingly well. Niji snarled before being down in a specific fighting stance, which caused all the Jounin, Hiruzen, Lee and Hinata's eyes to widen. Haki Rockage K Yan SHM 8 Trigram 64 Palms. They all thought in unison. Niji smirked. I hope you're ready, as I'm about to put you back in the bottom where you belong. Niji yelled as he charged forward. Two palms. Naruto effortlessly began dodging Niji's strikes, and it looked more like Naruto was dancing around him than anything else. Four palms, eight palms, sixteen palms, thirty-two palms. Niji was getting more and more frustrated, as none of his attacks from landing. Haki Rockage Kyan SHM 8 Trigram 64 palms. Everyone up in the balcony was in absolute awe, as Naruto avoided every single strike. Now what was that you were saying about me being a failure? Naruto spoke in a joking manner. Niji growled as he reached into his ninja pouch pulling out a kunai, twirling around his fingers before Naruto pulled out his own kunai blocking it. Naruto then knocked the kunai into the air with his own kunai, before advancing towards the Niji. Niji jumped into the air flipping as the heel of his foot hit the kunai which then struck Naruto's face. Naruto retaliated by punching Niji in the face, causing the boy to stagger backwards. The gash on Naruto's face closed almost instantly, Naruto began waving hand seals. Inhaling a large amount of air, Naruto spat out a large blue fireball. Kaden. GM Kakak no Jutsu fire release. Great fireball technique. Once again Naruto caught everyone by surprise, as they thought the only ninjutsu he possessed was Cage Bunshin. Niji's eyes widened as he dodged a fireball which exploded sending debris and dust flying everywhere. Niji recovered just in time to see Naruto running towards him, Naruto jumped into the air, quickly placing his hands on Niji's shoulders, before driving him directly into the ground. Niji quickly jumped up only to get kicked in the face by Naruto. Niji jumped back up onto his feet, fueled by anger and rage. He wanted nothing more than to end Naruto. However, that wish would not come to fruition. In a quick motion, Naruto jumped up wrapping his leg around Niji's body and slamming into the ground once more. I think you're overdoing it Naruto-kun. Kahana spoke to her host love interest. I didn't think Sasuke's influence would affect me this much, but Niji needed to get knocked off the hill and put himself up. Naruto replied. Harami snorted. Knocking him off a hill. It's more like you blew up the hill and let him fall. Karami giggled in amusement, she was enjoying this Naruto much more than the previous one. Naruto rolled his eyes as he delivered a powerful kick that could crack full-grown trees in half to Niji's stomach, which sent the Hyuga prodigy flying into the wall. Naruto winced as he saw Niji fall to the ground knocked out cold, Hate stood there with a look of pure shock. Um. Proctor said I believe he's knocked out, and I think I won. Naruto spoke in a sheepish tone as he scratched his cheek nervously. Hayat snapped out of his little spell before nodding and walking over to Niji. Winner by knockout, Yuzumaki Naruto. Medic. Hayat announced as the medic nin quickly carried Niji off to the hospital. Damari and Kankuro both were sporting looks of pure shock and disbelief, while Gara remained silent. So that is the power that one gains from protecting something that's precious to them. If that is the case, I have a long way to go. Gara thought to himself as Shukaku nodded in agreement. That you do Gaki that you do. Shukaku replied in agreement. Damari's whole body shivered. You have to be kidding me, that seriously the same little twerp that was wearing that obnoxiously bright orange jumpsuit, what the hell happened to him? Tamari all but yelled in surprise. How the hell am I supposed to combat this guy? I just hope I don't have to fight, because that would be one hell of a brutal fight. Kenkuro replied to his sister's comments. Sighing Naruto made his way up the stairs back up to the balcony, to where he was confronted by Kakashi. Naruto. Kakashi spoke in a stern tone with his single eye narrowed. Yes, Kakashi-sensei. Who taught you how to fight like that, and is it true that you have the Sharingan? Kakashi wanted to get to the bottom of this. If you want to know the answer, meet me in Aji sens office after the preliminary rounds. As I'm not at liberty to say, due to this being a SSS rank secret, punishable by death. But I will tell you this is tied to what happened to me in the forest of death, Naruto explained. Kakashi's single eye widened in surprise. SSS rank secret just what the hell happened in the forest of death? Kakashi began to ponder. Oh, and Kakashi-sensei. Naruto said to which snapped Kakashi out of his train of thought before he turned around. Yeah. He replied in a confused tone. Make sure you come alone. Naruto said just as Sakura and Ino returned from the infirmary. The board once again changed to the next battle. Will Hayuga Hinata and Akamichi Choji please please come down to the battle arena? Hayate called out as Hinata and Choji got kind of scared, but nonetheless they both made their way down. 
As soon as Proctor started the match, Hinata activated her by Akigen before getting into a battle stance. Choji began to shiver in fear before entering his Nikidan Sensha human bullet tank in a very sloppy manner. Choji started to spin, moving at a great speed towards Hinata. Hinata carefully watched him approach before dodging to the side and placing her foot directly in front of Choji's path. This very action made Choji rise into the air, causing him to end his technique and allowing Hinata to deliver a few decent Yukon strikes, which left Choji unconscious on the ground. Hey, pretty much already knew Hinata won. Winner by knockout Hayuga Hinata. Medic. Hey, announced. Next up was the Tajutsu Genin against the Genin. Will Inuzuka Kiba and Rock Lee please come down to the battle arena? Hey, called out as Kiba and Lee both made their way down to the arena. Yes, finally is my turn. Kiba Kun, are you ready to show them the power of youth? Lee howled and made everyone winced in pain at how loud his tone truly was. Yes, that a boy Lee show Kiba Kun the power of youth. He will make a fine eternal rival for you. Guy yelled. Kiba was sporting a horrified expression on his face. W what? Was all the dog user could mutter. Yes Guy Sensei I will show him the power of youth. Lee replied. Lee. Guy Sensei. Lee. Guy Sensei. Both student and master moved in and hugged each other, as the background completely morphed into a beach, as the water came rushing between them and crashing into the rocks. Tears could be seen shining as the sun was going down. Many people screamed in terror as they felt their eyes begin to burn. Kurenai was desperately trying to dispel it. Despite her best efforts, it did not work. Why? Why isn't it working? Why can't I dispel it? She thought to herself, she never had a problem dispelling Jinjutsu before. Hell, she was renowned for her powerful Jinjutsu and is considered the strongest Jinjutsu user in the Leaf since Itachi left. Fortunately, before anyone could do anything drastic such as commit seppuku to save themselves from the horror of being exposed to the horrifying sunset Jinjutsu that was created from the two hugging and clones. A bolt of power chaotic blue lightning forced the two to separate. Everyone turned around and saw Naruto with sparks of electricity dancing around his hand, while his index finger was still smoking from the lightning-based attack, glaring at the pair with an extremely annoyed expression. If you two could please not do that while we're in the middle of the preliminary rounds I'd be thankful. Naruto was unaware of Kahana and Karami who were blushing at Naruto for many reasons, power, authority, seriousness etc. To prove how serious he was, his entire hand glued in that blue-tinted electric aura. So please don't hurt anyone else's eyes anymore. Naruto said, receiving two fearful nods from the self-proclaimed green and blue beasts of Konoha. Naruto lowered his hand as he smiled, before noticing everyone was staring at him. Why are you all staring at me like that? Naruto said as everyone quickly looked away from him besides Hiruzen and Kakashi who sent him a thankfully glance. Is this the power he awakened during the second stage of the Chunin exams? Kakashi wondered to himself. It would be best if I didn't tell Sasuke about this, mainly for his safety. Little arrogant bastard believes he is entitled to everything. What happened to you Naruto-kun? You weren't ever like this before. Hinata thought to herself in a frightened manner. Jesus Christ. I'm glad I won't have to fight him. Tamari, Kankuro, Kiba all thought in unison. Hachan was right, Naruto Baka is a monster. Everyone's favorite pink-haired banshee thought to herself. Ha. Hey. Looks like my knee sama is stronger than I thought. Cuckoo. Well Gaki you really got your work cut out for you. I suggest you take his advice and train with him when you get the chance. Shukaku advised him. Yes, I agree. It's what I have to do if I want to protect those who are precious to me, I'm going to need your power in order to do so. Gar replied. Wow Nar, to you've impressed me quite a bit, maybe after these preliminaries are over. I can give you H-E-A-D dot Karami pert in a seductive tone. Naruto mentally choked on his spit. What was that? He replied as his cheeks were dusted red. Kahana on the other hand was blushing as well. Karami-chan please don't joke around like that. Suki spoke believing that her fellow Biju was always joking. Who said anything about me joking around Kahana-chan? Or maybe Naruto would prefer watching some Yuri action instead. Karami giggled out as she saw Kahana's nose begin to bleed. Naruto on the other hand his face now rivaled that of Hinata's. Please, can we discuss this at another time, Naruto said before cutting the connection so he can concentrate on watching. Down on the battle arena, boy, you bushy eyebrowed freak. Get ready for the beating of your life. Kiba howled in a taunting manner while Akamaru gave a small bark. Kiba's taunt did not phase Lee in the slightest as he took a fighting stance. Do not worry Kiba-kun, I will fight with everything I got. So that my flames of youth shall burn brightly. Lee responded with complete confidence. They backed away from the two genin as Lee charged at the Inuzuka and at an incredible speed that left them in shock. Thanks to Kiba's advanced senses and reaction speed, he manages to block the kick with both his arms, although he was forced back a few meters. Kiba grunted in pain as he felt the bones in his arms crack from the force of impact. Ah. Mother. 
What the hell your legs made out of? Kiba yelled as his arms throbbed with pain. Lee was still in the same pose before lowering his leg and retook his fighting stance. Most excellent reflexes Kiba Kun. To answer your second question, I train hard so that I can break the strongest trees and hardest stones I can find within Kanoha's walls. The bowl cut spandex wearing shinobi praised Kiba. Kiba took a step back as the pain in his arms finally subsided. I've seriously underestimated him. Looks like I have no choice. Akamaru. Kiba announced while Akamaru barked in agreement. Reaching into his ninja pouch pulling out two small brown pills. Up in the balcony, hmm. So, he's gone with that already, should it be an interesting match? Naruto thought to himself. You're only saying that because you don't have to fight him. But then again if you did fight them now you would annihilate him. Karami answered in a bored tone. That means Karami, could you be a little bit nicer? Naruto asked. And, why should I? Humans see me and my kind as nothing more than power sources. Well maybe not you but everyone else does, until I'm proven wrong I'm not going to change even for you. Karami harshly replied. HN. So stubborn, I guess I have to beat some sense into you later. Replied to Naruto eye twitching. Kahana simply ignored Naruto and Karami's bickering as she focused on the match. I hope Kibasan wins. She thought of herself as a wolf and she wanted Inuzuka to win. Those are soldier pills. What could he possibly be planning? Kakashi thought aloud. Sakura turned towards her sensei and raised an eyebrow. Soldier pills. The pink-haired banshee questioned curiously. Soldier pills are a special medicine that can restore and amplify a shinobi's chakra and stamina. Quite a few shinobi have them in case they're running low on chakra. Asuma answered. Wait, isn't that cheating? Sakura asked in a confused tone as she saw Kiba giving one of the pills to Akamaru. Naruto, Kahana, and Karami along with all of the Jounin and Hiruzen mentally smacked themselves. Wow, she really is that stupid. They all thought in unison. Bakashi shook his head of all negative thoughts before answering. No, because they are categories as a shinobi tool just like kunai and shuriken. Kakashi explained as he saw Kiba eat the other one. But it's best to use them as a last resort because consuming too many can result in negative effects from overusing them. And believe me I've seen what happens. It's not very pleasant. Bakashi said remembering one of his many Anbu missions. Down on the battle arena, Lee smirked before getting back into his battle stance as he looked at his opponent. Hmm. This is getting interesting. He started quietly. Both Kiba and Akamaru began to change slightly after swallowing the pills. Akamaru's hair turned more feral and a brownish red and began growling furiously, while Kiba's teeth were now turning canine-like and his nails became much sharper like claws. Kiba then dropped down on all fours. Let's go Akamaru. He growled in a beastly manner as the small dark red jumped on his back barking in an equally beastly manner. Kiba then formed the tiger hand seal. Beast mimicry. Within an instant, the two were covered in smoke as Lee waited patiently so that he could fight Kiba at his best. As soon as the smoke cleared, Akamaru had transformed into a carbon copy of his partner. J.K. Jin Bunshin Beast Human Clone. Kiba and his Depelginger are declared in unison. Lee smiled and grew even wider as he saw this. Impressive. Now let us fight more. He declared with excitement. That is a boy Lee. Show your opponent the power of youth. Guy howled from up on the balcony, smiling and giving a thumb up. Yes sir. Lee instantly responded with a salute. The Depelginger duo growled in response. We'll end this now. Kiba declared while Akamaru growled and jumped off his partner. Very well then here I go. Lee responded as he charged at the duo. The two Kibas began to spin in place before charging at Lee. Gats ga fang passing fang. Kiba declared. Lee came to a full stop as he saw the two deadly twisters heading at him at an alarming speed. Thanks to some quick footwork he dodged the two twisters with minimal effort. The Depelginger duo didn't let up as they quickly stopped before beginning another assault. They combined their two twisters into one large one trying their best to minimize the space the bowl cut spandex wearing Jenin could use to dodge. You're done for now you bushy eyebrowed freak. Kiba declared loudly. Unfortunately for the Depelginger duo, they were proven wrong as Lee jumped into the air before they could even contact him. Once in the air, Lee came down with a devastating dive kick towards Kiba's back. This caused the young Inuzuka to hack up blood as he impacted the ground from the tremendous force. This surprise attack left Kiba in an unconscious state as Akamaru reverted back to his normal form before running towards his unconscious partner with concern. Do not worry Akamaru-san, I only struck him to knock him out, Lee spoke in a calm manner while taking a few deep breaths. A8 walked towards the Inuzuka and saw that he was indeed unconscious. The winner by knockout Rock Lee. Medic. He declared while pointing at said boy. Next was Gara's first battle in that section of the exams. Will Kanuta Dosu and Sabaku no Gara please come down to the battle arena? Hei called out as Dosu and Gara both made their way down to the arena. Gara didn't hesitate as he sent out ten shuriken he made with his sand towards the enemy. 
Dosu didn't expect such a sudden attack, and then quickly. Dosu was quickly rising when he noticed his feet were caught by something. Looking down really quickly he saw sand wrapping around his feet. Like a long tentacle, the sand swung Dosu from left to right before throwing him into the wall. The sand soon returned, leaving an unconscious Dosu stuck in the wall. Winner by knockout, Sabaku no Gara. Hey 8 spoke plainly after seeing such a quick battle during the final match of the preliminaries. The finals for this year's Chunin exam will be held in the main arena in one month's time. Here is the opponent list. Take a good look. Hey 8 spoke as he showed everyone a piece of paper in his hand. Iwuga Hinata vs. Sabaku no Kankuro, Sabaku no Tamari vs. Nara Shikamaru, Lee Rock vs. Ichi Sasuke, Sabaku no Gara vs. Uzumaki Naruto, Chapter 5, Naruto had been laying on a large comfortable bed inside the master bedroom of his parents' home. In the seclusion on his new home, Naruto had changed his usual attire to a pair of shorts, as he had recently got out of the shower. Naruto was pleasantly surprised that Hiruzen was so willing to give him his parents' house, but then again, he wasn't complaining. Naruto was simply thinking about everything that had gone on earlier in between him Kahana, Kurami, Hiruzen, Jiraiya, and Kakashi. Jiraiya and Kakashi's reactions weren't that surprising. Knowing that now his senseis were alive once again brought a smile to Naruto's face. Flashback, Naruto, followed by Kakashi, made their way to Hiruzen's office. Upon arriving at the Hokage mansion, the student and teacher duo continued on until they found the door separating them from Hiruzen. Naruto gently knocked on the door despite the protesting of the secretary, which he ignored. You may enter. Hiruzen's boy sounded out from the other side. Upon opening the door Naruto froze in his tracks. Standing on the other side of the room leaning up against the wall was a familiar tall man with waist-length spiky white hair tied in a ponytail and two shoulder-length bangs framing his face. There was a single red line under each of his eyes which ran vertically down to his cheeks. His usual attire is a green short shirt kimono and matching pants, under which he wore mesh armor that was visible at his wrists and ankles. He also wears hand guards, a black belt, traditional Japanese wooden sandals, and a red heiori with two yellow circles on each side. Naruto's eyes welled up with tears before he yelled out something much to the dismay of white-haired man. Hiro Senen. Naruto cried out as he flew across the room and hugged Jiraiya to the ground. Hiruzen simply blinked a few times before bursting into a fit of uncontrollable laughter. That nickname suits him perfectly. Hiruzen thought to himself as he clenched his sides in pain from the laughter. Kakashi on the other hand, simply stood there not knowing what to think, as he was unsure of how Naruto knew Jiraiya. How does he know Jiraiya-sama? More importantly why does Jiraiya-sama allow him to call him such a name, even if it suits them perfectly? Kakashi thought as he sweat dropped. Naruto's tears began to fall out onto his godfather Green Kimono, who was obviously uncomfortable by the entire interaction. Jiraiya looked at Hiruzen who finally stopped laughing and watched the scene with a warm smile on his face. Naruto, I believe that's enough for right now. You can hug Jiraiya-kun later, he isn't going anywhere for this month. Hiruzen said as Naruto hesitantly released Jiraiya from his death grip. What was all that about Gaki? Jiraiya asked in a confused tone. Naruto sighed as it was going to be a very long explanation, but it was only fair that both Hiro-senen and Kakashi-sensei knew the truth. Okay what I'm about to tell you may be difficult for both of you to believe, but it's true. Ahem, Kuchiya snow Naruto howled at the end before slamming his hand down to the ground. Within seconds two clouds of smoke appeared in the room before dissipating, revealing two beautiful women with animal-like features. The first woman had red hair and nine tails, the second woman had black hair and ten tails. Jiraiya and Kakashi eyes widened in pure fear and surprise. Reacting quickly, Jiraiya immediately pulled out a suppression seal and prepared to strike. Jiraiya-kun has no need for that, both are trustworthy. You'll be interested to find out why Karami-san attacked the village. Hiruzen stopped his student from possibly getting himself killed. Jiraiya hesitantly stared at his sensei and only nodded before pocketing the seal. Naruto sighed before introducing the two women standing on either side of him. This is Atsutsuki Karami, and the black-haired beauty to my left is Atsutsuki Kahana. We have a lot to discuss, and what I must tell you is nothing but the truth. So please hold your questions until I'm done explaining. Naruto warned before he went to the lengthy explanation about the Akatsuki, Fourth Great Ninja War, the Juubi, Abido and Madara, his and Sasuke's battle against Kagaya, and his resurgence into this world. After Naruto finished his tale of sorts, he looked at the facial expressions of Jiraiya and Kakashi. Jiraiya looked up at your shock, anger, disappointment, and regret. Well Kakashi sported a look of regret, sadness, betrayal, and disappointment. Hiruzen decided to speak up. I believe we should prepare for this invasion. It would be better to be safe than sorry. The old Hokage spoke in a very serious tone, which brought Jiraiya and Kakashi both out of their funk. Sighing heavily, Jiraiya nodded in agreement. I guess you're right, sensei. So Nagato was still alive, why would he turn out like this? Naruto answered immediately. 
In my original timeline, it was Kagaya who is to blame for everything, but in this world, I'm not completely sure. Because from what Kurami-chan told me she wasn't that strong, so something else is at work here. Naruto said in a serious tone. But I can only assume that the masked man could still be Abito, but he could be a different man for all we know. Bakashi simply put his head down in shame. This is all my fault. I couldn't protect Rin, and now all my failure is coming back to bite me on the ass. Kakashi thought to himself in a depressed manner. Hirami, Kahana, and Naruto all sensed Kakashi's depression. Pervy Cyclops, you are not the one to blame for what happened. So, stop beating yourself up and start focusing on the here and now. Karami spoke in an uncaring blunt tone. Kakashi, on the other hand, looked at the Kaiubi woman before him before nodding slightly. So, I died in your timeline huh, well I don't know whether I should feel prideful or disappointed that it took my student Nagato, the Rinnegan wielder, to kill me. Jiraiya said with a serious expression on his face. Kakashi then asked Naruto something that had been bugging him since Naruto's match against Niji. Naruto, you said you gained not only Abito Sharingan, but also Sasuke's Rikudo Chakra plus one of Kagaya's Byakugan. Kakashi asked curiously. Instead of answering Naruto simply closed his eyes before opening them again, his left eye was a three Tomo Sharingan, while his right eye was the Byakugan. Hearing about Naruto having a Dejutsu is one thing, but seeing is another. Hiruzen had already seen Naruto Sharingan, but he hadn't seen Naruto's Byakugan yet. Naruto's left eye unconsciously changed the three Tomo changes into three stretch triangles, evenly spaced around the pupil, that each curve at the top around the eye to form a circle, making it like a pinwheel. It only lasted an instant, but Hiruzen and Jiraiya both caught, but Naruto and Kakashi seemed to be unaware of the change. Abido's Manjekyo Sharingan combined with Sasuke's Tomo Rinnegan, and that's my left eye. But because I'm in my younger body, a lot of my abilities, like my Manjekyo Tomo Rinnegan, Tensigen, and Rakuto Chakra, have been sealed up in my body. Kahana-chan said I have to do a ton of physical training before I can use them again. Narrowing his eyes, Jiraiya looked towards his future and past students. The Manjekyo Sharingan from what I understand is achieved through unbelievable emotional trauma, such as the loss of a loved one or close friend. But then again Abito gave him his eyes, and something probably horrific awakened it prior to giving it to Naruto. Hiruzen thought to himself. The Gaki is that powerful and the stuff he told us is true. Once he reawakens the Rinnegan he'll be an absolute monster with the aid of the Juubi and Kaiubi. The question is how should I go about his training? I was planning on having them sign the Toad contract. But with Manjekyo most likely reawakening soon, I'm going to have to focus on that and push back the summoning to later. Hiraya thought to himself. Hiruzen cleared his throat and gained everyone's attention. Naruto-kun I believe your Manjekyo Sharingan is already reawakening, and I'm going to have Jiraiya-kun help you master it by the finals. As for your Byakugan, I'll wait until the Chunin exams are over before I speak to Hiashi about this. I don't think you're too much of a problem, but the elders of the Hyuga may have a problem. Hiruzen said with a frown. I guess I could always tell them that I'm a descendant of the Atsutsuki clan, since I'm the reincarnation of Rakuto Senen's second son Atsutsuki Ashura. Naruto said as Hiruzen nodded. That should work with Naruto-kun, but until I speak with Hiashi try not to use Byakugan too much. Hiruzen advised as Naruto nodded. Bakashi now sporting a disappointed look as the council was forcing him to train Sasuke. Damn the civilian council, they're completely fine with me training the Achiha kid, but if they knew how powerful Naruto was they'd try to have them executed. Like hell am I going to let them do that? Kakashi mentally growled at himself. Ahana smiled warmly as she saw Naruto and Jiraiya talking to each other. You gonna accomplish great things Naruto-kun. I just know you will. Kahana thought to herself. Hiruzen smiled before he got up from his desk and walked over to Minato's picture, performing, on one hand, Tiger Seal 3 scrolls popped out. Naruto-kun are your inheritance, the red one is from Kishina, the yellow one is from Minato. And the blue one holds your inheritance as well as the key to your parents' house. Hiruzen handed the three scrolls to Naruto who was sporting a look of pure disbelief. Wait, you're just giving them to me right now. Hiruzen nodded as Naruto could feel more emotions coming to the surface before he tackled and hugged the old Hokage to the ground despite his protesting. Flashback end, Naruto smiled at his most recent memories, having his perverted godfather back brought a warm smile to his face. Now that he had them back Naruto wouldn't let Jiraiya die this time. He would protect everyone. Unfortunately, Naruto was brought out of his train of thought when a cloud of smoke appeared in his room. Naruto quickly glanced at it as he saw a familiar Ritid standing there staring at him. Karami-chan. What are you doing here, not that I'm complaining? Naruto asked in a curious tone. Said Vixen slowly advanced towards Naruto. My my, Naruto-kun, you're growing quite quickly. You didn't even have to do much for your man Jackyo Sharingan to come back. Of course, you'll have to wait a little longer, but once it's back you have the powers of Amaterasu, Kamui short and long, and Amenitejikara. Not even to mention your Rikidu Chakra and Tensigen. 
yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe I shouldn't ever use those, at least for a long time. And why would that be? Because otherwise there'd be no challenge. Even Madara wouldn't be able to do much if I went 100%. Every battle would be over from the get-go. Indeed, you did take out the godly Kagaya of your world, but with that much power, you could guarantee safety to all the people you love. I guess you're right, but I think I might limit myself to what I use against you. Sounds like a plan. But you'll have to use a ton of your power to defeat me of course. I won't be holding back at that time. Karami spoke with a creepy smile across her face. Don't worry Karami-chan. I will make sure to give you hell in battle. The 13-year-old boy promised the centuries-old demon fox. Time skip training field. Naruto made his way towards training field 22, where he and Jiraiya decided they would begin his training. Jiraiya, still the same man as his other world counterpart, was behind a bush peeking at a bunch of young women who were playing in a lake. Hoiiro sen and I'm here. Naruto yelled out. Jiraiya's eyes twitched. Damn it Gaki. Don't call me that. Jiraiya yelled out comically which Naruto retorted in an equally comical manner. I'll start calling you that when you stop peeking at women. Naruto yelled out as all the women on the other side of the bush screamed out in terror before running. Jiraiya began to cry comically. I I I I I. No, you ruined my precious peeking, no I mean research. Jiraiya cried as Naruto shook his head and laughed. H here, Hiro Senen, I have a little present for you. Naruto said hoping to cheer up his Hiro Senen. Jiraiya was slightly interested as Naruto put his hands together forming the ram symbol. Transform. Naruto's body was covered in a thick white cloud of smoke. When it dissipated, Naruto was revealed to no longer be there. In the place of the young teen boy was a beautiful woman with long blonde hair and twin tails. She wore nothing to cover herself, relying on two thin lines of smoke to cover her private parts. View of this beautiful woman nearly rendered Jiraiya unconscious as he fell to the floor. Naruto transformed back and laughed at his teacher, who was struggling to not die from the blood streaming out of his nose. Truly, this kid is the child of prophecy. This'll be so helpful for my research. He thought before standing up. After Jiraiya calmed down he stood in front of Naruto once more. All right Gaki, show me what you can do. Naruto nodded before extending his right hand out. Strong chakra began spiraling in a circular fashion before forming a perfect sphere of chaotic spiraling chakra. In Naruto's other hand lightning began sparking to life before it formed the Jidori. Jiraiya's eyes widened at this. Damn that's impressive. I never thought he could use Jidori and Rasengan, let alone at the same time. The Gama Sanin thought to himself. Gaki where did you learn the Jidori from? Jiraiya asked curiously. Naruto cancelled both of his jutsu before answering his perverted sensei. I used Rakuto Senen mode, so I have a complete understanding of all five natural forms, including yin, yang, and yin yang release, and I can also perform most ninjutsu with just one hand. Any I haven't seen or used I can learn with my Sharingan Naruto explained which surprised Jiraiya. He can use any ninjutsu with just one hand, and he performed Chidori purely from memory. He's truly a genius, probably even more so than Minato. Jiraiya thought to himself in bewilderment. Jiraiya then decided to ask another question. How well can you use your Bijuu's chakra right now? Jiraiya asked when you know what his relationship was with Karami and Kahana. Naruto then answered. With Kahana I can use her power whenever I want, although due to my weaker body and not having the Rinnegan awakened, I can't really use more than 5% of her chakra. If I use it anymore it will overload my body and could injure me. I'd probably be in the hospital after 10%. As for Karami-chan, I must earn her respect first, and until that point I will not ask her for chakra. Naruto answered. Jiraiya frowned at this. So, he needs to strengthen his body and reawaken the Rinnegan before he can use Kahana's chakra. And Karami won't let him use her chakra until he gets her respect. Jiraiya thought. Do you think with 5% of Kahana's chakra would you be able to defeat Orochimaru when he attacks Konoha? Jiraiya asked not realizing how powerful Kahana truly was. Naruto stared at Jiraiya with a deadpan expression. Did you ask me to fight Orochimaru using Kahana's power? Naruto asked in a confused tone. Jiraiya was quick to respond. Well you did say you can utilize some of your power with no negative side effects and she's willing to lend you power whenever you want. So, I honestly don't see anything wrong with that. Jiraiya replied. Naruto sighed but couldn't help but smile. First, Kahana is a couple hundred if not thousand times stronger than a cage level shinobi. Second, there won't be a fight if I use Kahana's power against him, it would be like firing a Bijuadama tailed beast ball to get rid of an anthill. I can literally destroy the five great nations with her power alone, not that I ever would. But to answer your question, yes using 5% would completely crush Orochimaru if things get really hairy. Naruto explained to his perverted sensei, whose eyes widened. You're serious, you can literally destroy the five great nations on your own with her power Jiraiya sounded scared. Naruto nodded. 
yes, I could use the power one gained from becoming the Kahanas is 20 times greater if not more than the power you gain from the Rinnegan. But here's the kicker, you need the Rinnegan to become the Kahana or the Jito Mezo. Naruto explained. Iraya was as white as a ghost, he knew some things about the Rakuto Senen and the Rinnegan. What exactly is the Rinnegan truly capable of? Jiraiya asked, slightly afraid of the answer she might get. Naruto sat down before rubbing his chin. It's kinda hard to say but basically the basic abilities you get are. The ability to see chakra in its initial state, you can see barriers, you can see invisible targets. You gain all five basic changes in chakra nature, as well as the ability to master any non-kekai genkai ninjutsu. Now the Rikidu no Jutsu Six Paths technique are separated into six different categories. The first being Tendo D the Path, which allows the user to manipulate gravitational attraction and repel forces. Next is Shirado Asura Path, which allows the user to create mechanized limbs, weaponry and armor. After that is Ninjendo Human Path, which allows the user to read anyone's mind, as well as the ability to rip their soul out. Next is the Chikishodo Animal Path, which allows the user to summon any type of creature they can imagine. Gakito Prita Path allows the user to absorb an infinite amount of chakra. The Gakudo Naraka Path, which allows the user to summon the King of Hell to either heal or interrogate. Naruto explains as Jiraiya simply sits there growing paler. Naruto smirks at his sensei's expression. That's not all, it is the seventh path, as well as unique abilities each Rinnegan user is able to unlock. The Jito Outer Path is the strongest path, which grants the user the ability to control the realms of life and death. Naruto took a quick breath after explaining all of this to Jiraiya, all the information Kahana just relayed over to him. Jiraiya did not move a muscle, he didn't even speak, he simply stared at Naruto as if he was gathering chakra, as he was now paper white. Hey with those eyes of yours you should be virtually unstoppable even without ten tails in Churiki mode. Jiraiya said as he couldn't believe the power of the Rinnegan. Any user would be nearly unstoppable. Naruto smirked. Do you want to know what kind of powers I gain from Kahana? Naruto said as Jiraiya shook his head. No, I'm good for right now you can tell me later, I'm still trying to wrap my head around what the Rinnegan can do. Jiraiya said before standing up. Now, Naruto, what I'm going to focus on is helping you reawaken and gain control over your Manjekyo Sharingan. As you said, once you master Manjekyo, the Rinnegan will awaken soon after. The sooner that happens the sooner we can deal with the Akatsuki, because to be completely honest, I do not want the fourth great shinobi war to happen. I've already seen the aftermath of one of them, and I can't bear to see more. Jiraiya explained with his arms crossed underneath his chest. Naruto stood up with determination in his eyes. Of course, now, let's get started on Jiraiya sensei. Naruto declared as Jiraiya grinned as both student and master got into fighting stances. Your first task is activating it. Then using it to track my attacks. I'll be using Senen mode as well. Yes. Chapter 6, Kanoha Stadium, everyone had arrived just outside of the Kanoha Stadium and quickly made their way inside. The, the stadium itself was packed full of daimyo, important businessmen and shinobi from other villages who came to watch the momentous occasion, after all, the Chunin exams were where one could find the best throughout the elemental nations. The cage box was located above the audience, giving those with an vantage point to watch the matches. They were the judges, so they needed to evaluate the contestants properly. At that moment, there was only one cage sitting within the cage box. The Hokage was the first and had two bodyguards, waiting for the next cage to join them. The first bodyguard was Nami Ashi Raido. His most distinct feature was probably the web-like scar on his face, running across the bridge of his nose and down across the left side of his face. While the second bodyguard was the legendary Gama Sanin and self-proclaimed super pervert, the gallant Jiraiya. It seems like a Chihasasuke is missing. Jiraiya commented which Hiruzen nodded. That's what we get for letting Kakashi be a sensei, let's hope Sasuke doesn't pick up Kakashi's bad habit of being late. Hiruzen grumbled while rubbing the bridge of his nose. It was then that Hiruzen and Jiraiya noticed that Rasa, the Kazakiage, had finally arrived. The Kazakiage was known for manipulating gold dust in a similar fashion to how Gara manipulated sand. Hiruzen put on a fake smile. Greetings, Kazakiage sama I'm glad you made it, I trusted your trip wasn't too troublesome. Arachimaru, in disguise, replied without missing a beat. It was quite pleasant Hokage-sama. It was quite enjoyable to be able to leave Sunagakur and come and visit Kanoha. Plus, you aren't a young man anymore, and it would be best not to make you travel long distances. Jiraiya snorted in amusement as Hiruzen's eye twitched. Don't treat me like some frail old man. I still have some mileage left in this body, and I intend to remain Hokage for a few more years anyways. Hiruzen spoke with pride in his voice. Oh, who am I kidding? The first person I see who is a worthy candidate for Hokage, I'm giving them the position. Hiruzen complained in thought. The Kazakiage glanced down at the arena before raising an eyebrow. It seems like you're missing an Achea. 
Jiraiya was quick to answer, his sensei is Hata Kakashi, and he's notorious for being late to everything. Jiraiya said with a smirk as the Kazakiage nodded and took his seat. He sat in the second chair. Now, shall we begin? The Hokage asked as the disguised Rachimara nodded. Hiruzen stood up and went to the edge of the balcony, using chakra to amplify his voice. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this year's Chunin exams finals. This year we have many talented genin from Konoha and Suna. Now without further ado, let us begin the matches. Hiruzen concluded as the crowds cheered. With crowd, how could they start the matches without Sasuke-kun? Everyone's favorite pink-haired banshee yelled out. Jill the hell out Sakura. He still has plenty of time before his match starts. Kiba said with an annoyed expression on his face as she glared at him. He did Gara kill the Uchiha. I told him to lay low. Baki thought of looking at Gara, who looked much calmer than normal. Everyone shut up, it's about to begin. Ino said as everyone looked down to the arena and noticed that Hayat was about to speak. In the arena, in the arena, Hayat explained the rules to the participants, which were nearly the same as the preliminaries. Now let us begin. Hayat said but got interrupted by Lee. Are we starting without Sasuke-kun? He asked. He has until his match to show up otherwise he'll be disqualified immediately. Hayat explained while Lee put his head down in regret. Does anyone else have any more questions? No, then let's get started. Hayat said in a somewhat impatient voice, as he'd much rather be spending his day off in bed with his girlfriend Yugao Yuzuki. Sabaku no Kankuro and Hayuga Hinata stay, the rest of you go to the waiting area. Hayat announced, and everyone else left. Proctor, forfeit. Kankuro announced as he received manabus and unpleasant remarks from the audience. Okay. Winner by forfeit Hayuga Hinata. Hayat said with a blank expression. With crowd, the Ashi had a very annoyed expression on his face, while Hanabi was slightly displeased. To Sama, why did that makeup wearing boy forfeit against Nisama? Hanabi asked in a cute tone while her father looked at his second daughter and current heir to the Hayuga clan. That boy was a coward and nothing more than a weakling. To deny your sister the chance to prove to everyone how strong she truly is. Hiashi grumbled in an annoyed tone. Nara Shikamaru and Sabaku no Tamari please make your towards the arena. Hey, called out. This fight went the same as it did in canon. Winner by forfeit, Sabaku no Tamari. Hey, it announced. With crowd, that's good for nothing, lazy ass bum. Ino groaned as she faced palms. To sit around and do nothing in the shade for almost the entire match, before forfeiting. Did you really expect him to try? This is Shikamaru we're talking about, sunlight would be too troublesome for him. Naruto spoke in a bored yet amused tone. Ino gave a sigh of defeat. I guess. She replied. Page box, well that match certainly was. Anticlimactic. Hiruzen said as he watched Shikamaru give up. Yes, but he displayed a very good tactical mind. He would make a good strategist. I wouldn't expect anything less from Nara. Jiraiya thought aloud. The Kazuki had remained silent, not uttering a word. Do you agree that he should be a Chunin? Hiruzen asked as both Jiraiya and the Kazakiyaj nodded. Brock Lee and Ichiha Sasuke please make your way towards the arena. Hiruzen heard Hei call down from the arena. Yes, looks like he will be disqualified. Hiruzen said as he was getting ready to disqualify Sasuke when Orochimaru in disguise interrupted the elderly man. Please wait for Hokage Dono. I wish to see Ichiha fight Rock Lee. Let's continue with the rest of the matches until he arrives. The Kazakiyaj said. You do realize that if he isn't capable of responsible missions, then he isn't worthy of being a chunin. Hiruzen fired back. If I understand correctly, Hata Kakashi is an elite jounin, and yet he is hours late to almost all of his missions. The Kazakiyaj smugly replied. The Hokage knew that the Kazakiyaj had a point and there was nothing he could do to argue. As you wish. But if he isn't here when his time is then he will be disqualified. Hiruzen spoke with a defeated sigh. Of course. The masked cage replied. Hiruzen turned to his bodyguard and he went to Hayate and explained the situation. In the arena, Uzumaki Naruto and Sabaku no Gara, please make your way to the arena. Hayate called out. Naruto and Gara both appeared using their own versions of Shunshin, Naruto was wind, and Gara was sand. Uzumaki Naruto and Sabaku no Gara, are you both ready? Hayate called out and both nodded. Hayate jumped back to a safe distance as Gara did something highly unexpected, he took off and discarded his sand gourd. This action surprised not only both of his siblings but his sensei, as well as the disguised Orochimaru. Naruto simply raised an eyebrow in slight confusion. Gara, what are you doing? Naruto asked curiously. Gara looked straight into Naruto's eyes. I wish to test the fruits of my labor against you, Shukaku and I have come to terms with one another, and I wish to test out my power against yours, Gara said with a voice filled with determination. Naruto acquired a serious expression on his face. Does this mean he has chakra mode? Naruto thought to himself. Naruto, I will lend you my chakra for now, but don't expect me to do this again anytime soon. Karami called out from his mindscape. 
Naruto's eyes widened slightly. Karami-chan when I was planning on using my. Karami cut him off immediately. No. The man Jekyo Sharingan would be far too much for him to handle, plus I'm only giving you enough chakra to enter into your chakra mode, as you call it for six minutes. So, don't waste it on any flashy jutsus, do you understand me Naruto? Karami replied in a serious tone, as she wished to test the strength of her younger brothers. Naruto gave a defeated sigh. In his training with Yurei prior to the finals of the exam, he had fully awakened his man Jekyo Sharingan and Rinnegan. He had regained the Kamui, Amaterasu, Amenetejikara, and the Rakuto techniques. Unfortunately, he hadn't yet regained his Tensigen, nor his Rakuto Senjutsu, therefore he did not have his higher tier abilities like, or Jubi mode, but they weren't necessary against a newly perfected, Ginchiriki. Okay you win Karami-chan. Karami gave a victorious smirk. Thanks. Ahana smiled as Naruto and Karami had been slowly getting friendlier towards one another since the beginning of this month-long training session. Won't be long now before those two are best friends. It seems he's a good influence on her too, she's less cold and friendlier now because of Naruto-kun. Kahana thought to herself with a warm smile spread across her lips. Without warning Gara clapped his hands together. His entire body was suddenly cloaked in a thick potent tan flickering flame chakra shroud, with dark blue natural curse seals spread across the chakra shroud. Gara's sclera turned black, with yellower eyes and pupils that each took the shape of a black four-pointed star with four black dots around it. With crowd, this took the crown by surprise, but no one was more surprised than Kankuro and Tamari. What is something that I've never seen before? Kankuro spoke in a frightened tone, while Tamari shook her head. I honestly don't know, I don't feel any bloodlust coming from him now, only some form of excitement. Aki stared down at the redeed before narrowing his eyes. What is this form, no bloodlust coming from him? How could he have gained this much control over Shukaku in such a short period of time? You better not screw this up Gara we have a lot riding on you. We can't afford to have you exhausting yourself right here and now. Baki thought to himself. In the arena, whoa. I thought only the Kaiubi Jinchuriki could use the Biju cloak. Naruto shouted in his head. Nope, in this world Karami explained. All can enter into Biju chakra mode. Though I doubt he's as strong as you were when you used the incomplete Kaiubi chakra mode. Naruto had a smile on his face. So, this is your Biju mode, it feels a lot better than that berserk form you had doesn't it? Naruto said as Gara nodded. Yes, it does, and it's thanks to you that I was able to obtain this form. Garner announced much to the surprise of his siblings and sensei. Naruto also clapped his hands together before he was cloaked in a golden flickering flame chakra shroud. His entire body was covered in a bright yellow cloak of chakra that flowed out like a caper coat. His pupils morphed into vertical slits befitting a fox. To the spectators, he appeared to look similar to a certain war hero of theirs, as much as they wished to deny. Naruto crouched down leaning forward slightly. You ready Gara? Naruto called out as Gara nodded as a single bead of sweat made its way across his forehead. Yes, I am ready. Both vanished from sight, before meeting in the middle clashing creating a shockwave that tore the ground apart. They proceeded to vanish again and clash in a different place within the arena. Their movements became faster and faster, as it appeared that two orbs of flickering flame chakra were buzzing around the arena clashing with one another. Every shockwave caused rubble and dust flying to the air, the display of speed and power was incredible. Easily matching, if not surpassing, most Jounin in both speed and strength, leaving most of the spectators in awe. Naruto quickly jumped back creating some distance as he created a Futon. Miniras and Shuriken, before throwing it directly at Gara, Who blocked by creating a wall of sand, the explosion took up half of the arena. The pure force from this explosion knocked most of the spectators out of their seats. Page Box, Hirazin and Jiraiya both felt a shockwave from Naruto's Rasen Shuriken. So, he did complete the Rasengan after all, he is a strong affiliation for Wind too. Perhaps you'll be taking my hat sooner than expected, Naruto-kun. Hiruzen thought with a smile on his face. Jiraiya smirked. Gaki you are going to go far much further than me or Minato ever could. Jiraiya thought of his godson. The Kazuki Jirachimaru stared down at Naruto with a neutral expression. That one is Yuzumaki Naruto correct, he's very powerful and can easily be Chunin if not a Jounin. The masked cage said. How can that brat be this powerful? What happened to him? He shouldn't be able to use the Kyubi's power. Yet he's using it flawlessly here, and he couldn't even use it consciously a month ago. What the hell happened? Hirachimaru mentally screamed and cried in frustration. You are correct in terms of power he could easily be a Jounin. But he lacks the experience, so he will be promoted to Chunin first. Here is in lies through his teeth, Naruto had enough experience to be a cage, so most likely Naruto will be promoted to Jounin. The Kazakiage nodded in agreement. With crowd, what the hell? Sakura, Ino, and Kibo all yelled out in unison. The cigarette dropped from Asuma's agape mouth. 
that was an extremely powerful wind release from ninjutsu, but what I don't understand is where could he learn something that powerful in such a short amount of time? Asuma said aloud. Gurunai studies Naruto's movements carefully. And that chakra surrounding his body, it feels like the Kaiubi's only more purified. She muttered. Anko only nodded as she watched in awe as the two clashed one another. Ara. Kenkuro and Tamari both thought in unison. Baki remained quiet as he grew more and more nervous by the second, at this rate this Uzumaki Naruto was bound to defeat Gara eventually. Maybe this invasion was a mistake from the very beginning. Suna Jounin thought to himself. Look at how youthful those two are. Just watching them fight makes me want to do 1000 laps around Kanoha on my hands. The blue beast of the leaf proclaimed proudly. Yes Gai Sensei I shall join you. Lee replied. Lee. Gai Sensei. Lee. Gai Sensei. Nu. Everyone else shouted. In the arena, the two chakra shrouded continued to clash one another before they came to a full stop before they both went on the ground. Gara, who wasn't used to moving this fast and wasn't very proficient in tojutsu, was panting heavily. While well, Naruto seemed completely fine, Naruto smirked. You're not getting tired of me are you, Gara? Gara shot Naruto glare. I'm not good at tojutsu, I'm a long-range fighter. I rely mainly on ninjutsu and junjutsu. So, I'll tell you this much I won't last much longer in this fight. You're simply too strong. Gara said before closing his eyes and giving a small smile. But I'm grateful to you for showing me that there's more to fight for than myself. You showed me that I can attain even greater power from protecting those who are precious to me, such as Tamari and Kankuro. And even my idiot sensei Baki. Gara spoke in a truly peaceful tone. Tamari and Kankuro eyes widened at what they just heard, Baki was glaring daggers at Naruto. Pain. Kayab Gakakyu, no fire release. Nine Tails Great Fireball Technique. Naruto howled as he released a stream of golden flames from his mouth. Gara narrowed his eyes before clapping his hands together. Rixa no Taki no quicksand waterfall flow. Gara created a large wave of sand to block Naruto's flames, which created a large wall of glass which Naruto shattered as he proceeded to dive bomb Gara. This resulted in the two Jinchurikis blurring out again before clashing a few more times, leaving the arena in horrible shape. Gara quickly jumped back attempting to create some distance between him and Naruto. Then let us finish this match. Gara, come at me with the intent to kill, do not hold back. Naruto howled as Gara crouched down and began performing hand seals. Sunaryuden no Jutsu Sand Dragon Bullet Jutsu. Gara growled as he formed a massive dragon made from sand. Naruto smirked as he watched the giant dragon grow nearer by the second. Thanks for the chakra Karami, I'll be sure to pay you back later. Naruto announced a redeeded beauty within him. Don't worry Naruto, I'll collect my payment when everything is over. Karami giggled perversely. Also, time's up she spoke. Don't worry, I'll be using something else. He reassured. Naruto's chakra cloak vanished. Naruto's left eye was closed tightly as he cried tears of blood. The matter Asu. Naruto whispered, opening his eye which had a Jinjutsu cast over it so he wouldn't cause a mass panic throughout Kanoha. Majestic black flames attached themselves to the dragon made from sand, completely encasing the large sand dragon in fire. Gara's eyes widened as his sand dragon stopped moving within seconds and was turned into a giant beautiful glass sculpture. Naruto smirked, wiping the blood from his left eye, before advancing towards Gara, whose chakra cloak finally gave out. Oi Gara, there was a good match, do you want to continue or forfeit? Either way, we can always have a rematch later. Naruto said as he extended his hand to Gara. Gara seemed surprised at first before making a fist and fist bumping Naruto. Yes, I would like that sometime in the future, Naruto. Proctor, I forfeit. Gara announced to the surprise of everyone. Hey, nodded. Winner by forfeit, Uzumaki Naruto. The audience was dead quiet before one person began to clap then many followed suit. Naruto couldn't help but smile as he and Gara both walked up the stairs together. With crowd, Damari and Kankuro both sat there dead quiet, they couldn't believe what just happened. I can't believe it. Gara lost. Tamari spoke in a tone filled with disbelief. Uh-huh. Was all that she got out of war paint wearing brother. Aki just sighed in frustration, with Gara defeated the invasion was a complete bust. Kazuki Ajisama must be furious right now, and knowing him he's going to take it all on me. Baki mentally whined in frustration. Asuma had a smirk on his face. It seems Kakashi chose the wrong person to train, too bad he wasn't here to see what Naruto just did. Just to think that he had this much control over Kaiubi's chakra, the boy's a true genius. Asuma praised Naruto. Gurunai and Anko both were clapping. Yes, you can tell he's already incredibly strong, and he still has room to grow. He's not even his prime yet he's already making us look weak. The Jinjutsu Mistra spoke in a positive tone of voice. Damn that Gaki looks delicious, yufufufufu. I'm gonna ride him into the ground. Anko cheered in a perverted tone. Kurunai looked at her best friend with a deadpan expression. He's too young for you, and will you please get your mind out of the gutter. 
Anko simply looked at her best friend with a smirk. Does that Gaki look like a scrawny little weakling like the rest of them? Kurinai tried to come up with a retort but remained silent. Shikamaru was thanking Kami, Yami, Shinigami, and the Almighty Log that he didn't have to fight Naruto. Man, now that blonde is even more troublesome, glad I didn't have to fight him. Shikamaru thought to himself. Ino squealed with joy. Man, I can't believe how cool Naruto is now. Sakura's eyes widened in surprise. How could you betray Sasuke-kun like that? Naruto Baka is nothing more than a demon in human skin. Sakura yelled out. Ino and the others gasped at the ugly undeveloped obnoxiously large forehead pink haired girl who just said about her teammate. Sakura, how could you say that about Naruto? He's never done anything to you, besides ask you on the date every occasionally. Kiba growled. He's a demon always will be, you're all blind to the truth and you can't see what he truly is. Sakura retorted only for the temperature in the area to drop about 20 degrees. She turned around and saw Niji standing there with a scowl on his face. You have some nerve talking about him that way. True he may not be like that much among the villagers, but he opened my eyes to the truth. He showed me that people can defy fate and carve their own destiny. This battle should demonstrate that better than any other. Yet, here you are badmouthing him when he's never done anything to you. Niji spoke in an angered tone. Inada also nodded before standing up. And Naruto-kun is one of the best people I've met, he always puts the people he cares about before himself. And it's people like you that give him a bad name and you never even try to understand. You just ignore him, you just simply call him names and run the other way. Hinata spoke in an assertive tone of voice, much to the surprise of everyone around her. Page box, Harizen had a proud look on his face. It seems Naruto-kun has defeated your son Kazuki Dono. The Kazuki did not give any physical response. It matters not even without Shukaku we will still prevail. Kukikuku. Arachimaru thought to himself. Yes, it's a pity that my son lost, I'll be sure to talk to him later. The Kazuki had spoke in a neutral tone of voice. Jiraiya and all stared at the masked cage. Arachimaru must be having second thoughts at this point, without Shukaku their invasion is pretty much gone. Both teacher and student thought in unison. In the arena. Rock Lee and Ichiha Sasuke please make your way towards the arena. Harizen heard Hei call down from the arena. Everyone watched the scene unfold. A few seconds later Ichiha Sasuke appeared with Hata Kakashi via Shunshin. I hope we aren't late. Kakashi asked while sheepishly scratching the back of his head, giving a nervous high smile. No, for once you arrived just in time, Kakashi. Hei said with a slightly amused expression. Name? Sasuke. Ichiha Sasuke. Sasuke replied in a smug almighty tone. Lee flipped himself over the balcony and flew to the battle arena landing directly in front of Sasuke. I feared that you would not show up, Sasuke-kun. Lee spoke to his opponent. Sasuke gave an arrogant smirk. Why wouldn't I come? I still have to pay you back for beating me before the start of the first exam. I see the fire in your eyes, Sasuke-kun. It is a shame to have to see that fire diminished because I intend to win. Lee spoke with determination in his voice while Sasuke scowled. I'll win no matter what, you bushy eyebrowed freak. Sasuke's thoughts are sinister to himself. Rock Lee and Ichiha Sasuke, are you both ready? Hei called out and both nodded. Rock Lee disappeared in a burst of speed, Sasuke quickly activated his two Tomo Sharingan. Lee reappeared right next to Sasuke and launched his opening kick. Kano has sent you a leaf hurricane. Before the kick could even make contact Sasuke blocked it with his forearm. Lee was pleasantly surprised for a second before he backpedaled away avoiding Sasuke's nasty left hook. Landing on the ground, the Tajutsu specialist launched himself at Sasuke who in turn also launched himself at his opponent. The two met in the middle as they began to trade blows, it was a complete Tajutsu slugfist. As occasionally one of them got hit sending saliva and blood flying. The two genin were buzzing around the arena at speed that would give some in a run for their money. With crowd, Asuma blew in a puff of smoke. Man, that kid is like mini guy out there, it's truly remarkable. Although the Achiha is only keeping up thanks to his Sharingan, he's obviously copying Lee's movements as well. Asuma spoke in a somewhat disappointed voice. I watched proudly as Lee began to slowly gain ground against Sasuke. As I would expect from Kakashi's students, I must say Naruto is much faster and stronger than Sasuke though. Guy praised his life as he patted Kakashi on the back. Kakashi from behind his mask, he really wanted to see Naruto in action, but his old habit just wouldn't let him. I have no doubt Naruto is stronger and faster than Sasuke, but everything I heard from him was true. Then Naruto could easily be on par with cage-level shinobi if not the biju themselves. No, he's stronger. Kakashi thought. The members of the Kanoha 12 minus Naruto, Lee, and Sasuke, along with the Sand siblings, watched a match eager to see who would win. Naruto knew if Lee opened his inner gates he would win without a doubt, but he didn't want to see the match that quickly. Come on Sasuke-kun. Nino cried out. 
You can win Sasuke Kun beat that bush eyebrowed freak of nature. Sakura shrieked out as Naruto found himself rubbing his ears as they had been raped by her shrill voice. In the arena, the two finally broke apart as Lee began to run around Sasuke, increasing his speed so much that only Sharingan users and cage level shinobi would be able to keep up. Sasuke due to his semi-mature Sharingan could only see blurs and slide after images. Before he could even figure out what was happening, Lee shot out of the circle, giving Sasuke a rising kick in the chin. Before Sasuke could gain his bearings, Lee delivered another kick to Sasuke's ribs, sending them higher into the air. Not one to be deterred, Lee continued pounding into Sasuke, lifting the dark-haired boy higher and higher until Lee got him to the necessary height for his technique. Lee then wrapped his bandages around Sasuke as he began to rotate the two of them and began to fall head first towards the arena floor. Amit Renge Primary Lotus. At the last second, Lee kicked Sasuke, allowing him to crash the ground. As Sasuke crashed headfirst into the ground, causing a large crater and dust to rise, Lee landed on his hands, but could push himself up into a backflip and landing on his feet. Lee began to feel the side effects of opening the Cayman Gate of opening. His joints felt sore, his head spinned lightly, nothing he couldn't handle after a few seconds of recovery. As the dust cleared everyone could see Sasuke's badly battered body. Only a select few, Naruto, Hiruzen, Jiraiya, Kakashi, Gai, Anko, and Orochimaru, saw what happened as Sasuke's curse seal pulsed with power. Sasuke opened his eyes revealing a fully mature Sharingan with three tomatoes, as a familiar black flame tribal mark spread across his body. A sickening grin spread across his face, as the sound of chirping could be heard from the crater. Lee turned around just in time to see Sasuke rushing towards him with a dark purple Chidori roaring to life. Lee's eyes widened as his body was still recovering, he couldn't properly dodge, so he threw a kick to avert Sasuke's Chidori so that it would not puncture his chest. But instead it hit Lee in the shoulder, instead causing the splendid Genin to cry in pain before he gripped his shoulder as fresh blood dripped to the ground. Sasuke grinned as he looked at his hand. This is even more powerful than I felt before. Yes, with this I'll be able to kill Itachi, oh the glorious power that that man gifted me with. I shall use it to strike down those who get in my way. Sasuke thought to himself in an insane manner as he glanced towards Naruto. Sasuke rushed in, unleashing a barrage of brutal punches and kicks, Lee was unable to defend himself as the curse seal was not only fueling Sasuke with more of Orochimaru's Jutsu Chakra. But it was also eating away at his psyche making them more and more unstable and unpredictable. Sasuke delivered an earth-shattering punch to the stomach, causing the guy look-alike to hunch over and cough up blood. This isn't good at this rate I only have one option left. I'm sorry Guy sensei but I have no other option but to use it. Lee thought to himself. Sasuke delivered an earth-shattering kick to his ribs, sending the boy tumbling away. Come on. Is that all you've got you pathetic little weakling? Sasuke roared in an insane tone of voice as the purple aura around his body grew thicker and more potent by the second. It showed just how far Sasuke was willing to go for power. I came here for a fight and yet all you've done is let me down. You're truly pathetic so truly pathetic that it's not even funny. The difference in our powers now is from the stadium to the Hokage Monument. Sasuke boasted. Lee looked battered and beaten, and most of the onlookers believed that he was going to lose. However, Lee had one final trick up its sleeve. Lee pushed himself up onto his feet crossing his arms into an X position soon after. Hyaman. Kai Gate of Healing. Open. Lee shouted before a massive surge of chakra was released from the boy's body as his skin began to turn red. All the previous wounds he had suffered began healing at an extreme rate. With crowd, how many gates can he open? Asked Kakashi, looking startled at seeing a gen incapable of such a powerful and dangerous kinjutsu. For, so far said Guy, his voice proud. Are you insane? Teaching a genin so powerful. I don't expect you to understand, Kakashi, said Guy. Although you really shouldn't be talking should you? You taught Chidori to an unstable genin. You know absolutely nothing about Lee. He wants to prove to everyone that he can be a splendid shinobi with only tojutsu. Guy spoke in a serious tone of voice while Kakashi put his head down in shame. In the arena, Saman. Kai Gate of Life. Open. As the output of Lee's chakra surged even more, the bowl cut haired boy's skin began turning red. SHM Mon. Kai Gate of Pain. Open. Veins began popping out of Lee's body. Lee leaned forward before he shot off the ground with such force that the ground collapsed under the pressure. Sasuke blinked before his eyes widened in shock as Lee slammed his fist into his face. Sasuke was sent flying back, Lee then appeared behind him, using a kick to lift the Achiha into the air, he repeated this action, this time sending Sasuke to the ground with a heel drop. On and on it went, with Lee playing pinball with Sasuke as he launched the last Achiha around the arena, moving so fast that only a few people were even able to follow.
Finally, Lee delivered a stone-breaking punch to Sasuke's stomach, sending the insane boy hurling towards the ground, stopping the Ichiha's momentum due to one of his bandages wrapped around Sasuke's midsection. This will end it. Lee brought his free arm and left leg down towards Sasuke. This caused a tornado to affect like what Lee did earlier only much faster. No human could move like this. I can't block that. Sasuke thought to himself. The orange reverse lotus. The two crashed to the ground destroying most of the arena. Thankfully, Lee managed to push himself off and land safely, though he was injured and had a hard time moving. Lee was on his hands and knees injured, tired, and fatigued panting heavily as his droopy eyes looked onto where Sasuke had crashed. Everyone wondered if the odd boy with the bowl cut hair had won. Naruto had no doubt in his mind that Lee just completely crushed Sasuke, as his hunch was proven correct as dust cleared revealing a broken Sasuke lying in a crater. The winner by knockout is Rock Lee. Medic. Called Hade as Lee gave a tired smile as Guy jumped down from the balcony and hugged his precious student who cried in pain from the hug. Chapter 7, Nuuuuo. Sasuke-kun how can you lose to those bushy eyebrows? Everyone's favorite pink-haired banshee screeched out. Naruto smirked as Lee completely crushed Sasuke. I knew a bushy brow would crush that egomaniac. Naruto spoke in a proud tone. Ino and the others stared at Naruto as he confusedly looked at them back. What? Egomaniac? Wow, he's your teammate isn't he? Ino spoke with a frown on her face. Naruto understood her logic so he decided to answer. Well, Ino I would consider him a teammate if he treated me like a teammate, but he doesn't care about me, he doesn't care about Pinky or Kakashi Sensei either. All he cares about is power. If he needed to, he wouldn't hesitate to kill every single one of us to obtain it, that is why it's hard to see him as a teammate. Naruto spoke in a calm yet uncaring tone. That's not true Naruto Baka. Sasuke-kun would never do such a thing to me, but he will kill you because you're a demon. Sakura screeched at the top of her lungs, only for her to start shivering. Naruto turned his head to her with his eyes closed. Really? Please tell me, how is he going to do that? He couldn't injure me even if he tried to. Also, newsflash for you Sakura, Sasuke doesn't like you at all, he hates it when you get mushy just looking at him, so why don't you drop the two-faced crop and straighten yourself out before a real fight takes him away from you and you'll have nobody to hide behind. Naruto growled. It would be fine if Sakura had really tried to contribute to Konoha as a real shinobi, but all she ever did was hopelessly follow a man destined for tragedy. Sakura built up tears before she ran away trying not to cry her eyes out. Ino stared at Naruto once more. That was pretty brutal, Naruto, you should probably apologize later. The platinum blonde haired girl suggested. To which Naruto gave her a calm response. The thing is, unless she realizes what kind of person Sasuke really is, she'll never do any more than stand by watching helplessly as he does as he pleases. She'd be completely powerless to do anything if he were to get overly violent. I doubt she'd even be able to run for 10 seconds if he chased her. Fiba could only say one word. Agreed. Niji nodded, deciding to remain quiet, as Hinata also remained quiet as she stared at Naruto. Naruto-kun what happened to you, you're different from before. You're not as optimistic, but more realistic it seems. She thought in a bittersweet tone. Naruto then noticed feathers floating in the air slowly descending to the ground. So, it's finally getting started. Naruto thought as he heard an explosion from the cage box, without hesitating Naruto disappeared in a blur of speed. He was determined to make it to the rooftop to help Hiruzen and Jiraiya out against Orochimaru. Rooftop, Shishi Engine 4 Violet Flames Formation. The members of the Sound 4 cried out, causing a large four pointed violet barrier to form. The large purple four sided wall enveloped Naruto, Hiruzen, and Jiraiya as they prepared to face off against the infamous Arachimaru. Vivid up Arachimaru, we have you outnumbered, Jiraiya said, knowing that this wasn't the case. Arachimaru gave a sickening chuckle. Kukikuku. You should know me better than Jiraiya. The three of you are outnumbered and are going to die here. With your deaths, Kanoha shall fall soon after. Arachimaru spoke in a creepy calm tone before performing a series of hand seals. Kuchius. Ido Tensei summoning. Impure world reincarnation. Arachimaru roared as four coffins erupted from the rooftop. Within seconds the four coffins opened. What was inside left the three occupants shocked to their very core. In order from coffin 1 to coffin 4, Hashirama Senju, Taburama Senju, Minato Namikas, and finally Kashina Yuzumaki. The coffin soon vanished into thin air before the reanimated corpses began to become aware of their surroundings. Here is in roared in anger. You monster, how did you bring Minato back? His soul was locked within the Shinigami's stomach, Jiraiya was curious how this friend could accomplish such a thing. Naruto on the other hand remained quiet, thanks to Sasuke's memories, there was a method to undo the Shiki FK Jin dead demon consuming seal. Naruto frowned trying to keep his own anger in check. He must have gotten a hold of the Shinigami mask to perform the Shiki FK Jin. Kai dead demon consuming seal. Release, this isn't good. Naruto thought to himself. 
How dare that white-skinned bastard do something like this. He has no respect for the realm of the Kami. Madatabi chan is gonna be so heartbroken when she finds out about this. Karami began to scream in pure rage. Are there any bad consequences from releasing those who are sealed within the Shinigami stomach Karami-chan? Kahana asked a red-haired vixen, as Naruto also wanted to know. Karami was quiet before answering. Not necessarily, but doing something like this meant only for the Chosen is horrible. If done wrong those souls could have been stuck in an endless loop of constant pain. Now, focusing on what's happening right now, I sense something very vile and disgusting coming from Orochimaru, be careful Naruto whatever he is he isn't human. I also suggest that you collect my other half from your father Minato. Karami spoke in a calm yet serious tone. Naruto did not reply, he simply nodded. Opening his eyes Naruto glared at the Hibi Sanin. You perform the Shaiki Fujin. Kai didn't you? Naruto spoke in a serious tone much to the surprise of Hiruzen and Jiraiya. The reanimated corpses were now looking around very confused. What's happening? Where are we? Kishina asked in a confused tone to which Minato answered. I'm not sure about Kishina, but I know I should be sealed within the Shinigami. Completely unaware of what Naruto just said. Ashirama glared at his younger brother. Woo, you see, Taburama, I told you not to make the Ido Tensei because it could be used against the leaf, but did you listen? No. Taburama glared at his older brother. Be silent Nai-san. That technique was for information gathering and that is all. So do not blame me for this, I thought I sealed away the scroll. Obviously, I did a horrible job. Taburama retorted. Minato's eyes landed on Hiruzen. Hiruzen, where are we what happened? How do I get out of this? Hiruzen raised a hand to silence Yandame. Now is not the time or the place Minato, if we make it out of here we can have a little discussion. But as of right now we're in the middle of a war and we can afford to lose. Minato nodded before his eyes landed on Naruto. As did Kashina both she and Minato had the same thought in common. Naruto he's so grown up how long have we been dead for oh, he must hate us for what happened. The two parents thought in unison. Orochimaru chuckled darkly before pulling out four kunai. I'm afraid you'll never get that chance sensei, because I plan on killing you right here and now. Kukukuku. The snake in human skin chuckled darkly, although his chuckle soon turned to his screams of agony. Kamui Rasengan authority of the gods Rasengan. Naruto all but whispered as he suddenly hit the Hibi Sanin with an unexpected Rasengan directly into Orochimaru's chest, sending them flying into the Shishi engine, causing his body to ignite in flames, causing him to scream in agony. The last thing Orochimaru saw before his eyes were incinerated was Naruto's left eye, his man Jekyo Sharingan. Minato, Kishina, Hashirama and Taburama were all shocked at what just happened. Was that a sealess version of the Horatian no Jutsu flying thunder god technique, they all thought in unison. Naruto quickly turned around. I know you must have questions, but please bear with me. Naruto spoke in a serious tone of voice as they all froze when they saw his left eye. The Sharingan they all shouted in thought. Without even uttering a word, Naruto placed his hand on his father's chest. Get ready Kahana-chan. Naruto called out to his beautiful redeated tenant. Don't worry I'm ready Naruto. She called back as Naruto mentally nodded. Karami-chan here it comes, get ready. I'll try to ease the process as best I can Naruto announced to the redeated vixen. Thank you, Naruto, that's very sweet of you Karami said in a kind tone. Naruto's eye suddenly morphed further, his man Jekyo. Sharingan suddenly disappeared, changing into Kahana's Rin Sharingan. Akito Fujitsu Kentucky U in pre-top path blocking technique absorption seal. Naruto and Kahana both announced. Minato blinked in confusion as he stared at his son. Naruto, what are you? Minato couldn't finish his sentence as he felt a huge pull. The yin portion of the Kaiubi being forcefully ripped out of him. As soon as the deed was done Minato dropped to his hands, even being a reanimated corpse that still felt weird and left him feeling weak. The yin half of the Karami had slowly passed through Naruto's arm, causing spikes of pain at each place it touched. RRRRG. This hurts a ton. It's like I'm being stabbed repeatedly Naruto noted within his mind. Naruto-kun. Be careful. Kahana pleaded from within her seal. Teh, don't worry Kahana-chan. If it is for my friends, I'll do anything. Soon after, the two halves of Kurama converged and Kurami become whole again. Naruto what did you just do? Kishina yelled out in surprise. I took back the yin portion of Kurami-chan. If that white-skinned creep managed to get control over you Dan and he still has her yin chakra in him, he'll be just as dangerous as Shadame. Naruto spoke in a calm tone. Leaving all the reanimated shinobi baffled by his logic. Kurami. Hashirama spoke in a confused tone. So this means that Kaiubi has a name? Naruto turned to the wood release master. Yes, she does have a name and a human form. She's also not evil, despite what everyone portrays her to be. She's actually very nice when you treat her with respect like a person. Naruto said while glancing at his mother who put her head down in shame. 
Boy Kahana, can I use the Jito Ren Tensei no Jutsu Outer Path Samsara of Heavenly Life technique? Naruto asked, hoping that Kahana could. Naruto didn't have to wait long for his answer. No Naruto-kun, at your current physical level, you would most certainly die from using it. Kahana was disappointed in herself for not being able to help Naruto when he needed it. Couldn't you revitalize me and keep me from dying? Naruto asked. No, because I haven't done so ever before and am still fairly young, I have not fully grasped my own power yet. It is a bit complicated. I'm very sorry, Naruto-kun. Hirami decided to end this pointless conversation. In simple terms neither one of you is capable of reviving Minato and his beast of a wife. So, you have two options. You can either let them return to the afterlife or even keep them around until you both mature a little more. Kurami said before pushing Naruto out of his mindscape. Why did you do that Kurami-chan? Kurami sighed. He should talk to his family about this, plus I'm not thrilled about seeing those two again anytime soon. The Kaiubi grumbled while Jubi shook her head. Naruto regained focus before glancing at the four reanimated shinobi, as much as it pains him to say that he had no choice. Orochimaru won't stay down for long, so this is your only chance for you to return to the pure land. Naruto said in a calm but serious tone, while trying to control his emotions. Do you mean we have to return to the pure land, we're not letting you deal with that white-skinned, Dito alone young man? Kishina yelled out comically, Naruto flinched at his mother's angry tone. Minato chuckled while rubbing the back of his head, remembering how terrifying his wife's temper could be. Ashirama smiled. Me and Tabarama only have access to a fraction of our true power, so we would be of little use to you. Hashirama spoke in a friendly tone as Tabarama nodded. He's correct we would only slow you down on the battlefield, plus I can easily dispel the Ido Tensei. Tabarama gestured towards Kashina and Minato. I will release them for your parents on their side, so they will no longer be controlled by Orochimaru. Naruto nodded respect and their wishes, as the white-haired Senju began performing seals before clapping his hands together as he and his brother fell apart, leaving the corpses of two Odo shinobi lying on the ground. Kishina's body and Minato's body were enveloped in a white aura-like cloak which quickly dispersed. An instant after that, the group of shinobi and Cage heard an angry voice which exploded from behind them. You damn little shit you're more trouble than you're worth. But you do have the Rinnegan. Orochimaru started seeing Kahana's Rin Sharingan which Naruto hadn't deactivated. I'll tear that eye from your socket and use it as my own. With that, I'll be unstoppable. Orochimaru screamed at the top of his lungs. Ureya gave a smug smirk. What are you going to do now, Orochimaru? The Ichibi and the Ido Tensei are no more. You have nothing left to threaten us with. Hiruzen nodded in agreement with his student. Just surrender and we'll make your death as painless as possible. Hiruzen said as Hijureya, Minato, Kishina and Naruto all dropped into battle stances. Kukukukuku. Kakahaka kahaka. You must be joking. I still have myself and I would use it to end all of you. Orochimaru's voice turned demonic. His body began to morph and grow. It didn't take long for his body to fully change, as what stood before the group was truly terrifying. The creature that rivaled Karami at her full-size Kaiubi form with both portions of her chakra stared down at them with its 16 eyes locked on them. This creature was a massive serpent with eight heads, covered in black and green scales, with violet eyes. Orochimaru had become the legendary frightening Yamada no Orochi. With crowd, Bakashi watched Naruto blur out of existence before hearing an explosion from the cage box. I guess it started, I wish you luck Naruto please keep Hokage-sama safe. Kakashi wished his true star pupil luck. What's this? Sakura asked as she watched feathers start falling from nowhere making her sleepy. Injutsu? She asked right before breaking the illusion. Bakashi it appears the invasion has started. Asuma called out as he fraught against a couple of Odo shinobi. Invasion? An invasion Kiba asked. We're being invaded by the Suna and Odo. Kakashi explained as he broke one of the Odo shinobi's necks. What? Sakura shrieked out like a banshee. But isn't Suna one of our allies? She sounded panicked. They were allies, but not anymore. We've known about the invasion since the end of the second phase of the Chunin exams, so we are prepared. Kakashi said trying to ease the worry of the fresh genin and fight off the Odo shinobi. Then why weren't we notified about this? Niji asked, slightly annoyed and hurt that they were kept in the dark. We had to keep it a secret so they didn't find out that we knew. Guy explained. Sakura was petrified from what was happening. She had no comprehension on how crazy the shinobi world truly was, she never had seen real bloodshed before. Sakura was from a civilian family and wasn't prepared for the hardships of a shinobi life and simply lived her life sheltered in Konoha. Sakura was about to ask another thing when she noticed a gigantic ethereal tanuki manifested within the battle arena and began attacking both Suna and Odo shinobi alike. Sakura had never been so scared in her life, seeing such a colossal beast right in front of her. At that moment, she realizes what the people must have faced 12 years ago during the Kaiubi attack. SS Sensei. 
W what is that thing? Sakura tried to say, but her voice refused to work correctly. Kakashi saw Gara attacking the Odo Shinobi and knocking out the Suna Shinobi. Naruto, you glorious bastard, you must be a miracle worker to get the Ichibi to work with us. Kakashi smirked from behind his mask. Don't worry Sakura. He's on our side, and with him this invasion should be over very shortly. Kakashi said calmly. Psha. Crash. Boom, holy fuck. Kakashi all but yelled when he looked at the cage box and rooftop collapse. Although what stood in the place of the rooftop was a massive eight-headed, covered in black and green scales, with violet eyes. Even bigger than Kurami-san Kakashi all but yelled in thought. The collapsed rooftop, Naruto's body was engulfed in a calm stable white chakra shroud, from which he created multiple chakra arms which protected Hiruzen, Jiraiya, Minato, and Kashina. Damn it, I thought we had him, what the hell is this thing? Naruto roared in thought. Naruto this is not good. Kurami cried out to her host with a voice filled with worry. Naruto's eyes widened, he had never heard Kurami express this much worry in her voice before. What do you mean Kurami-chan, what the hell is this thing? Naruto called out. It would be best if I came out so I can explain to everyone. Kurami spoke in an extremely serious tone of voice. Naruto nodded before creating another chakra arm, which a smoke exploded over it. Once the cloud of smoke cleared Minato and Kashina were left in awe at the attractive young woman with fox ears and tails standing on the open palm of Naruto's chakra arm. Alright, what I'm about this is very important so shut up and listen. Kurami spoke in a tone that left no room for argument. Kashina narrowed her eyes. Why should we listen to you furball? Kashina yelled. Because I'm the only one who knows how to defeat the Yamada no Orochi, you impatient violent retreat. Kurami retorted in a calm tone of voice. Minato then spoke up. Kashina I think we should listen to her. And why should we? Naruto's eyes twitched in annoyance. Because if you don't, I may be attacked before she can explain, and I won't be able to sustain those chakra arms holding you, and it's a long fall from here. Naruto spoke in an emotionless tone, hinting at what he was threatening to do. You wouldn't do that with your own Kachan would you do Naruto-chan? Kishina spoke in a slightly frightened and hurt tone. Naruto continued looking forward. No, I wouldn't but right now we need to listen to Kurami-chan, as I trust her more than most of the people in this village. Besides, I've never heard her this serious before. Naruto replied, well everyone including Kurami's eyes widened. He trusts me that much, but we've only known each other for no longer than a month. Kurami thought to herself as she felt her cheeks heat up before shaking her head. He trusts her so much, why did he trust the fox so much? Kishina thought to herself while she stared at the humanoid Kaiubi. Minato was unsure of the idea of Naruto trusting the Kaiubi this much, but unlike his wife, he could keep a clear head. The beast before us is just as old as the Juubi and has the most potent venom out of any living creature on this planet. I don't know how it came back, but to destroy that we must obliterate its entire body. Because if we don't continue to regenerate, his body is impervious to fire, earth, and water. Only raw chakra, lightning, and wind are capable of piercing through its thick scales. Hirami explained. Hayu. Minato tried to say but was cut off by Naruto. Tu-chan, her name is Karami, not Kaiubi. Naruto corrected his father who was sweating. Hirami san what do you mean by it came back? Minato asked curiously as the beast didn't seem to be moving, Karami sighed before explaining. Long ago, shortly after the era of Ashura and Indra, there were three Achiha siblings who not only left their clan, but refused to fight against the Senju. Their names were Ichiha Matarasu, Ichiha Susanu, and Ichiha Tsukiyomi. They were the first Ichiha to awaken the Manjikyu. I do not know what abilities they gained from awakening Manjekyo, but they were confronted by the beast before us, and they were able to defeat it with its very own sword forged from its fangs, the Aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi Sword of the Gathering Clouds of Heaven. That fabled blade is the most powerful sword in all of existence, not only is it infused with Yuenjutsu, but it can also cut through anything. Karami spoke. But we have something that may be enough for this. Karami spoke with a slight smile. Kishina frowned at this. And what might that be? Karami smirked, showing off her fangs. Why, Naruto Susanoo of course, the third power of his Manjekyo Sharingan, that is a humanoid chakra avatar. In its final form, it's as powerful, if not more, than myself. Kishina and Minato's eyes widened as they stared at Naruto, who sheepishly scratched the back of his head. But first, since Naruto has never used it before, we should weaken the monster first. Karami advised. Got it, Katen. Nkakak no jutsu fire release. Great fireball technique. Naruto spat out multiple blue and orange fireballs that flew up into the air heating up the atmosphere. Heating up the atmosphere so quickly created a cumulonimbusser thundercloud, as the sky got dark, it began to rain as lightning began to dance around within the clouds. You said lightning works against the eight-headed serpent, right Kurami-chan? Naruto asked, as Kurami simply nodded wondering what her host was up to. Naruto summoned forth his normal chidori before raising his hand up in the air. 
The Chidori guides this down from the heavens, so be gone after the thunderclap. Naruto said as a roar could be heard from the sky. Everyone looked up, shinobi and civilians alike, were left in awe as he saw a gigantic dragon me out of lightning. This is easily a S-rank jutsu, the amount of power that is collected in that dragon. Hiruzen, Minato, Jiraiya and Kishina all thought in unison. Harami, despite the seriousness of the situation at hand, felt her cheeks heat up once more. The sheer amount of power in this is almost on par with that of a Bijuadama. After this is all over with Naruto-kun I'm going to have you for myself. Karami thought in a lustful manner, as she was attracted to the calm, positive, and massive amount of power Naruto had. It was unlike what most shinobi had. Most shinobi fought to kill and cared only for themselves. Naruto was different, he fought for his friends and all the people he cared about, even if it risked his life. On top of that, his raw strength practically blew her away. Naruto quickly brought his hand down as the humongous lightning dragon flew down at blinding speeds, hitting the Yamato no Orochi. The explosion itself nearly destroyed the entire arena, thankfully all the civilians and genin were out of the arena. Gara had used his sand to shield his siblings, Sensei, Konoha and Tsuna Shinobi alike. Naruto was slightly panting after unleashing Kai and intently watching the smoke rise. Did I get him? A familiar voice answered Naruto. No, you didn't kill Naruto-kun, you injured it, but you did not kill it. Be on your toes it may attack now that you've attacked it. Kahana replied. The smoke cleared revealing an extremely injured but still very alive Yamada no Arachi. The beast was missing five of its eight heads, its steely skin was scorched, the wounds were cauterized. The beast released a powerful howl. Shra. As he began to regenerate and grow five new heads. Gureya grumbled under his breath. Even after being hit by a technique like that. Oi Karami Haim, is it possible to seal this thing? Karami raised a single eyebrow when the prefix added her name. First things first pervert, call me that again I'll rip your testicles off. Yes, he can be sealed, but sealing the inside of a human would be the worst thing we can do. She said as Jiraiya shivered. What do you mean? Minato asked, raising a single eyebrow. Yamato no Orochi is a parasitic being, if you sealed it inside of a human, it would simply siphon off their life force. Then once it's grown stronger, it will absorb them using their body as a medium to recreate its own body. That's what most likely happened to Orochimaru, it probably offered him power, and now he paid the price. I can't even sense him anymore. Karami started with a grim expression on her face. Ishina frowned. Well I guess it means we're going have to do it the old-fashioned way, we beat the fucker to death. She shouted as everyone else deadpanned. That's my mom. Naruto thought. Karami, what a pleasure to meet you here once more. The Orochi hissed. What, that thing can talk? Jiraiya yelled comically. Naruto glanced at his perverted godfather. The reason why he wasn't talking earlier was he was probably trying to consume and absorb Orochimaru, which probably explains why I was able to hit it with Kirin. Naruto said. So you're the little that hit me with that huge amount of lightning. I must, that truly fucking hurt, boy, I commend you for making me feel pain of that magnitude. As a reward, I shall devour you, and you shall become one with me what you? The demonic snake hissed. I say you can take your offer and shove it up your ass. Naruto retorted. The eight-headed serpent growled. Very well, you've made your decision boy. Now that I'm free I SMS shall continue terraforming this world, like me and Juubi were originally here to do. That pathetic fool fell in love with a human, and because of that he got himself SSS sealed away. It's gonna take me forever to terraform this world without him here Yamato no Orochi complained. Naruto, Kurami, and Kahana all froze at what they just heard. Terraform this world. What for? The trio thought in unison. The multi-headed serpent charged forward intent on devouring these five meddlers. Karami placed her index finger and middle fingers together before gently placing them against her forehead. I don't think so, you slithering on a pile of scales. Kaiten. Makankasapo Kai release. Demonic penetrating light death cannon. Thrusting her fingers forward Karami unleashed a powerful beam of condensed and compressed chakra that resembled a spiral, which was a mix of purple and orange. This left everyone in pure awe, the spiraling death cannon destroyed one of the serpent's heads, as well as knocking it back a few meters. How dare you? How dare you do this to me you bitch. Yamada screamed out in pure agony and rage. Naruto gathered his lightning release chakra inside of his stomach before compressing it preparing to launch it at the Yamada. Attack it now. Naruto yells. Raiden. John lightning release. False darkness. Naruto cries out as he emits lightning in the shape of a spear from his mouth, it took the form of a beam, like a laser at the massive serpent. Raiden. Horation kunai cage bunshin no jutsu lightning release. Flying thunder god kunai shadow clone jutsu. Minato threw one of his famed flying thunder god kunai, combining it with the shadow clone jutsu, thus creating thousands upon thousands of replicas of his original kunai, each coated in electricity. Oden Durandan no jutsu 5 release great combo technique. 
Hirazin created four clones as each one including himself, spewed out a different element. Pain. Karak end in fire release. Fire dragon flame bullet. Jiraiya expelled a powerful wave of fire from his mouth. Taun. De top a wind release. Great breakthrough. Kishina released a powerful gust of wind. Pain. Yagen Kai release. Demon gun. Karami gathered a large amount of chakra at the tip of her index finger, charging in until it became unstable before firing it. The five attacks made contact exploding, engulfing the entire serpent's body, as well as shaking what was left of the arena. There was a large amount of smoke where the Yamada no Arachi once was. Ready Kahana-chan. Naruto asked, opening his hand. I'm always ready for Naruto-kun. Everyone heard a high-pitched screeching noise as they saw a large shuriken made from wind chakra with a dark purple center. Hiruzen was the first one to speak up. Naruto-kun that's not the same as the elemental Rasengan you used in the Chunin exams. Naruto stared at the elderly man with a smirk. That right there Aji san is my most powerful Rasengan variant. This is a Biju Udama Rasen Shuriken tailed beast bull Rasen Shuriken. So, brace yourself for a huge explosion. Naruto explained as he threw the deadly Chakra Shuriken at the Yamada no Arachi. Upon impact the explosion completely engulfed the Yamada no Arachi, along with the entire arena, erasing both from existence. The explosion only lasted mere moments, but left everyone in complete awe at just how powerful Naruto truly was. A few seconds later Naruto dispelled Kahana's chakra shroud, along with deactivating his left eye. It was funny, whenever Naruto activated his Dejutsu Sasuke's personality turned off. But as soon as he turned them off his normal personality returned like an on-off switch. Sighing, Naruto turned around. Sorry for my behavior earlier, it happens whenever I turn on my Dejutsu I become calmer, sharper and more ruthless. Naruto explained scratching the back of his head sheepishly. Hiraya cocked an eyebrow. So, it's like an on-off switch. Honestly, I think that's an advantage Gaki. Hiruzen nodded. It's perfect for the battlefield and being able to turn it off is even better. Minato simply chuckled before ruffling Naruto's hair. Don't sweat it Naruto, I'm not mad at you. Kashina sighed. Maybe I overreacted a little bit, but you have a lot of explaining to do. I mean, how did you manage to get the Sharingan? She yelled comically. Naruto sheepishly chuckled. I'll tell you once we find somewhere nice and quiet. Naruto said knowing that this will be a very long and difficult explanation. Unfortunately, no one noticed a small snake slithering away from the crater that used to be the stadium. The miniature Yamada no Orochi needed to find a new host and soon, or it would die from a lack of life force. Chapter 8 Flashback It had been a single day since the revived Minato reclaimed his position as Yandame Hokage of Konoha. In a small amount of time numerous significant changes occurred, enough to make Naruto's head spin like never before. First, he, his wife, and his son entered the council chambers and announced a number of shocking revelations. 1. That they were alive and not happy about how their son had been treated. 2. Minato would be retaking his position as Hokage and he would be removing the civilian council. And 3. Naruto wasn't the only, but so was Kashina and the first Hokage's wife. Many if not all the shinobi gave joyous cheers at the sight of their yandame Hokage alive and taking up the Hokage position once again. It was surprising that nearly all the villagers and shinobi were more happy about their yandame Hokage being back more so than surviving and winning the war itself. However, all the positivity seemed to just vanish after Minato announced how disappointed he was in them. Anyone who was not the head of the clans, Aburam, Akimichi, Haika, Inuzuka, Nara, Saratobi, and Yamanaka, after hearing this announcement seemed shocked. Those who were involved in famous shinobi clans could only ponder as to why Yandane was so disappointed. What possibly could they have done? It didn't take long for the initial shock to wear off, and then people began to whisper to each other, attempting to figure out why their beloved Hokage was so disappointed in them that he would express it in a speech. Then Minato dropped the bombshell of all bombshells. There were a few rumors going around that people believed Naruto was Minato's son. Since multiple people had spotted the Yuzu Namaka's family together. The civilians of course refused to believe that and said it was because the Yandane was controlling Kaiubi through the seal while supervising it. Now the people who scored Naruto, aside from those of the civilian council, all felt ashamed but also afraid. They had treated the son of their greatest hero like dirt. Just to add insult to injury, Minato had given them the same speech he and his wife Kashina gave the council, informing the people that two of Konoha's most powerful and well-loved female figures were in fact the Kaiubi's previous Inchuriki. Minato's speech had a greater impact on the younger generation, those who had been told to hate Naruto for no apparent reason. Now that their trust in their parents, grandparents, and anyone old enough to know that Naruto had been shattered, there was no longer a reason to trust them. This caused a major shift in Kanoha's youth as they turned away from their elders, showing great dislike towards the older generation. 
the only ones who weren't as affected by the announcement to such a large extent were those who knew Naruto best, even if that wasn't very much comparatively speaking. Example being the Ichirakus, who didn't care that Naruto was the son of the Yande Mora, it did not change anything about their relationship. To them, Naruto was and always would be their number one customer. The now famed Rookie 9 were a group that had succumbed to the effects. One of the many emotions they were feeling right now was shock. Most of them made fun of Naruto when they were younger, calling him loser, dope, and picking on him for being a clanless orphan. Although this didn't apply to Shikamaru, Choji, and Shino as they never did know such thing. However, for the others to hear that Naruto was not only the son of the Yandame Hokage, but also was distantly related to the wife of the Shadame, as a kick to the figurative balls they had. Many couldn't comprehend what they had learned, it seems almost impossible for any of them to come to terms with this new knowledge. Naruto was practically royalty and persecuted for no real reason. The only two members of the Rookie Nine didn't care were Ichiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura. For Sasuke, all he felt was anger at hearing that the dope was more special than him now. To him, it felt like Naruto was trying to take his rightful fame and glory away from him. Who cared if the idiot was the son of the Yandame and related to the wife of the Shadai? Sasuke was a member of the Achiha, a clan far more famous than some stupid Hokage and two women from a two-bit clan. Sakura simply thought Naruto was trying to make her Sasuke Kun look bad so that she would go out with him. Not that it would have ever worked. Naruto would have been a complete idiot to think that she would ever date him just because he was the son of Yandame. As far as she was concerned, Naruto was both a demon and an idiot. In the days that followed Suna had confirmed that the Kazakiage had been killed after finding the man's corpse in the desert, not even hidden from view. They had sent Baki and Gara to renegotiate the contract for their alliance. Minato learned that the reason for their desire to see Kanoha hurt and its complete and utter destruction was because their former alliance which Kanoha coerced them into signing was literally sucking them dry. The alliance forced the Kei's daimyo to send more missions to Kanoha than Suna. With that new knowledge, a new treaty was hashed out quickly. 80% of all Kei's no kuni missions had to go to Suna, and 20% of missions in high no kuni would also go to Suna as a show of trust. It was a better deal than the smaller village could have hoped for, and they were more than happy with it. It was a good thing for Suna that they switched sides at the last minute. Had their forces fought Kanoha then Minato would not have been so forgiving. Worst case scenario, they would have been counter-invaded and actually destroyed. It was a time of change for Kanoha, the Yandane was back and not exactly happy with its people, and Naruto was now known to be the son of Kanoha's greatest hero. However, many couldn't help but wonder, with how poorly people had treated the blonde Uzumaki, was the change coming to Kanoha for the best? The change is underway, a select few individuals were called to the Hokage's mansion, including the Hokage's son. Naruto entered the Hokage's office to see that several people were already there. His father was seated behind the Hokage desk, a stack of completed paperwork to his left. Beside him were Kashina, Hiruzen, and Jiraiya, who were currently helping him get settled back into his position by updating him on the recent history he had missed. What surprised him were the other people in the room. Shikamaru currently stood in front of Minato's desk with a bored expression on his face. He would release a yawn every now and again, looking like he didn't want to be in the room at this current moment. And the final member of the group was Aburam Shino, who was standing near the Hokage's desk completely silent. Now I have several reasons for why I called you all here. Minato began with a small smile on his face. First things first Nara Shikamaru congratulations on your promotion to Chunin. Troublesome. Shikamaru muttered as he was presented with a ceiling scroll that contained his Chunin flak jacket. Minato cracked a smile at the Nara air. I expect you to live up to the title of Chunin. He turned his attention to Shino. Aburam Shino, congratulations on your promotion to Chunin. Well it's a shame that you didn't get to participate in the exams, it was noted by Hiruzen and Kurinai that you showed great growth during the Chunin exams. Thank you, Hokage-sama, Shino said, accepting the ceiling scroll. And finally, Naruto. After hearing his name Naruto looked towards his father. For not only showing your powers and abilities in the Chunin exams, but being able to bring the Ichibi no Shikaku over to our side, as well as gaining information on the invasion itself, and even aiding us in the battle against Arachimaru, I hereby grant you the rank of Takibetsu Jounin. It was the highest promotion Minato could give his son, as gaining the title of a normal Jounin required one to take the Jounin exams, and he very well couldn't appoint Naruto as the Hokage just yet. You earned this. Thanks, Chichiyu. Naruto said with a grin. Minato rolled his reanimated eyes while handing Naruto two scrolls, which Naruto raised an eyebrow at. And now for the other reason you all are here, Minato continued. Everyone, even Shikamaru, straightened at his words. I have a mission of the utmost importance for you. The three of you, under the leadership of Yuzumaki Naruto, are to find and bring Senju Tsunade back to Konoha. 
Flashback Kai. Naruto stood leaning against the northern gate of Konoha, with his arms crossed underneath his chest, as he patiently waited for his team to arrive. Naruto's eyes were closed as he had a calm expression on his face, he seemed to be very deep in thought. Naruto-kun, how are you going to bring Tsunade back to the village? Kahana asked her favorite blonde black, brunette. Hmm. I'm not sure about Kahana-chan. I was thinking about force, but then again that might not be a good idea. Naruto replied. You have to bring her back one way or another. Force would probably be the best option. If I can remember correctly you're going to be dealing with a woman who's almost as stubborn as your mother. Karami replied in a humorous tone. Naruto gave a small smirk. Believe me I know, anyways I'll talk to you later. I believe my team just arrived. Naruto replied, getting both Kahana and Karami to giggle slightly. Naruto calmly opened his eyes as he stared at the two newly promoted chunin standing before him. You're five minutes late. Naruto said. You do realize in those five minutes anything could have happened, you can't be on time, then you are not ready to be a chunin. Naruto said calmly. Shikamaru was taken aback by Naruto's attitude. Man, what happened to you Naruto you were never like this before. It all ties back to what happened in the forest of death. Why do blondes have to be so troublesome? Shikamaru thought to himself. Shino could keep his composure. My apologies to Naruto-san. I had a few things to discuss with my father and I was not paying attention at the time. Naruto nodded. I'm not mad at either one of you at all, I'm just warning that it's not good to be late like Kakashi-sensei. Just don't make a habit out of it alright. Plus I really don't care if you're a few minutes late. Naruto said with a small smirk on his face. Shikamaru stared at Naruto, eyes narrowed. You used that as a scare tactic didn't you, man you're getting more troublesome by the moment. Naruto gave a bark of laughter at Shikamaru's comment. You're as sharp as ever pineapple head. Shikamaru's eyebrow twitched at the nickname. Shino then decided to speak. You know where we can find Tsunade sama Naruto's smile turned into a calm expression. If Yureya's information is correct she should be somewhere around Shukuba town. It's not too far from here so it won't take as long to get there, I hope that you guys packed enough food and clothes to last for a couple of days. If she's anything like I heard, in this world, she is definitely going to be a pain to get her back. Naruto grumbled before the trio headed out for their mission. I'm skip Shukuba town. Naruto calmly walks through the crowds of people with Shikamaru and Shino following close behind him. Naruto no longer bothered putting up a Jinjutsu to hide his and Byakugan. As his father had already spoken with Hiashi to discuss how he obtained the Byakugan. And Hiashi even offered to teach Naruto how to wield it properly, as he stated it was the least he could do for setting Niji straight. Although something caught Naruto's eye. Passing by him was a young beautiful woman with long wavy and curly royal blue hair. She had heterochronic eyes, one was yellow, and the other one was turquoise. She had light bronze skin and had a figure that rivaled Karami's, although the thing that stood out the most for Naruto was a pair of cat ears and two tails. Matatabi-chan. Karami cried out in joy at the sight of her younger sister. Wow. And here I thought there was no one who could match Karami-chan or Kahana-chan in beauty. Naruto was genuinely surprised by Matatabi's absolute beauty. Unknown to Naruto, both Kahana and Karami were blushing at his compliment. Naruto then turned his attention to the two young chunin following him. Oi. Shino, Shikamaru I want you guys to relax for a little while, here's 2000 Ryo. Naruto said while stuffing the money into Shikamaru's hand before taking off. Shino looked at the dumbfounded Shikamaru and collected the money and then looked back to Naruto, who seemed to be chasing after a beautiful blue-haired woman. Troublesome. Shikamaru grumbled while Shino nodded in agreement. Troublesome indeed. Oh I. Matatabi came to a stop as she turned around and noticed a young man with blonde hair making his way towards her. Who might you be? She spoke in a silky smooth voice tilting her head slightly to the side. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. You wouldn't happen to be Atsutsuki Matatabi would you? Matatabi's eyes widened before she narrowed them. How do you know my name? She spoke in a dangerous tone before Naruto raised both his hands in a non-threatening manner. Easy there, Mady chan I'm not here to hurt you, your sister Kurami-chan wants to see you. Naruto said in a slightly frightened tone. Soon after, a cloud of smoke appeared next to him. Many of the tourists and local people stared on in almost disbelief as a beautiful redeed appeared out of nowhere. Matatabi-chan. Nisama. The two female Bijuu hugged each other while Naruto smiled. Kahana-chan, do you want to come out and spend some time with them? It's not right to keep you locked up inside of me all the time. Naruto asked politely. Thank you Naruto-kun, I could use some time out of the seal. Kahana replied cheerfully. Once again, the crowd of people was surprised to see another beautiful woman appear out of thin air. Matatabi was taken by surprise to see Kahana who indeed had ten tails, Karami reassured her younger sister about Kahana. You three have fun. I have a few things I need to do in the meantime. Naruto said as he waved goodbye. Kahana immediately reached out and grabbed him. Naruto-kun do you really have to go? 
she whined cutely and took every fiber of Naruto's being to resist the urge to hug her. Yeah, I do, don't worry I'll catch up later. Naruto said before he walked off. Matatabi put her hand on Kahana's shoulder. You two have an interest, Nisama, Kahana-sama. Karami nodded. He's very caring and considerate of our feelings, something only Chichiyu, Ashura Nai-san, and Indra Nai-baka ever did. He started to grow on me and I think you should come along with us. Matatabi seemed taken aback by her sister's words. You mean be sealed in another human? Matatabi said as she narrowed her eyes. Kahana frowned slightly. I believe Kurami-chan is asking if you would join us and become Naruto's third biju. Kahana said politely. Plus, the Rikiduju Ubi kick in six paths ten tails coffin seal is a powerful seal powered by the Rinnegan. So I'm pretty sure you can join us without too much trouble. Kahana said as she gently tapped her finger against her chin. Matatabi stood there with a look of shock. D did you say the R Rinnegan? Kahana and Karami both nodded. Matatabi sighed before glancing at her sister and Kahana. And he lets you both out regularly. Most of the time he lets us out of the seal, as long as you don't destroy anything I don't think he's going to have a problem with you being outside of the seal. Karami spoke with a smile on her face, although she wouldn't admit Naruto was far better than Mito or Kashina. He was much more understanding of them, as well as more lenient. Mito Uzumaki and Kashina Uzumaki never let her out even once. Matatabi sighed in defeat there is no way she can win this argument. Fine I'll join you, but if he tries anything I don't like, I'll sterilize him. Matatabi said before the entire area was flooded with killer intent. Kahana was giving a sickly sweet smile as Karami took a few steps back. Even Karami knew when not to get involved. There was no way she was going to get in a fight she didn't need to. I'm sorry but that is not going to happen, I will have Naruto's pups and I'm not going to let you ruin my chances. Kahana yelled out before covering her mouth with her hands. Karami and Matatabi stood there with looks of disbelief all the while Kana had a look of pure embarrassment. But Naruto. Naruto felt a chill go up his spine as he turned around in the direction where the three female biju were. Why do I have the feeling I should watch my back around them now? Naruto thought to himself in a slightly frightened manner. I better send clones to join back with Shikamaru and Shino, just so they don't feel abandoned. Actually, if memory serves me correctly this should be where I'm going to encounter Itachi and kiss him. Naruto crossed his fingers and spoke his signature phrase, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto said as a clone appeared next to him. I need you to go meet up with Shikamaru and Shino, just in case anything happens. Naruto said as the clone nodded. Hi boss, you got it. The clone replied before running off. Naruto quietly walked to the streets of Shukuba town until he saw a familiar tall man with his blue skin and blue spiky hair. It was Kisum Hashigaki, one of the seven swordsmen of the mist and currently an Akatsuki member, though for whatever reason, he wasn't wearing the usual cloak Akatsuki wore. He was just wearing ocean blue shorts and a white tank top. Fitting for him all things considered. He was waiting in line in front of a sushi shack. At that moment, a grin spread across Naruto's face. Kissum might cause a few problems for me if I leave him be. Besides, I'd rather you deal with Itachi one-on-one -on -one than with the duo both at the same time. Naruto thought to himself. Naruto cracked his knuckles and did the unspeakable to Kissum. Naruto had pantsed Hashigaki Kissum the Kurigakur, no Cajun monster of the hidden mist in front of everyone. The worst part was Kissum was wearing a pair of hot pink boxers with small red hearts printed into the fabric. Kissum looked down and saw the corporate in action, his face went from blue to red from pure unadulterated fury, and rage could clearly be seen in Kissum's facial features and his. Naruto's grin never left his face as he took off like a bullet, with Kissum chasing after them while fixing his pants that were around his ankles. Get back here you little blonde-haired motherfucker. I'm going to shred you into a million pieces you little shit stain. Kissum yelled while Chang Naruto. Naruto continued to run down an alleyway that turned out to be a dead end. Naruto turned around with a fake expression of fear on his face. At the top of the alleyway was a very pissed off Kissum who now had a sickly grin on his face. Nowhere to run now brat. The missing nin spoke with a dark evil chuckle, gently patting the end of Samahada on his open hand. Wait can't you take a simple little joke? Naruto whined comically. Kissum didn't respond, instead he gave a battle cry and ran at Naruto at his top speed, waving Samahada around like a madman. Naruto dodged Kissum's first strike before delivering a powerful punch to Kissum's family jewels. The powerful swordsman dropped to his knees groaning in pain while glaring at Naruto. You little brat, I'm going to kill you. I don't care if leader Sama wants you alive or not. Kissum yelled with pure fury in his voice before slamming his mummified sword into Naruto's side. Naruto was sent flying into the wall as he gave a weak growth before hitting the ground. Unknown to the swordsman, Naruto was smirking. I can't believe he fell for this, who knew Kissum could be tricked so easily. Does he honestly think I'm this weak? Well it doesn't matter just wait until he gets closer than I'm going to strike. Naruto thought to himself as he patiently waited for his attacker to approach. 
Dissum stared down at the unmoving body of Naruto, disappointment in his eyes despite the smirk on his face. This seriously is the same brat that killed Orochimaru. How? He must have caught the damned snake off guard and delivered a fatal blow. Itachi is not going to believe this though. I took out the Kaiubi with one single attack ha 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 going to owe me 20k, though then again he'll probably just try and steal it from Kakuzu. A, I'm getting paid either way. Kissum laughed like a crazy person. Giant. Jujutsu Magnet Release Curse Seal. Without warning Naruto jumped up a man in his palm into Kissum's stomach, causing the tall blue-skinned man to hunch over and groan in pain, a Shukaku-style cursed seal marking spread across his body, as well as spreading across Amahata. I can't move brat what the hell did you do to me, Kissum roared in anger only for his anger to turn to fear when he saw a large swirling sphere of blue fire in Naruto's hand. Katen. Rasengan Fire Release. Spiraling Sphere. Naruto howled slamming the sphere of chakra with swirling blue fire into Kissum's stomach, causing the man to cry in pain as both he and his sword were engulfed in royal blue flames. The now smoldering shark man fell to the ground unconscious, his sword looked like a fried piece of fish on a stick. Naruto stared down at the unconscious form of Kissum with a look of pure disappointment. I never knew he was that gullible, did he honestly think one little whack from his sword would be enough to put me down? Naruto thought to himself. You truly are full of surprises are you Naruto-kun? A familiar voice called out from behind Naruto. What a surprise, Ichiha Itachi. Naruto spoke in an emotionless tone before glancing at the two figures standing directly behind him. Naruto's eyes widened slightly when he saw Makoto and Shisui both standing next to Itachi. More. This was unexpected and this will make things much more complicated. Naruto thought to himself. But Kahana, Karami, and Matatabi, the trio of Biju were sitting in front of a dango shop, eating dango and drinking tea. Kahana immediately fell in love with the sweet pieces of fruit covered in syrup. I dare say these are even better than Raymond. She spoke in a cheerful tone. Karami was also enjoying her dango. Yes, I must agree with you, it's been so long since I've actually had anything sweet. Matatabi-chan how have you been since the last time we saw each other? Karami asked her younger sister. I've been alright until that damn tree hugger got a hold of me. After that I was sealed into some fat slob who died of a heart attack which was not a pleasant experience. Then I was sealed in by another guy. He was all right, but he was a pervert. My most recent friend was a young woman named Nai Yujito, out of all of them she was the best one. She talked to me from time to time and we developed somewhat of a bond with one another. Unfortunately, she was attacked not too long ago by two men, one with silver hair and a side, the other had some weird grey cowl and a bunch of masked creatures that shot lightning and fire and wind. They both wore black cloaks with red clouds on it, Yujito freed me from this seal before they could capture her. I don't know if I killed them or not, I just don't care, I still feel guilty for Yujito. Matatabi explained. Harami closed her eyes and took a deep breath. I see, well then, it looks like we have another reason to see the Akatsuki destroyed. She spoke in a low tone. Kahana sighed as well. Don't worry Matatabi-chan we will avenge Yujito-chan's noble sacrifice and help you annihilate the Akatsuki. That's Arjunchuriki's desire to end their organization. Kahana declared. Harami nodded as she smiled. I have faith that Naruto will help you without a doubt, plus he's the only I've ever respected. Matatabi nodded before smiling. Hi. Now let's get another order of Dango. Hi. Kahana and Karami both declared cheerfully. Back with Naruto. Now, Naruto-kun, I'm going to ask you politely to come with us. Itachi asked in an emotionless tone. Naruto stared at the elder Ichiha with a blank stare before he answered. Sorry Itachi but I don't swing that way. Although I'm curious who are they by the way. Naruto asked, pointing at Makoto and Shisui. Itachi's eyebrow twitched as Shisui burst into a fit of laughter. Hahaha. <laughs> Man, I like this kid already, too bad we must capture him. Anyways kid my name is Ichiha Shisui and I'm Itachi's best friend. Hi, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, son of the Yandame Hokage and Kishina Uzumaki. Wait a minute. Naruto stood there before he snorted. I didn't know Itachi was capable of making friends. Shisui once again started laughing while Itachi's brow began to twitch even more violently. Mikoto stood there as she giggled slightly. He's Kashina's kid. Wow. But what should I do? Should I risk being hunted by my best friend or betray my son in the Akatsuki? She thought to herself. I am Ichiha Mikoto, I'm Itachi's mother and your mother's best friend. Naruto smiled left on his face as he gained a cold emotionless expression. I have a question for the three of you why did you join Akatsuki other than to be spies in this criminal organization? Naruto said, catching the trio by surprise. Itachi narrowed his eyes dangerously. I don't know what you're talking about, we joined to test our power against the world. Naruto sighed in frustration that he was going to have to beat the answers out of Itachi. Oh, is that so? So, you didn't kill off your clan for any nobler reason like stopping a coup? 
you just simply wanted to test the limits of your abilities correctly. Naruto spoke in an even colder tone which caused Mikoto to flinch, Shisui to choke on his spit, and Itachi to lose his composure. What did you say? Shisui growled. How does he know this much? This isn't good. Mikoto thought nervously. Naruto-chan what is it you want? She asked calmly. Naruto stared at the raven-haired beauty before him. What I want is for the three of you to return to Konoha. Yandame is willing to remove your criminal status. Naruto explained. As I know the three of you are not evil, well at least I don't want to think so. So, if you are how I think you are, it'd be really great to have you all back with us at the leaf. You're quite smart for someone your age, finally, after a few seconds of silence Itachi admitted. However, there are things in this world that you could never hope to understand. We're going to take you while we can. It's our duty and we need to fulfill it. Naruto put his head down before growling. You know what? I'm not going to try and fight you, Itachi, but if you want, I won't hold back. I may even bring out the Biju in this town to help. Three on one isn't fair, after all. I can get Kura I mean the Kaiubi out here and let a rampage. Innocence will die, and it'll be because of you Naruto spoke with a serious tone in his voice. Or I can borrow some of their chakra and fight you alone. Itachi, Mikoto, and Shisui's eyes widened. I mean I already defeated Kisum with little to no effort at all, I'd do even more to you guys with Kaiubi chakra. Then again, he's an idiot and he relies too much on his sword Samahata. But I believe I'm done playing around. So please, you three, come back to Konoha. It'd be a lot better for everyone, including Sasuke. Naruto said before he closed both of his eyes. Upon opening his eyes, the Achiha trio gasped in surprise, in Naruto's left eye was a Sharingan, and in his right was the Byakugan. Adding insult to injury Naruto's left eye evolved into the Manjekyo Sharingan, while the veins around his right eye bulged. I won't get captured, but I won't let you three just waltz around capturing innocent beings like this for some stupid reasoning. I'm taking you all back to Kanoha Naruto spoke in an emotionless tone. As the Achiha trio all took a few steps back. The M Manjekyo Sharingan they all thought in unison. Naruto stood there calmly before taking a single slow step forward, as Itachi, Shisui, and Mikoto all stood their ground, even though they were staring down at the Manjekyo Sharingan. Every step Naruto took, the more nervous the Achiha trio felt. This is rather anticlimactic, I guess I'll start us off then. Naruto said before weaving through three hand signs. Itachi narrowed his eyes dangerously as lightning began to spark chaotically from Naruto's hand. Chidori. This is going to get dangerous, plus the chakra is being emitted from this Chidori. It feels extremely powerful, just as powerful as Biju chakra. He must have somehow mastered Kaiubi's chakra already. But how? The Achiha prodigy thought to himself. Shisui slowly and calmly reached for his ninja pouch underneath his cloak. Mikoto made no sudden movements, but she recognized this as Kakashi's technique. Naruto lunged forward at an incredible speed, thrusting his lightning cloak fist at Shisui. Shisui's three Tomo Sharingan changed into a four-point pinwheel design as a bright green ethereal rib cage formed around him. As the Chidori contacted the ethereal rib cage, the rib cage itself cracked and Naruto's Chidori dispelled itself. Shisui grunted in pain as his Manjekyo reverted into his normal Sharingan. Naruto narrowly dodged a straight from behind, turning his face towards his assailant when he came face to face with the beautiful Mikoto. Quickly twirling around Naruto aimed his forearm for Mikoto, who blocked with her own forearm. Pain. Nkakik no jutsu fire release. Great fireball technique. Naruto turned around to see a large fireball heading in his direction, which Itachi had spat out. Mikoto jumped away from Naruto. TCH. Naruto growled before his manjaku pulse with power. The fireball soon engulfed Naruto's entire body, Mikoto can only put her head down in shame. Shisui paid close attention to the fiery cloud of smoke and he noticed something odd. Suddenly, a large ethereal light blue blade came out in a striking motion aimed to kill. The Ichiha trio all charged as late as the smoke cleared revealing a skeleton-like structure that was light blue in color, as his eyes were dark blue, it had two horns that grew out of his left and right temples. Naruto stood within the rib cage of his Susanoo as tears of blood ran down from his left eye. This is definitely more strenuous than I originally thought. Let's hope my Rakuto chakra comes back soon because if not I may not be able to keep this thing up for long. Naruto thought in a grim manner. Itachi stared at the skeleton structure before him as the hand that was holding the blades seemed to be growing muscle and skin. So, you can use that as well. Strange I thought you needed to awaken the power in both Manjekyo to achieve the Susanoo. Itachi thought aloud. This must mean he had another Manjekyo but lost it at some point. Still, it's impressive that at such a young age, with or without Biju Chakra, that he can use such a technique. Yes, that is true, but once you awaken, you can summon the Susanoo with or without your Sharingan. Even if both of your eyes were lost, you should still be able to summon it. Naruto said remembering the time Madara summoned his Susanoo without any eyes at all. 
Using the power of his Susanoo, Naruto used its overwhelming strength to attack Itachi and Shisui, as both Ichiha jumped. Mikoto activated her Manjekyo which resembled a six-point and snowflake flower design. Amatsu Mikabashi. She whispered as her left eye began to bleed. A mass of darkness appeared before Naruto's Susanoo as it opened multiple eyes which resembled Makoto's Manjekyo design. Naruto's eyes widened as the mass of darkness released tendrils of shadow which wrapped around his Susanoo. Yama. Makoto's right eye began to glow as the darkness began to absorb Naruto's Susanoo. Naruto's eyes widened, using his Byakugan. What? This is completely made from chakra. Crap, I have to deactivate the Susanoo. Naruto thought as he quickly dispelled his Susanoo and quickly jumped back. Ah. Naruto groaned as he gripped his aching left eye, as his whole body was in pain from using the Susanoo. It felt like every cell in his body was being ripped apart, since he wasn't in a chihi using the Sharingan in any form drained more chakra. Perhaps I should hold off on using my Manjekyo for now. Naruto groaned in thought before downgrading his Manjekyo to a normal Sharingan. Naruto-chan he would be much easier if you just gave up. Mikoto spoke in an almost pleading tone, as Shisui stared at Naruto with a blank expression, while Itachi was staring at Naruto intently. I can't do that, the Akatsuki needs to be taken down. You have no idea what they're planning to do, they want to end the world for such a thing stupid reason. I know that better than anyone else. Naruto growls as he stands up straight glaring at the Ichiha trio. What do you mean they're going to end the world leader Sama stated that they are working towards world peace. Shisui spoke in an annoyed tone. That is something that I'm not going to say out in the open, as there are far too many ears around. If you want to know the truth, come back to Konoha, you'll get your answers there. Naruto said as he sent a message to Kahana. Kahana-chan, I could use your help right about now. Called out but got no response as he growled. Karami-chan are you there? Again, no answer. Naruto gritted his teeth. If he was fighting Itachi one-on-one, -on -one, he had a good chance of losing. To only make matters worse, he was also against two other Ichiha, all with Manjekyo Sharingan. His chances of winning were extremely low. No time for Sinjutsu, no Bijuu Chakra to spare, no Rinnegan or Tensigen, or Rakuto Sinjutsu. I'm royally fucked right now. Naruto thought before making a familiar cross-hand sign. Age Bunshin will do you no good here Naruto-kun. The only logical answer is to give up, your sacrifice is needed for the good of the world, and with your sacrifice, peace will eventually come. Itachi said as his face contorted into a look of confusion as he heard Naruto beginning to chuckle. Peace. You gotta be joking with me. The Akatsuki are nuts. Your leader doesn't even realize he's just a puppet. He's being controlled by Ichiha Madara and Ichiha Ibido. They caused the attack on Konoha all those years ago to form some stupid moon plan that won't even work. Not even just that, so many Ichiha have done so many horrible things, so many have died both civilian and soldier. Yugaku san tried staging a coup himself. Naruto then realized what he said. Shit. What did I just reveal? Naturally the Ichiha trio, who knew who Abito was, were now pissed, Naruto not only dared to defile the name of Ichiha Abito, but he even blamed him for the Kyubi's attack on Konoha. Who do you think you are, dragging Abito into this? Mikoto yelled in anger. Shisui was equally as angry. You have some nerve speaking about our clan members like that. Yes, maybe a few of our past members weren't that good, but you have no right to put down someone like Abito because of the actions of another. Itachi was the only one who gave no physical reaction as he was more confused than angry. What do you mean Abito caused the Kyubi attack? He died in the Third Great Shinobi War. Itachi asked curiously. If you want, answers are given to you if you come back to Konoha. Naruto stated. Enough with trying to get us to go back to the wretched village. Shisui finally yelled out losing his patience with a young blonde. You're coming with us one way or another. Shisui roared in frustration. Itachi and Mikoto both stared at the user of the Kodamatsukami. He's going to use it on Naruto. They both thought in unison. Shisui activated his Manjekyo intending on using Kodamatsukami on Naruto, who already knew it was coming, and without any of his Rikidu powers he was finished. Kodamatsukami. Shisui thought as he prepared to cast the most powerful Jinjutsu on the blonde. Chapter 9, Kodamatsukami. Shisui thought as he prepared to cast the most powerful Manjekyo Sharingan Jinjutsu on the blonde standing before him. Naruto's eyes widened as he realized what was coming. Unfortunately, it was already too late, and he felt an itching within his mind. Most people wouldn't even realize that they were just hit by Kodamatsukami, and even if they did, there would be nothing they could do to stop it. True, if Naruto had all the power he obtained in the Fourth Great Shinobi War, or even had the Bijuu Chakra at his disposal, he wouldn't have been caught. Unfortunately, his opponents would never let him remain to rejoin his Biju. So, even with his knowledge of what he was being put under, he was already falling victim to one of the strongest Jinjutsu in all of existence. Or rather, that would be the case if he was a normal human. 
despite the command given to follow Shisui back to the leader of the Akatsuki, Naruto's body didn't move. He visibly shook and clearly was fighting against the influences put on him, but he did not move an inch from his position. Shisui glared at Naruto gritting his teeth. How is he able to resist Kotamatsukami like this, or even at all? I know can resist normal to even Sharingan-based Jinjutsu. But leader Sama and Tobi both said that they couldn't resist Manjekyo Sharingan-level Jinjutsu. Hell, not even a Manjekyo Sharingan could resist Kotamatsukami. Shisui thought in an annoyed astonished manner. Ugh, whatever, it looks like it's taking effect more now the Ichiha prodigy thought to notice the slight movement in Naruto's legs and arms. Naruto could feel himself succumbing to Kotamatsukami before his eyes widened. This didn't go unnoticed to Itachi as he studied Naruto curiously as he saw Naruto put his head down in submission. Something's not right Kotamatsukami should have claimed his mind the moment Shisui looked at him. If he's able to resist it. Then he's going to draw on Shisui so he can deliver a surprise attack. Itachi thought as he saw his best friend smirk. Shisui, be careful, something's not right. Shisui stared at his best friend with an eyebrow raised. Come on Itachi, the gaki is done for. There's nothing else he can do, there's nothing that can resist Kotamatsukami. Shisui said not to think any further. Makoto glanced at her son before looking back at Shisui. What's wrong with Itachi-chan? Itachi looked at his mother. I don't think Kotamatsukami worked on Naruto, as strange and unbelievable as it is, I believe Naruto was trying to draw in Shisui. Makoto thought about it for a second before looking towards Shisui. Naruto walked towards Shisui in an almost zombie-like fashion, showing no signs of resistance at all. See Itachi. There was nothing to worry about. He's a tough one no doubt, but he's not invincible. Besides, it's not like Kaiubi ever cooperated with him before. Shisui gave a cheesy grin as Naruto stood before him, unfortunately for Shisui he didn't see the murderous glint in Naruto's eyes. Ah. Itachi and Makoto's eyes widened as Naruto slammed his palm right through Shisui's stomach, barely missing his spine. Shisui looked down as his body was shaking from shock as he saw Naruto give him the most cold-hearted glare he's ever seen. Naruto's body was engulfed in white flickering flames. I'm not gonna fall to some stupid jinjutsu. I tried to be nice about this, but looks like I'm going to have to beat you up a ton. If only I could get you to come back to Konoha without fists flying. Naruto spoke above a whisper as he ripped his arm free from Shisui's stomach. What? How, how? Shisui shouted. His question was not hanging out for a long time as his own vision flickered for a split second. Naruto's eyes, which were, at the time, a Sharingan and Ayakigan, were now nothing but two closed eyelids. I am possible, I know your eyes were open. Wait a minute. Shisui realized something, right before the battle began, Naruto already activated a Sharingan when theirs weren't. They were the flies in the web from the start. Though that wasn't all. How could he have fought without using his eyes? Then the three noticed the very faint orange rings around his eyes. I wanted you all to think I didn't have any Biju chakra, but I was saving it since I planted Kissum. It wasn't enough to use in combat otherwise, you may have seen it in my jutsu, but it was enough to be used for sensing. I'm glad this battle didn't go on for too long, otherwise, I may have run out prematurely. Naruto explained. Well, now I don't have to worry because I have reinforcements, he said, feeling a sudden flood of chakra being absorbed into his body. Sorry for the wait Naruto, we didn't think you would get attacked by the Akatsuki. Kahana spoke in a disappointed tone. Naruto sighed. Don't worry about it everything's fine, I'm just going to have to beat them all to get them to come with me. Naruto replied in a cold tone. Shisui spit out a significant amount of blood before dropping to the ground. Naruto grabbed the top of Shisui's head, being sure to check for how much actual damage he delivered to the stubborn Ichiha. The gentle fist was good for suppressing chakra, but it also had the added ability to deal internal damage. A good hit to the heart could potentially mean the end for an opponent. Amui authority of the gods. Itachi and Mikoto appeared above Naruto as they saw him absorb Shisui with his Kamui. Naruto smirked as he jumped back dodging the mother and son duo. So now it's just you two, now that I got Shisui out of the way. I'm going to give you both again. Please, come with me willingly or I'm going to have to do the same thing I did to the both of you. Naruto said coldly. Though within the dead tone of his voice, there was a slight hint of pleading hope. Naruto-chan you wouldn't do that to us, would you? Mikoto asked to see if Naruto was truly serious. Naruto's facial features did not change, his dual dejutsu seemed to glow with power, as a light aura of white chakra, similar to the initial Jinchikriki form, covered Naruto's body. I'm serious, if you don't come with me willingly, I'll have to suppress your chakra and absorb you with Kamui. And in this form Itachi's Amaterasu will not work on me, plus since I've gathered some more Senjutsu and Ju I mean Biju chakra, neither will Tsukiyomi. So, if you want to fight before coming with me, your best bet would be using Susanoo on me, it's the only thing that would do anything at this point. Naruto said in an honest manner. But I doubt you would be able to use it for very long. 
Itachi narrowed his eyes. You didn't need to do that to Shisui. We were simply following orders. We were ordered to observe you and see how powerful you were. We were also told that we should attempt to capture you if you were too powerful and prevent future problems for the Akatsuki organization. HMPH, since you decided to explain some things for me, I should at least return the favor. Itachi, you asked me what I was talking about with Abito and Madara. Here, your leader, the one that goes by the name of Pain, is nothing more than a crippled man named Nagato who is using the body of his best friend as a puppet. However, he's a living puppet being controlled by the masked man. Dobi is a Bito Ichiha and oh boy do I wish that was the end of it. You all thought he died in the Third Shinobi War, but he survived, and when Rin died, he became a puppet to Madara Ichiha. Naruto explained before taking a breath and waiting for a response. Why do you keep on bringing the deceased into our conversation? Makoto growled. Abito is dead, and he's not some puppet. He died on the shinobi of the leaf. He wouldn't become a puppet to a man like Ichiha Madara, even if he did save his life. Naruto didn't answer her as he extended his hand towards the two. Soon after, multiple small orbs of dark red positive chakra and light blue negative chakra began to gather, forming a black and purple sphere of condensed chakra in his hand. I guess you won't believe me, so there's not much I can do right now is there? It's probably too much of a gamble to try and confront Toby and pain right now, since I haven't met them yet. Only thing left is to force you to come with me and learn the answers from people I'm sure you would believe. Naruto said before using his chakra cloak to extend a senpo. CHM mini Bajdama Sage Art. Super mini tailed beast ball. The Kodo and Itachi's eyes widened as they dodged the sphere of chaotic chakra. Kamui. Naruto K says he used the long range variant of Kamui to warp the Biju Udama into the Kamui to prevent the destruction of the town he was in. You should. I really hope that it didn't hit Shisui. How did I even forget? I even confirmed that the left and right eyes connected to the same space when Kakashi Sensei and Bushy Brow Sensei helped me fight Ibido. God damn it. He lamented. But the threat of a massive explosion no longer present, the three Sharingan bearers present could hear another voice. It came right out of left field, but everyone recognized the tone of the voice. Ichiha Itachi. Everyone in the area turned around to see Sasuke standing a meter behind Makoto and Itachi with a murderous look in his eyes. Makoto gave a sad and shocked look. Itachi had a look of guilt and regret in his eyes, while Naruto could care less at this point. He already knew the outcome, and he didn't even need to have already seen this to know how it would end. Although, something different did indeed happen, Sasuke's eyes widened when he saw his mother alive and wearing the same black and red cloak as Itachi. Asama. Sachi-chan. Tears began to well up in Sasuke's eyes. But. Itachi killed you. The last loyal Ichiha spoke in a confused emotional tone. I saw your and Yusama's bodies on the floor. No, he didn't kill me. What you saw was a Chishio bunch and no Jutsu blood clone technique. It was necessary to use and so were a lot of other things. You didn't know what happened in Konoha back then, but all I can tell you right now until you're mature enough to understand is that Itachi was a victim as well. Mikoto spoke in a solemn tone. Sasuke's eyes widened in surprise. What do you mean he was a victim of the Ichiha massacre? He told me himself that he was doing it to test the limits of his capabilities. And that. And that. Sasuke tried to control himself, but he couldn't hold the raw emotions that came bursting to the surface. The Kodo glared at her oldest son who put his head down in shame, she mouthed, you have a lot of explaining to do. Itachi shivered knowing that his mother was likely as terrifying as Kashina Yuzumaki. Naruto stood there letting Sasuke have his moment, perhaps Mikoto could change Sasuke for the better. It would be a nice change of pace as Naruto no longer had the patience or drive to deal with Sasuke's potentially maniacal ambitions. Sasuke then looked at Naruto. Why is that done here? I twitched as she walked toward Sasuke and slapped her son in the back of the head. Etch. Aokasama why did you hit me? Sasuke cried, but soon shivered under the glare his mother gave him. What did I tell you about language, young man? Sasuke began to shiver not wanting to make his mother any angrier than she or he was. Naruto stood there with an amused expression on his face. You know, as amusing as it is to see this family reunion, you two still haven't answered me. Are you both gonna come back to Konoha willingly or do I have to fight you both in front of your Sachi? Naruto asked impatiently. The Kodo sighed as she glanced at her youngest son before her before glancing back at Itachi. I'll go with you, as Sasuke-chan really needs his Kasama. I can tell just by looking at him. Naruto nodded happily as he really didn't want to hurt Mikoto. Itachi simply stood there frozen, all it took for his mother to betray the Akatsuki was Sasuke to throw an emotional episode. Although it probably also had something to do with Naruto nearly killing Shisui. Mikoto then glared at Itachi, a clear message that basically said obey. Itachi sighed in defeat before nodding. Very well, but don't think this is over Naruto. Naruto nodded. Itachi stepped forward as did Mikoto who was holding Sasuke. 
Naruto extended both his hands, grabbing the entire Ichiha family before using Kamui to teleport them to the Kamui dimension. Naruto then crossed his fingers. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu Shadow Clone Technique. In a puff of smoke an exact replica of Naruto appeared. I need you to get back to Konoha as soon as possible and bring them to Tuchan immediately. And no Raymond breaks. Naruto ordered his clone who groaned in response. Naruto watched his clone fly away as he dispelled Kahana's chakra which was covering him and immediately left to find his team, aka Shikamaru and Shino. No sooner after Naruto left, Kisum's smoldering corpse melted into a pool of water. A completely unharmed Kisum emerged from the pool of water with a scowl on his face. I can't believe those two. They're traitors, except for Shisui, but in the end, it doesn't matter. They'll probably be killed for treason once they get back. Kisum growled before disappearing in a Mizushunshin no Jutsu water body flicker technique. I need to report back, but first, something to eat. Oh yeah, the sushi place. Little did he know, the real Naruto would soon be passing by along with Shikamaru and Shino. Naruto's clone was having a great time as he quickly passed over the forest leading up to Konoha. You know I wonder why I just didn't use Kamui to get here. The clone thought to himself. Because you're an idiot that's why. Karami replied with a deadpan expression. I mean literally you can move faster than lightning itself with normal Biju chakra empowering you. The clone grumbled in response as he landed on the roof of the Hokage mansion. The clone noticed a single window open and slipped right through into the room, only to be restrained by chakra chains and have a Horatian kunai placed against his neck. Ah. Tu-chan. Ka-chan. It's me, Naruto. The clone cried in surprise, dispelling his chakra cloak. Minato and Kishina both stared at their son confusedly. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be on a mission? Kishina asked her son. I'm only a cage bunshin, and Boa sent me back here to deliver a few things. Minato blinked. Okay what is it? Kishina released her shadow clone son from her chakra chains as the clone activated Kamui, expelling Sasuke, Itachi, Mikoto, and a barely conscious and alive Shisui, who was lying unconscious on the floor. Mikoto-chan. Kishina cried with joy as she hugged her best friend, Mikoto hugged her back. Kishina-chan as much as I'd love to catch up with you, we need to get Shisui medical attention immediately or he might die. Mikoto replied frantically. What? Kishina exclaimed. How did Shisui-kun get hurt like this? Kishina stopped speaking and glanced at the Juubi that was her son. Without wasting any more time, Minato signaled for his personal Anbu to collect Shisui and bring him to the Hokage medical room within the Hokage mansion. After the injured Shisui was taken out of the office, Minato turned his attention to the mother and son duo. As good as he is to see you Mikoto-san, Itachi-kun. I have to ask, why have you joined the Akatsuki? Minato spoke in his Hokage mode as Kishina called it, usually entailing. Sharpened, reanimated, eyes, chakra filling the air, and a monotone voice. Itachi sighed before glancing at his mother who nodded and then glancing toward Sasuke who looked impatient, as if he didn't want to be there. We joined the Akatsuki as Jiraiya spies and we were able to give him information every now and again. Although the reason why we're here right now is because your son forced us into a corner. He asked us to either come back willingly or he was going to put us in the same shape as Shisui. And when Sasuke came it only made it that much harder, so we had no other choice but to come back. Itachi answered in an emotionless tone. Minato looked at his son. Well, that's quite something isn't it? All things considered, from what I read upon retaking the position of Hokage, Shisui-kun was a prodigy like Itachi if not better. To think that Naruto could defeat Shisui so easily. However, I know for a fact he wouldn't willingly put someone in a state like that to anyone for no reason, so what is it you're not telling me Itachi-kun? Shisui dug his own grave by attempting to use Kodamatsukami on your son. It is a very powerful Jinjutsu of the Manjekyo Sharingan that allows him to enter a person's mind and manipulate them by giving them false experiences, making it seem as if they were doing things on their own free will, the victim wouldn't even notice they were being manipulated. Itachi explained allowing Minato and Kishina to connect the dots. And you didn't even try to help Naruto-chan, Itachi Kun. Kishina asked in a creepy tone which caused the Ichiha to stutter as he began to take steps backwards. Itachi couldn't form any words as the one person who was more scared than his mother was Kishina, and he didn't want to be on the receiving end of her wrath. I'm sorry Kishina-sama, we're just following orders. We had no intentions of capturing Naruto, but, but what? Out with an Itachi. Shisui snapped hand. Makoto sighed as she looked at her frightened son. Shisui didn't want to return to Konoha due to having some very bad experiences here. And I guess in his mind, he wanted to capture Naruto. Makoto answered. You have to talk to him when he wakes up to get his side of the story. Winato rubbed his forehead before looking at the clone of his son. Alright Naruto, I believe it's time you fill them in on what's really going on here. I prefer to wait for Shisui to wake up, but it seems that I will have to fill him in later. 
Minato ordered as the clone of his son nodded. I guess I might as well start from the beginning, to start off with, I'm not the Naruto of this timeline. I came from three one half years in the future, and from an alternate future from the way this world is turned out. Everything I have and will tell you is true, and if you refuse to believe me, too bad. I know what I'm telling you is true. What? The Ichiha family all yelled in unison, except for Itachi, who remained silent. The clone Saidi knew this was gonna take a while, so he sat down on the couch and got comfortable. It all started when I got back from my two and a half year training trip with Hiro Senen. Back with the real Naruto, he was currently sitting in his hotel room, the room next to his was where Shino and Shikamaru resided. The three female Biju were all sitting on the bed across from Naruto's, as he couldn't believe what he was being told. Of course, he wanted the Biju to be free, not caged up inside of him. Yet, Matatabi Atsutsuki chose to join Kahana and Karami within Naruto. Now are you sure you want to join your Ni-chan and Kahana-chan inside the seal? Naruto asked with a bewildered expression on his face. Matatabi nodded. They said nothing but good things about you, so I'm willing to give you a chance. But I'm a proud Bijuu just like my sister, so don't expect me to roll over for you. Naruto resisted the urge to grin at the crude comment. Alright, if you are sure about this, then I don't have a problem with it. Naruto looked towards Kahana. Kahana-chan I'm gonna need some of your Rin Sharingan again. Since I can't manifest my Rinnegan yet. Naruto asked politely as the Juubi gave him a kind smile. Of course, don't be afraid to ask Naruto-kun. Naruto nodded as he released a long sigh, opening his left eye, revealing a wrench-ring and Naruto stood up before turning his back to Matatabi. Naruto performed the ram hand seal. Rikinj by kicking six paths ten tails coffin seal. Naruto said above a whisper as Matatabi felt her very existence being pulled towards Naruto, she instinctively tried to fight it, but was unable to as she was pulled literally inside of Naruto. Naruto groaned as he felt his chakra coils grow even bigger. Jinchuriki already or not, sealing an entire biju on your own would still take a lot out of you. Once he regained full comfortability, he slapped his hand on the ground. Kuchiyus no jutsu summoning technique. Naruto announced as Matatabi reappeared in front of him. She had a confused expression on her face. What just happened? Matatabi asked blinking rapidly. Naruto gave her a smile. You just became my third biju, and I became yours. The only rules I have are simple, just don't attack innocent people and don't destroy anything. If you follow those rules I can let you do whatever for as long as you want, although you can't venture any further than 600 meters away from me, or you'll appear back in the sea. Naruto explained as Matatabi nodded in understanding. Karami gave a grin. Now then, why don't we get some room service? I'm in the mood for some sake. She said with a devilish grin on her face. Matatabi gave a slight cat-like smile. Oh, it's been so long since I've had a drink, I think the last time was nearly 800 years ago. I think I remember you getting so wasted Nisama that you ended up fucking up the fire daimyo son and left him unable to move a muscle an entire month. Matatabi said with a mischievous grin as Karami pouted. Hey, I get violent when I'm drunk, okay? I didn't kill him at least, and don't judge me. I seem to remember you trying to get with our brothers. Karami fired back, making Matatabi blush deeply. Naruto stared at the sister duo with Kahana sitting next to him. This certainly is interesting, don't you think Naruto-kun? Naruto stared at the humanoid Jubi sitting next to him. If things get out of control can you at least restrain those two so I can avoid getting molested or killed? Naruto asked as Kahana nodded and gave him a smile. Of course, Naruto-kun if anyone can take your virginity it's going to be me, but I'll have to wait until you are of age. She spoke in a friendly tone as Naruto shivered a little bit but was thankful. Back in the Hokage's office, and after that I placed my hands together against Kagaya's robes to initialize the Rikid and Chibaku Tensei Six Paths catastrophic planetary construction. Kagaya was a sore loser and decided to use her remaining power to throw me through a dimensional portal, and that's how I ended up here. With the story finally concluded, the clone gave a long tired sigh. The room was dead quiet, for those who have already heard this story which included, Minato, Kishina, Kakashi, Jiraiya, and Hiruzen. For Sasuke, Itachi, and Makoto this was a lot to take in, it sounded almost unreal. Itachi being the calmest out of the three which wasn't saying much, as the other two weren't nearly as level-headed when it came to any type of situation. It's rather difficult for us to believe your words, Naruto-kun. But the abilities you showed thus far would prove that you have power. Although I'm curious, how does Rikid no Chikura's six paths chakra prevent blindness in Manjekyo? Itachi asked calmly. Well, it's kinda complicated how that works. It kinda prevents blindness, but it also does some other stuff. You see, Sharingan carries a piece of the Rakuto Senen's chakra the clone began to explain. So, when that Rikidan chakra mixes with more Rakuto chakra, it evolves. Usually it becomes something different depending on the eyes. The combined Manjekyo and Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan that was my right eye evolved into this, Tomo Rinnegan I have now. 
not sure what would happen to others with normal Manjekyo Sharingan if they got Rakuto Chakra though. And how do you acquire this power? Sasuke demanded and was quickly slapped by Makoto. The clone couldn't help but smirk. As far as I know, there are only two ways to acquire Rikid no Chakra. You either get it from the Rakuto Senen himself or you combine the chakra of his son's reincarnations. In the end, they have the exact same effect, although if you get it from Hagoromo you will either awaken the Rinnegan or get Rakuto Senen mode. Doing it the second way will only grant you the Rinnegan. The clone explained, as he didn't want to go into detail about his Rikid no Senen Chakra 6 Passage Chakra, which combined with his Rikid no Chakura, cancelled out all blindness permanently. Even if he were to use Aizanamiya things got extremely dicey. Unfortunately, for some reason he couldn't use Aizanagi, but all things considered he didn't really see a situation where he'd need to. Minato nodded. Thank you, Naruto, you can dispel now. The clone nodded before dispelling into a cloud of smoke. Minato then turned to the Ichiha family. Lastly, there is something imperative to all of you. Anything and everything you heard from this room does not leave this room for any reason. Am I understood? Minato got three nods from each Ichiha showing understanding. Good, you are dismissed and remember to stay out of sight, Itachi, Mikoto. For the time being at least. The mother and son duo nodded before bowing and banishing, Minato then turned his attention to Sasuke. Now Sasuke-kun. How are you feeling right now? Sasuke shook his head. I don't know what to feel right now. I don't understand why all this was hidden from me, and Ai-san told me I should have been older before learning about the Ichiha massacre. I feel lost and a little bit sick. Ashina gained a sad expression on her face. Sasuke-kun perhaps you should go home and try talking with Makoto-chan. I'm sure she has a lot to tell you in private and I believe Itachi's only looking out for you, despite his odd methods of doing so. Kishina spoke in a motherly tone. Sasuke nodded before leaving the office. Ureya, who was leaning up against one of the walls, spoke up. It's almost hard to believe how everything turned out so far. Sadly, I'm feeling it's only going to get more difficult without an outlet to the Akatsuki, and if what Gaki told us is true, then Ibido's too much of a threat to be left alone. But only Gaki, Kakashi and Minato have the speeder tools to defeat him. We may have to create a game plan just in case he tries to destroy his eyes and capture Naruto. I agree with Yureya on this one Minato-kun. There's no way I'm letting that shell of a former Konoha shinobi get his grubby mitts on my son. Kishina snarled. Minato nodded before pulling out a blank scroll. And I have to develop a new Fuinjutsu to nullify his Kamui. Naruto would be the perfect assistant for this new seal. I only hope it works. Minato thought aloud as he began designing a new seal to use against Abito in the future. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.